It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with The Mixed Martial Arts Hour is back in your life on this Wednesday, December 21st, 2022. Hello again, everyone. I sure hope you're doing well. Welcome to our final show of 2022. Wow, what a year it has been. Most shows we've ever done in a calendar year. Never done this many. I think it was over 100 or so. It's been a crazy, crazy year. An unbelievable year. A very fulfilling year. A very memorable year. We are all so grateful and appreciative for you know everything that has accompli- we've accomplished, that we've done, and for all of you, most importantly, uh, I just want to thank everyone from the bottom of our collective hearts. Mine, is, it's a big heart. It's a deep heart. I think I speak for everyone. Big, you deep do. heart. But Myst- I was going to say Mysterious Franks is that big. It's that big. It's growing. Heart. It's that big. So it's a very short heart in terms of gratitude and depth. Uh, but it is growing, as he said. We had a nice exchange earlier today. I actually was uh, walking in. I had a big box, and I put my um, my lunch on top of the box, and I'm carrying the box. It was very sort of office-esque, that episode where they have, like, the big... The chili. The chili, yes. And then what happened was I had this amazing honey nut squash soup that I was so excited to eat, and I guess I put it towards the edge of the box, and then the bag eventually, as I was so close to the studio, fell. And then for a brief moment, I was like, oh, thank God, at least the soup didn't spill. But really what happened was the soup spilled all over the carpet. And it was like a thick soup with pumpkin seeds. I mean, it was fantastic. And so it spilled all over the carpet. And thus I didn't have soup. Frank, being the mensch that he is, offered to get me a lobster bisque, he's very high class, from his lunch spot, I said yes. He got me what I think was like a, um, what was it, like, was it like a taster size, Frank? I mean, it was that big, it was that deep, it was so small. What was it? You did ask for a small. It was, yeah, but I didn't know it was like, it was like when you go to the ice cream place and they give you the little right, weird like spoon. Right, trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, I said, how much was it? He did the whole thing like, no, no, no. And so then I said, all right, out of the kindness of my heart, I'll just, you know, Venmo him $8. GC, you know what he said when he came back? Uh-huh. Please tell me. I forgot you had something cooking for the show. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He said, uh, did you try the soup? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, you thought it was an $8 soup? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Legitimate question. <laughs> and I was like, well, I actually thought I was overpaying. I thought I was being kind. A small, how much was it, Frank? It was $10. He said it was $10, made a point to remind me $10. So I then had to Venmo him an extra $2 <laughs> to too? make it whole. Oh, my gosh. By, t- by the time we're done with fees, I mean, uh, yeah. I also do have to say about the soup thing. You dropped the soup fairly close to my desk where yeah. I work. And uh, I had headphones in, but... The song I was listening to had ended, uh, and I'm not going to lie, I was pretty locked in. All I heard was you, like, you were uh, like, oh, oh, God, oh, <laughs> no, this is a disaster. The, you know, yes. the stress and anxiety in your voice, I couldn't tell that it was you, and uh, I was like, I'm just not going to turn around. You did not turn is. around. You could not be bothered. I was like, whoever that is is, is having a bad day. I'm just going to just gonna keep Do you it. think it was an overreaction? Uh, no, because then when I saw it, yeah, it looked like a baby threw up all over the carpet. Yeah, it was honey nut squash. By the way, never tried honey nut squash. Had it for the first time. I don't even know what a honey nut is. It had wasn't it for meant the, to be. Had it for the first time on Monday. It was fantastic with the, the pumpkin seeds. And I was so excited to sit down and have it on this bitterly cold day, our final Wednesday show of 2022, our final show of 2022. And it freaking spilled all over the gaff. But luckily, Frank came through. So then... Not only was the honey nut squash soup $10, but that was a large. Frank charged me $10, not to mention the fees for Again, his the tiny was, sampler size. I wanted to know how much you thought the soup was worth. I thought it was around. I thought it was a good $5, and I gave you $3 I extra I think we're overpaying for, for... You think for so? The, yeah. All right. Well, it's market price, New York City. Come on. Yeah, that's true. We are in the heart of New York City. Uh, it's great to be here. 
in the heart of New York City. Final show of the year. Very cold outside. Hope everyone's doing well. Hope you and yours are doing well. Hope you're able to take some time off and enjoy the holiday season if you enjoy doing that sort of thing. And of course, we'll be back on January 4th for our highly anticipated MMA Hour Award Show. But you know we like to go out with a bang. You know we like to leave you on a high note. And we are doing that this episode per usual. I mean, we always try to do that. But we, you know, we're, we're going to be sitting on this episode for a couple of weeks here. So we wanted to, you know... We want it to finish strong. Uh, as always, we are presented by our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. They are the official sports betting partner of the UFC and the MMA Hour, more importantly. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today if you are uh, partaking in any action over the holiday season. There's a lot going on. Of course, New York Knicks, eight in a row, no biggie, going for nine tonight. Buffalo Bills trying to lock up the uh, the one seat. I mean, things are going well for Helwani right now in terms of my sports fandom. Um Bowl season, GC, heavily invested in that. Uh, we've got, what else, hockey. There's a lot. There's a lot going on, not to mention the uh, the fight game. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today. Use the code M- the MMA Hour. That's how they know we sent you. We appreciate that very much. And uh, we appreciate them. Support them because they support us. Again, that's DraftKings Sportsbook. Um, here's what we're doing today. Back into the show. We're going to check in with GC. We're going to get... A final update on his futures bets for 2022. Unless something crazy happens between now and next week, someone gets stripped. These are pretty much locked in. So we'll get an update on that. And we'll get an update on the dreaded t-shirt slash jersey curse of 2022, which has become a real thing. So stay tuned for that. Uh, also answer your questions. We'll get to that at the top of the show, but we probably won't get to all of them. So that'll be back in as well. At uh, 3 o'clock, my friends, we are going to be joined in studio by Dylan Dennis. Yes, Dylan Dennis. Uh, he is coming in studio, and it's it's somewhat fitting that we end the year with Dylan Dennis. It's somewhat fitting that our last interview of the year will be with Dylan Dennis because, of course, my feud, if you want to call it, with Dylan Dennis started on the first day of this year, January 1st. January 1st, 2022, I'm sitting on the couch watching a movie with my family. I see a tweet where he calls me a bitch, and I unloaded quite the 10-7 on him. I mean, it was multi... Do we have that? I should have asked uh, asked GC to uh, have that ready for us. Just like the visual evidence of the tweets. Should have had that prepared. Your tweets or Dylan's tweets? Well, my tweets. This is me trying to pretend like I didn't have it ready, and now you just blew it. We do have it ready. Oh, there, there. Oh, we do have them. Wow. Great. Thank you. Um, guys, if you think life sucks right now, just think you could have begged for three years to fight an oh, no YouTuber and three years later still not be popular enough or good enough to even be considered a worthy opponent for imagine. In other words, you could be Dylan. Oh, yeah, that's right. I just wanted to get a refresher. I think there was more. Hey guys, follow me real quick and I'll follow you back. I'll pay you okay. Get a grip. Who acts like this? Hey guys, I'll join Virginia. Retire. Retire from what? Social media. Oh yeah, yeah. These were good tweets. Uh so anyway, I think it went on a little bit more. Yep, there you go. Three, two, one. Yep. Um, anyway, uh, we've had some back and forths. We've talked about him. And he's coming in studio. Of course, he has a big fight coming up against KSI. And as I said last week on the show, this goes for anyone that we've quote unquote, feuded with. I'm open to making amends. I'm open to peace offerings. I'm open to breaking bread. I'm not interested in grudges. I believe in only, you know, you know, you only get one life. You might as well, you know, live a happy, peaceful, somewhat drama-free, somewhat stress-free life. So, so this shouldn't be a surprise if you've been following along and this invitation extends to anyone out there who may be a hater or involved in some kind of feud or beef with me. And so let's see. Now, what is the line at him showing up? What do, what do you think? Uh, do we think, because, you know, last week there was a press conference in London for the KSI fight and he did not show up. Do we have any sort of concern that he is not going to show up? No, he's going to be here. You think so? Yeah. Let's let's say plus one thirty he comes. I'm I'm slamming the the plus odds on that. I think he'll be here. Usually I wouldn't joke about this sort of thing, but you never know. I think it would be in his best interest to show up, right? I can't imagine it would go over well if he didn't show up. Right. 
All right, so that's at 3 o'clock. Uh, 2.40, we're going to be joined by the great Mike Goldberg, longtime voice of the UFC, 20 years with the company. Today, December 21st, is the 25th anniversary of his debut with the UFC. It was UFC 15 and a half, Ultimate Japan, and it went down in Japan, Yokohama, first show outside of the U.S. or its territories. He made his debut a uh, memorable show, and we're going to reminisce with Mike Goldberg about that achievement, that anniversary. I look forward to that. That's at um, 2.40. At 2.20, we're going to be joined by Jared Cannonier, who had the big one over Sean Strickland this past weekend. Looking forward to that. At 2 o'clock, Paulo Costa, Bohashinha, will stop by. You may have heard he's out of the fight with Robert Whitaker. We'll get his side of the story. I'm looking forward to that. 140, Santiago Ponzinibbio, who is the pride of Argentina, who is without a doubt the most famous fighter to come from Argentina in MMA, of course. Talk to him, of course, about Argentina's big win. And the scenes have just been unbelievable. The fans yesterday, what, 4 million people or something? I mean, like, it, it just seems like they won't stop partying. And rightfully so. It's a big moment. It's a it's a historic moment. It's huge because of Messi, most liked post in Instagram history, the parade, the Ninja Turtle, the sleeping in bed with the... I mean, it's all just great stuff. It's heartwarming stuff. So we'll talk to Santiago Pontanibio about all of that and more. But we like to start Wednesdays off with your questions so you can hit it, Frankie. It's time yeah, for there a it is. fashion Q&A, MMA fans. Yep. Last one of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment has arrived. And again, shout out himself, to GC for this incredible Live set design. I mean, look at this stuff. Beautiful New York City. Very much in the spirit. The 10 nose. out of 10. 10 now, out of 10. He did it all questions. himself. No one helped. Get out of your seat. I think it's more of a seven. On your feet because seven? Really? Is. Stop it. Wow. So humble. Yes, there I am. Um, did we light the other? Oh, it looks like the... Uh, Candles are off here. On that the draft menorah. came through earlier. Oh, when, was it? When you spilled the soup. Yeah. I don't know. A gust of wind. What happens? What, do you, what are you on. supposed to do here? Yeah, there you go. Now do you, you need a lighter? Do you, do you, is it like a twist thingy? What do you do? No, no you just, <laughs> you just you tell us. Yeah, flick it on now. Hit the button. Right. There, there should be a button. Oh. Down, yeah. Oh. There you go. Wow. I remember my first menorah. Third night. Wait, is it third night? Uh, Sunday? Yeah, I guess today would be the fourth, but we can't do it yet. Wow, that's fun. Um, okay, there we are. Uh, guys, we have some questions to answer. Moderator Lewis has been hard at work, and I feel like the people are going to bring it on this final Wednesday show of 2022. Let's not waste any more time. Let's go to King Tyler. And once again, first person up gets the first question. We're sticking to that. Much respect. Shalom, Ariel, and crew. As we look to 2023, who is your sleeper fighter to make a run and finish next year as a new UFC champion or top contender? Who will emerge from the end of the rankings or the unranked waywork? Sorry, Frank. What was the what was the the word that he thought he was saying when he said waywork? Woodwork. Woodwork. <laughs> and no one even corrected me. Like I don't remember saying that. Sad <laughs> My pick is Jelton Almeida to make a deep run at heavyweight. I know GC is a big fan. Thanks to you and the whole crew for a great 2022. See you all in 2023, King Tyler. Hmm. Anyone come to mind for you, GC? I mean, I love the Jelton pick. I just don't know if there's enough time. And like he's been fighting at different weight classes. He's been doing catchweight bouts. I don't, I don't know. Like I, I think he will one day contend for a title, but I don't know if 2023 is going to be the year for it. A couple names come to mind as I'm looking at the rankings. Mateus Nicolau could be a guy to watch in 2023. Is Marlon Vera too easy? Are, are we are we talking like way down in the rankings? If so, what about a Taporia? What do you think about a Taporia? I feel like, I mean, Taporia is only nine right now. I feel like... I mean, he, if he gets the fights, like... Yeah. He, he could definitely make a run. Jalen Turner could be a name. Jamal Hill probably would have been in that discussion but of course he is getting a title shot um let's see Shavkat definitely right no doubt especially if UFC event one he comes out and gets a huge one yeah oh yeah the guys who who get the fight at the beginning of the year I mean they could legit get three or four fights in uh in a calendar year so that's huge um I know Furo she's kind of high up there so I don't know if that really counts um yeah those are a few names that come to mind 
interesting fight announced yesterday. Aaron Blanchfield against uh, Tyler Santos. That's a big fight. It feels like a number one contender fight. I believe she said that to the morning combat guys. That's a big, big time fight, right? I mean, and I and I wonder what that means for Valentina because I think Mano is out. Yeah, you would think Mano or moves up the bantamweight or something like that. Why would you move up to bantamweight? I don't know, because those are the two contenders, and then if Manon's hurt and can't fight, what is Valentina going to do? You know, oh, you mean Valentina moves up to bantamweight? Yeah, 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 Manon yeah. moves up to bantamweight. Nah. Yeah, Alexa Grasso is another name. That yeah, Valentina that's true. Threw out. Uh, Cheeto Pancakes asks, "What is up, Ariel? First full year of the show being back, and it was great. Thank you, thank you." and the boys and everyone behind the cameras for what they do. My question is in regards to yesterday's news of Whitaker versus Costa fight not happening. We know the UFC prematurely announces fights like this to pressure the fighters to just accept their current contract terms. But with Paolo sticking to his guns, do you ever see it possible that to avoid losing big fights like this, the company will stop announcing the fights early or will actually pay a more respectable fight purse to guys like Paolo, uh, no, I don't see them not doing this. This has backfired before. There was one fight, uh, Nick Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal. Remember that? Like the article is still up on ESPN.com. Nick Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal, and they put it up there, and uh, they leaked it to to a reporter, and that fight was never going to happen. Uh, this has happened before. There was uh, Habib versus Gilbert Melendez back in the days. Another one. They put it on the poster. I remember because I was working with Gilbert at Fox at the time. And he was like, this fight ain't happening. Um, and he was getting towards the end of his contract. So this is a tried and true practice. You have to be comfortable enough to stick to your guns. Um, Paolo's in the final fight of his deal and apparently, you know, doesn't like what they're offering. And I'm not really sure why the, cause he still has one fight left, right? So why isn't the fight happening? That's why I wanted to talk to him and we'll talk to him hopefully in about 45 minutes time. I'm curious as to why this isn't just the last fight on his deal. If he has one fight left and he has to fight that fight to finish up his contract, why isn't this just the fight? You know what I mean? Like, why doesn't he fight it out with this? He has mentioned things like he was offered 70 and 70 and a six fight deal and he turned it down, all that stuff. But I'm curious as to why this isn't the last one. As for the specific question here, no, they're going to do this. They're going to announce fights, leak fights, give it to their favorite, you know, media members before anything is signed, before, you know, sometimes before the fighter finds out or at the exact same moment that the fighter finds out, this will not stop anytime soon. Uh, Sam, Chag Sameach from London. Chag Sameach Achi with Aljo looking like he's fighting Cejudo in March. Do you think they will try to make O'Malley versus Cheeto too, maybe as a co-main, or would they prefer to keep O'Malley on ice for the title shot following the Yan win at 280? I fear that the UFC believes that an O'Malley loss to Cheeto would take the shine off of one of their most marketable stars, kill a big potential pay-per-view, even though the rematch would be massive, in my opinion. What do you think is next for these two? And also, Corey Muraba, Bantamweight. Last I heard, they were talking about Cheeto versus Corey. That's last I heard. And last I heard, they wanted... O'Malley to just wait for the winner of Cejudo versus Aljo. So we'll see. As far as Marab, then, that's the interesting one. Do they do Marab versus Jan? Two and three. Marlon versus Corey is great, but, you know, specifically to address what you just wrote, O'Malley versus Cheeto 2 is such a big fight. I mean, you could argue... O'Malley versus Cheeto 2 is the biggest fight at 35 right now. You can make that argument, considering how popular they are, considering their rivalry, their history, how the first one went down, how it ended. You can make that case right now. And I feel comfortable stating that it is one of, if not the biggest fight, most anticipated fight, most, you know, I don't know, lucrative fight, attractive fight, whatever you want to say, at 135 pounds. But last I heard... That wasn't what they were talking about. I wouldn't hate it. And it would be a number one contender fight, but maybe they want to delay things and maybe they want to wait until one is champion. Aaron. Hey, Ariel, longtime listener, first time question asker. Two quick ones for you. As a French speaker, have you ever considered interviewing fighters like Manon Fioreau or Francis Ngannou in French? I mean, I drop lines here and there, but this is an English show. I think I would alienate the audience if I did that. 
Also, I mean, no one would understand what we were talking about. But I, I've mentioned, you know, félicitations, bonjour, ça va, comment ça va, blah, 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 blah. Um, but no, I, I don't think it makes sense. One thing that I think could be fun, like Fioro needs a translator. One time maybe it would be fun to just do the interview and translate myself. Remember when she was on that one time, only been once, I, I could understand everything that she was saying, and I even asked about specific things that she said in French that the translator, her coach, didn't translate for whatever reason. I know it's very hard. It's not an easy thing to do. So that's a cool, you know, little wrinkle. It's a nice little luxury to have. But um, to do the whole interview in French, also my French isn't that good. Uh, it would not be a very, I'd, I'd, I'd be, you know, saying um and trying to turn English words into French words. It wouldn't be great. Why do the UFC do certain overseas events on local time and cater others to U.S. audiences? For example, UFC London will be on local time for Leon and other U.K. fighters and fans, but the main card for UFC Rio in January is having a main card start at midnight, even with Figgy, Glover, and Shogun on it. Can you give us a window to the process of picking overseas pay-per-view start times? Much respect and happy Hanukkah from Waterford, Ireland, home of the showstopper Peter Queeley. P.S. Batman Returns is a great, great Christmas film. Wow. What do you guys think about that one? Batman Returns as a great Christmas film. I'll take it. Does it take place during Christmas? Yeah. Rick, what do you think? I mean, he's vehemently 100%. shaking his head. Wow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. You're, you're big into this take, uh, New York Rick. That's, I mean, it's a no brainer. Die Hard Christmas movie. Batman Returns Christmas movie. Eyes wide shut. Fuck him up. Christmas movie. Hello, Rick. How are you? Easy, Frank. The Easy, hair looks Frank. fantastic, by the way. Is oh, Iron Man you. 3 a uh, Christmas movie? Never watched it. Never saw it. Uh, I mean, I've seen it. I don't remember a single thing from it, but I thought sure. Iron Man was Jewish. Uh, <laughs> so it's a Hanukkah movie. <laughs> what? Uh, I Wait, don't know. But the there's real a Iron Man? Like Robert Downey Jr. or the character? The character. And the actor, I guess. I've only seen like 20 minutes of the first one. I will say, I don't know. This is not a hot take. A canon? Okay. Um... You know, we were talking about Home Alone 2 potentially being better than Home Alone 1. I don't agree. I actually feel like Batman Returns is better than the original Batman. Yeah, Batman Returns like is a Jack Nicholson is an instant classic. The Penguin was just fantastic. It was a good play. But Danny DeVito was amazing. Prince? I mean, Michelle Pfeiffer, Catwoman? Yeah. Yeah. Batman Returns is, is who, elite. Who, who, who's the villain? Oh, Jack Nicholson. Yeah, he's pretty damn good in the first one. Pretty damn good as an understatement. Yeah. Not even the best Joker. But there's... Who's the best Joker? Oh. Wow. Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger. You're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when Danny DeVito, like, swims in, when he comes in, like, in the sewer with all the... Like, he is a creepy-looking mofo. When he comes out of the sewer? Yeah, After yeah. saving the kid? He's a, he's a creepy-looking mofo in real life, too, so it translates. Yeah, he's kind of lovable in real life. Um, anyway, back to the second question. If it's close enough to Eastern Standard Time, they're going to do it and cater to us. So yes, the Rio thing sucks, but they've done this to the Rio crowd before. It's close enough to where they're not going to start it. It doesn't behoove them to start it at 8 p.m. as opposed to 10. That will just confuse the audience. And it's very rare, by the way. It's super rare. Um, the last time they did a pay-per-view in the UK, it was, you know, it was on our time zone. It was at 10 p.m. our time, which means it started at... Um, 3 p.m. their time, 3 a.m. their time, excuse me. It's very rare that they they do what they are doing with the Leon card. And remember, the Leon card is kind of gravy. That wasn't slated to be a pay-per-view. That's why there's one on March 4th, then one on March 18th, and then one in early April. So it's uh, it's pretty damn rare. It's either the Abu Dhabi cards in the afternoon or this. That's it. Like the Australia cards are happening at 10 p.m. here because they're used to watching it on Sunday morning anyway. And other than that, I mean, like, again, it's just incredibly rare. It's only really the Abu Dhabi cards that they do this for because they pay top dollar to have those events there. Um, fight nights are different. Those will be all over the map. But for the pay-per-views, they really try to stick to that 10 p.m. start because they feel like that's 10 p.m. Eastern start. That's the ideal time. There was a period around 11 years ago where they dabbled with the 9 p.m. start, Eastern Standard Time. I love that, but according to their metrics there was a drop off in numbers. I mean, it was just like three or four shows. I don't think they stuck with it long enough. And I still do maintain that the shows end too late in, uh, in America, but you know, who the hell am I? So anyway, this is just a special one. 
guy. Happy holidays, Ariel. Let's say the worst happens in Doug Crosby's history shows him to be unfit to judge anymore. What happens next? Would he simply be let go or would every questionable scorecard come under review? No, it would be the former. Just let go. Could a wave of no contest show up on fighters records? No. Could that and his conflicts of interest open him and others up to legal action? Highly, 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 highly doubt it. Highly doubt it. What's your best guess? No, he would just like, you know, he would uh, trail off into the night. That's pretty much it. Thank you for another year of the MMA Hour and hope you and the team enjoy your time off. Um, Doug Crosby was on Chael's podcast. I did not listen to it. I think New York Rick listened to it, right? I did. All the way through. Come on. What is your uh, what is your take on it all? I did not listen to it. I could yeah. not bear to listen to that nonsense. I see this as a millionaire. Um, <laughs> I saw people criticizing him. Go ahead. No, go, go. I saw people tweeting that. In, in case people don't know what you're referring to, explain yes. that. Uh, he he said that judges are not supposed to fear the lurking shadow of millionaire pundits. Um, Otherwise, they can't do their jobs, obviously. So as, a, as you know, the lurking shadow of, of as a millionaire pundit, uh, I think he's just out of his mind, doesn't know how to properly utilize the criteria, has excuses for um, to justify his own scorecards, and quite frankly, you know, shouldn't be judging. But I will say, and I know maybe this might not be favorable for you, uh, I think he's one of many. Like, I don't think he is the problem. I think the problem is, is much larger than him. Uh, but I do think, I do think he can be easily removed and solve that issue right away. I'm not saying the problem with judging is Doug Crosby. He's, he's exhibit, you know, 3000. He's yeah. one of many guys that needs to go, but you know, uh, for better or worse, he's one of those guys who likes the spotlight. He likes the attention. So I knew he would pop up on something like this, just as he popped up on the UG, and it would be some nonsensical BS. Oh, and I, that is one of my favorite things in MMA history. The, the UG, the UG thread Crosby post, thread. yeah, post uh, BJ and um, Frankie won. Frankie, uh, it's still up there, by the way. You could still find it, yeah. and uh, he he enjoys. He's a guy who's in the movie business, supposedly although I don't know of anything that he does and he enjoys kind of playing characters and trolling us. And he, he, he loves the fact that we're all talking about him. Like he is not bothered by any of this. He loves the fact that he's sure. a judge is a hot topic in the world of MMA and he's being talked about by the media. This is great. Chael's a good friend of his. Uh, it's one of the few flaws that Chael has as a human being. And I would say this to his face. He, he has a very weird track record with, uh, with who he befriends. It's very strange. His, his, I would say that he should probably listen to his wife more than his own, hmm. um, you know, his, his, his inner, his inner self, because he's, he's picked some weird ones over the years. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't want, I, I can't imagine anything newsworthy came out of this interview, right? No, uh, on the specifics and he cited, you know, not being able to speak on them, um, based on, on the commission and, and what judges are allowed to say. Um, didn't say much in terms of specifics and just kind of passed the buck and, and excused his own judging, um, and said that he would speak to fighters. Um, it's not the fighters who have, you know, potentially the issue with him. It's, it's more, um, these millionaire pundits to which I would say, it seemed like a lot of the fighters had quite a bit of an issue, um, right. with his scorecards, um, but they don't bring it to him directly. So that means that there's no problem, um, in his eyes. So oh. it is what it is. All yeah. Right. Whatever. Um, he loves this. And uh, I would be surprised if we see him pop up at any major show in 2023. Let's see. It's on the commissions now. Every, every time he does one of these and does pop out and, and stick his head out, I don't feel like he does himself any favors. They, they tend oh, the to interviews? be... Yeah, I know. Yeah. Or, or going on the UG or whatever this is. It, it often doesn't really paint him in a very good light. And Rami. Once again. Happy holidays. Question for Mysterious Frank. How long do you plan on being mysterious for? And will you ever do a face reveal live on the MMA hour as an audio guy? Oh, this is a second. This is a different question. All right. First question. I mean, as long as it's still fun, you have no desire to. Reveal yeah. Your face. I mean, I never really asked to be mysterious. It was kind of them that put this on me. Who's them? I don't remember who asked. They really, who is this mysterious Frank that you keep talking to off camera? <laughs> 
So we just r- ran with it. Yeah. So. So, I mean, no, nothing in the foreseeable future. Good. I do have to say, since people are asking, like, I don't know why people are, like, wanting to see my face or, like, going out of their way to find like my to... profiles online and stuff. Like, is that fun for them? Cool. Yeah, but... they like, you know, when it's when it's a game, when it's a mystery, they like to crack the code. I see. Okay, well. Do you want them to stop? Maybe. <laughs> Guess what? Now that you said it, now that it's going to tenfold, right? Well, game on then, right? As an audio guy, what is the biggest audio blunder you had to deal with that still haunts you to this day? Thanks. Happy holidays, fam. Anything Hmm. come to mind? On this show, yeah, there was, uh, we had some in studio guests, and there was another production team here at Vox that used transmitters and receivers that were on our same wavelengths. Okay. So a bunch of static just started going through your headphones and. It was very um, not cool. When was that? Oh, sometime last year. But like now it's to the point where we look each other in the eyes anytime we have in studio guests and like stay off my wireless bands. Yeah. You tell them, it's like you're like the old guy, get off my lawn. Yeah, basically. One even came up to me recently. It was like, I saw you had a bunch of guests booked today. We're not using any lavalier mics. I'm like, cool. <laughs> look at Frank. Yeah. Just got those elbows out. It's like, grab the rebound. Get exactly. Out Box out. Uh, Slava, hey Ariel, long time, first time. I'll preface the question with saying that you versus Patty was a clear 10 8, but I do want to push back slash ask you about one thing. All right. You say that you don't get paid based on clicks slash views, but doesn't that contribute to your worth to Vox a, or, a con, or slash a future employer? If for the next year nobody ever came on your show, wouldn't the contract Vox offers you be much less because you aren't able to create the same revenue for them via YouTube views? In the same light slash logic, if Dana White is receiving a salary, not sure if this is true, but pretend it is for the sake of the question, couldn't he make your same argument and say that he's not profiting from the fighters per se, because regardless of who fights or not, he gets paid the same. Once again, big fan. I love the show. One of the reasons I like you is that you won't shy away from the tough ones. All right. Yeah, I saw this. I saw um, True Jordy talking about this as well. And again, you know, this is when you ask this question, in my opinion, it's like you're trying to dismiss the fact that I do this for a living. No different than a guy who writes for a magazine, no different than a guy who writes for a newspaper, no different than a guy who writes for a website, no different than a guy who writes books for a living, no different than anyone working in media, I get paid. And of course I want to do the best work possible. And of course I want the most amount of people to watch my stuff or listen to my stuff. Of course I want to get the biggest names because that's my job and I take pride in my work. But to suggest that I make more money based off of interview X or interview Y, is categorically false. So yes, if you're trying to say, oh, you're trying to get the biggest names to get the most views, of course, because that's my job and I'm trying to have the best show possible and I'm trying to put on the best episodes possible and I'm trying to have the best guests, the biggest names on the guests because I care about my work. But if I do a million downloads this month or 500,000 downloads this month, my salary doesn't change. Now at the very end of the contract, three years time, do they come back and say like, oh, you know, we thought the numbers are down, this and that, we're going to talk about something else. Yeah, sure. And you could, you could play that game too, but that's not what they were suggesting. They were suggesting that I am profiting off fighters. I do a show that talks about MMA and oh, by the way, go look at the YouTube views. The majority of the views, the one, the clips that have the most views are the ones with no guests. It's on the nose. It's me talking about this. It's me talking about that more often than not. Go look at DC and Hawani. No guess. So this this idea that I need the guess, I need to do this in order to get more money or get paid or all that, it's categorically false. And it's, you know, Jordy annoyed me because he said I was being disingenuous. Not. There's nothing in my contract that states I have to get X amount to get paid X amount. There's nothing in my contract that states if you don't get X amount, you won't get paid X amount or this, that, or the other. There's nothing. And that's what they were implying. I, I don't own this channel. They make money off of views. They make money off of clicks. I don't. I get the same amount. And maybe that will change one day. And maybe I'll decide that I don't like that model because maybe I'll decide that it's actually more profitable to go the route that they're suggesting I am in right now. But I'm not. Fixed amount. So I don't know what you want me to say. 
Of course, I do this for a living. This is how I support my family. Of course, I want the biggest names. Of course, I want the best shows. Of course, I want to do all that. That's like suggesting anyone in media, whether it's a filmmaker, whether it's an author, whether it's a reporter for a newspaper, like they're trying to sell papers, they're trying to sell movie tickets. Everyone's trying to sell you on anything. This show's for free. And the amount of hours that I've given, you know, that I've done for free, you know, lost count a long time ago. I don't make anything extra based on any views. You click, I don't make that money. X amount, don't make that money. It's set. I know exactly what I'm making this month, next month, the month after that, the month after that. So I don't know how that's disingenuous. I don't know how that's me not telling the truth. I don't like. I don't know what more you want me to say. This is my job, just like your job, just like anyone who does anything for a living, I get paid to sit here and talk about MMA at this particular company. That's the deal we have. But they weren't saying that. What they were saying was, I get paid based off views. I get paid based off clicks. Not true. Now you could play the cat and mouse game all day long about, oh, if you're not getting X amount, they're not. What, what, what are we talking about here? What are we talking about here? Of course, I'm going to try to do the best show possible. Of course, I'm going to try to get the biggest names possible because that's the pride that I take in my work. I'm sitting here. Might as well make it a damn good show. Might as well make it entertaining but I don't get paid an extra dime off of any of that. And if you thought, once again, that I wasn't getting paid to do this job, I'm 40 freaking years old. How the hell do you think I'm supporting my family? What did you think I was doing this? Like you thought I was doing this out of the kindness of my heart? Of course I love doing it. I have to, I, I mean, I have to, I have to pay for things. I have to drive a car. I have to live in a house. I have to feed my kids, put food on the table, put clothes on their backs. What's wrong with you people? The biscuit isn't getting any cheaper, by the way. Yeah, that too. I saw that conversation with uh, Jordy and, and uh, Wade Plem, and I don't know. I mean, I, I got into it back and forth with Jordy a little bit, and I was like, I don't really feel like dealing with this right now. But uh, I felt like he was talking out of both sides of his mouth. He mentioned the disingenuous thing, which I thought was a little dicey-dicey. Says that I don't ask Connor the hard questions, Connor McGregor. Meanwhile, I've, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that's ever asked him face to face, by the way. I was alone in a room with 30 of his people about the allegations against him, about, uh, about punching the dude, all that stuff. Who else has asked those questions? Um, says that I asked Dana White tougher questions than I asked other people. I, mean, if, I don't know. Didn't, did, mm, claimed to, to, to have my back on this one. Didn't really feel like he had my back. Again, no issues with True Jordy whatsoever. In fact, I thought his interview with Tyson Fury was fantastic. I know he's going through a bit of a rough time and I'm not trying to pile on here, but uh, I felt like he was trying to find reasons to either call me a liar or call me out or say that I wasn't being truthful about this or say that I wasn't, you know, painting myself in the correct light or I was you know, as he put it, disingenuous about this and, and didn't, didn't agree. And, and, and I see people saying like, Oh, Ariel, you always, you always, you know, claim to say that you are on the right side of things that you did nothing wrong. I'm not perfect. I've never said that I was perfect. It just so happens in these cases, when these dudes come after me that I am on the right side of things. Now there are times where I'm on the wrong side of things, but I'm not willingly bringing those things up. And to be honest right now, I can't think of any. But the point is, in all these cases over the past year and a half, two years or so, I actually am on the right side of things. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to pretend like I'm wrong? Do you want me to actually paint myself in the wrong light? What, what do you want me to do? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sinoslava. You're wrong about that. Um, Sam. Hi, Ariel. Any indications yet from one or Amazon on the numbers that the one on prime shows are doing. The events seem very popular with the hardcores, but unclear if they're drawing more eyes in America than Bellator or PFL. No indication. They said that they're happy, but I think it's early days. Also, turns out Santa Claus is a huge MMA fan and he wants to give you, New York, Rick GC, and Feral Frank two gifts. What's Feral? Feral? What's Feral? Like a stray cat, a homeless cat. Feral Frank, two gifts each for the MMA world in 2023. The first gift is a dream matchup. The second is a rule or a personnel change. What are your picks? My gifts would be E. Casey Lydon versus Dylan Dennis and Chael P. hired as a spokesman for the PFL. You guys got anything? Dream matchups? Well, it's anything. They're giving us two gifts. 
Give me Hamzat versus Shavkat. That's wow. A great matchup. Rick? Oh. Uh, I had this last week and now I'm forgetting. Give me. Give me Connor versus Nate. And personnel wise. Let's just get let's just give Helwani the keys to uh to the UFC. Let's just sh- let's just shove them in there. Let's just do that. <laughs> I want to see Tim why not Fury and Jake Paul. Jesus uh, Christ. Great, Aim great higher. Call, Frank. Great call. Wait, Jesus. say it again. Say it again. Tommy Fury, Jake Paul. Oh my God. That would be something. Um they're trying, by the way. They are trying for February, but I don't Thank know if God. that's going to happen. Oof. I don't know if it's going to happen, to be honest. Ganu Jones. That's that's one that's I was, like very realistic. Yeah. That I would, oh my gosh. Seeing that fight announcement would give me too hype. Yeah. I would love to see Ganu Jones. They're trying for that March 4th. Um, is there any other dream fight right now? Ganu Jones. I mean, the, the, the dream fight in every weight class is in Ganu Jones. There isn't really one at 205. Maybe if we see Glover Yeri too, but I don't know if that's a dream matchup. Izzy, Alex again. Mm. No? Is that the dream fight? Like right now, like what's the fight. best, like what's the biggest fight in each weight Hamza class? Hamzat versus one of them? At 85? Yeah. Hamzat bone nickel at 85. Oh yeah, let's Hamza, go. Hamza versus Alex or Hamza versus Izzy is is a bigger fight in my opinion. Yeah. I guess. I would I would put Hamza and maybe the the Leon uh Kamaru winner. If you can make one. I think Hamza's the bigger fight at both of those weight classes. All right, fine, fine. Uh Islam Alex. Cheeto versus O'Malley is the biggest fight for me at 35. Interesting. Yeah. Bigger than yeah, that's uh, I mean Sterling Soto. It's a big fight. Yes, for me, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, a pretty big fight, fight. At, at featherweight. Arnold Allen Volk for you. That's a big time fight. <laughs> <laughs> Taporia Volk for real though would be Taporia Patty's a bit pretty big. Oh one. yeah, Taporia Patty would be amazing. Valentina Amanda three. I don't know why yes. they're 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 fumbling that one. At thirty five, yeah, there's really not a lot of options there's at thirty five. Yeah. At twenty five, I think Zhang and. And uh, Valentina, Valentina, but I'm also, I mean, I'm in for Grasso and and Valentina too. I'm definitely in for that. Rose Zhang three. Go ahead. Nah, man. Nah, I'm good on that. Does Rose win that fight? She already beat her twice. I know, but feels like they're in two different spots right now. I think that second fight was a lot closer than the scorecards. I'll tell you that. Sure. I'm good. I'm. I don't need to see Zhang and Rose again. Really? I would like to see it. Yeah, it feels like Rose has has a claim for the title. She's beaten her twice. I'm good, I'm good to move on. All right. What's so funny? Make it funny. Uh, yeah, he's just he's just just he's good care. to move on. So so the division moves on. Rose drops the the title aspirations. It's all good. I, I want to see something new for Rose. Nah, I get it. She, I, I bet she likely needs a fight before she gets the title shot. Hundred percent. Rose Marina Rodriguez. Like I'm, I'm good on Rose and Carla too. Don't need to see that again. Oh God, like, I'm, no, I'm good no, on some no, of these. No one, no that's, one needs to see I'm, that. That's totally Carla different, beat her I'm, twice. We're, we're done. The first two Rose Jung fights were really good, for different reasons. So that's why I don't mind. Plus, it's a great story of Zhang losing to her twice. Let's see if Rose. But I would not suggest Rose go back and fight Zhang right now. She needs a confidence booster, right? She needs something to get her mojo back. Uh, Louis, uh, or Luis. Hi, Ariel. What are your thoughts on Chris Whittingham's takes from last week on the Dan Levitard show with Stu Guts that Buffalo is a weather city, should probably not have a football team, and the Buffalo Bills should be mandated by the league to have a dome over their stadium. He was just messing around. And, you know, good on Chris. I like Chris a lot. Uh, That clip went viral. I even saw Josh Allen talking about it, and he said that he saw it. He's a Dolphins fan. He's just trying to mess around. They were playing the Dolphins. It was going to be cold. Obviously, no one in their right mind believes this, and they would never not have a team. Now, the dome thing is interesting, by the way. The dome thing is interesting. Like, what about a retractable roof? Definitely interesting, but I I, I feel like 
Buffalonians. Is that the right term, Frank? Yeah. I feel like they take pride in having the uh, the open air stadium. And that's, Buffalonians is really the term? Yeah. I don't know why that feels wrong to me. People from Phoenix are Phoenicians? Yeah. Just saying. They're all yeah. kind of weird. Uh, did you hear those takes last week? And do you have any invites to go back on the show anytime soon? No invites. Uh, he writes the episode last year where you discussed Jake Paul and the state of boxing with Whittingham was great. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I think I was actually... Was I was I in a play? I think I was at a playground in Florida, and I was going down a slide like a kitty slide when I did that interview last week, uh, last year. Excuse me. Um, they're just messing around. They're Dolphins fans. They've they've got a they've got to grab onto something. They've got nothing else going for them. They're they're grasping at straws. Uh, they knew they didn't stand the chance. Look what happens when it starts to snow. They crumbled. They uh, they they wilted under the pressure. And so they're trying to advocate. By the way, Dolphins um, and their stadium, they're notorious for putting the visiting team where the sun is going to be beaming by making everyone uncomfortable. Like this is this is the type of organization. These are the types of fans that they are. They're, you know, they're not exactly high class individuals. But I like Chris a lot. And I thought it was funny that his thing went viral. And I thought it was funny that so many people were offended by it, not realizing that it's a Miami show and the majority of them are Miami fans, and they were just trying to rile people up. Mohammed, shalom from London, Ariel. I felt somewhat of a kindred spirit with you when you tweeted out how Maradona was a hero in your household growing up. I'm also a child of immigrants in the UK, and it was the same in my house growing up. My question is, do you think Messi has stepped out of the shadow of the legend that is Maradona? Is it even applicable question anymore? For me, it is a no. It's no knock on Messi. His resume is clearly better. However, Maradona played at a time when the rules were a lot more loose. He was always getting fouled and injured. He achieved greatness with a fairly average national team and even helped achieve similar feats with his relatively average club team of Napoli. Messi was always part of a team with a strong backbone. I look forward to your thoughts. Much love, Mohammed. So a few things. Yes, uh, Maradona... For my family, for my uncles, for my cousins, for my brothers, like he was number one. Uh, we all had his jersey. It was a huge deal. That's why we went to the Argentina game against uh, Nigeria in 94 that I talked about. Uh, they, they just absolutely loved him. Soccer was the number one sport that my uncles played. My uncle, Gad said that a lot of people know he talks about soccer and Messi all the time and Maradona all the time. Like he, he was the guy. He was, he was our, you know, he was the guy that everyone talked about among my, my family members. Um, not my favorite athlete growing up. Patrick Ewing is my favorite athlete growing up, but you know, he was a big presence and, you know, 86, I'm four, 90, I'm eight, 94, I'm 12. So, you know, uh, these are my formative years as a sports fan to answer the question. I, I do think that, you know, he has stepped out of his shadow. The knock on Messi was always, yeah, he had all these achievements, never won the big one for Argentina, uh, never won the world cup. That's no longer a thing. Even before that, the knock was never won a Copa America. That's no longer a thing. Even before that, people said, oh, he would only win when he's on Barcelona, PSG now, can't win when he's on his own. That's no longer a thing as well. And by the way, this Argentina team was not really, you know, they first of all, they lost to Saudi Arabia. Fine, that could be an anomaly, but like they weren't exactly a collection of all-stars. Um, there were much better teams uh, at this World Cup. So... His team was somewhat average as well. Um, maybe too young, too old. Like they, 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 they weren't. There weren't a ton of people. I don't know. What, do you do you remember what, what were the odds of them winning? GC, do you do you, you know off the top of your head? You had a future, right? Going into this one, plus five fifty. Yeah, was that number one? Uh, that was second behind Brazil. Oddly enough, I was actually looking up the eighty six odds, and they were only like plus four hundred going into that. They had odds back in back those days. According to Google, uh, going back to then, yes, they were the second favorite in those two. Um, I, I think that he has stepped out of his shadow. He, he has won everything now that there is to win. He won the Ballon d'Or. He won Champions League. I mean, league title, everything. What what hasn't this guy done at this point? Um, and the reaction to his victory is incredible. Now, I think it's okay to always compare the two and hold them in a similar... It's like, you know, Pele and Ronaldo or Pe Pele and Ronaldinho, although I think Ronaldo had the better career. Not Cristiano, like the original Ronaldo. That's okay. It's fine. It, it, no different to a degree of debating Jordan and 
and LeBron or Jordan and Kobe. There's always going to be different guys at, at different times, different eras, and that's fine. I think up until this point, it was Maradona first because he had the World Cup win. Now, I think you can make the case for Messi one or you put them as equals. That question would flow very nicely into Santiago Ponzinibbio if he was around, but I'm assuming he's not around. Correct. Is he around? No. Let me see. Getting a little dicey. All right. Uh, I'll keep going, man. Much love, Mohammed. Uh, breaking news. I wanted to trial a quick fire round of questions. Show some love. Okay, so we've got uh, Lewis is saying that he wants to do some rapid fire questions. Chris Williams asks Has a weight class ever headlined back to back pay per views like the light heavyweight division is about to with 282 and 283? Oh my God. Um, I mean, I feel like they have. Didn't, by the way, didn't Flyweight do it with uh, Figueredo and Perez and then Figueredo and Roma, uh, Moreno? I'm pretty sure in 2020 this happened. Uh, right? I think, I think it was like UFC 250. Yeah. Five? It was 255 and 256. And they were both... You had it right. Figueredo versus Perez and then Figueredo versus Moreno. So there you go. For uh, 256. Thank you, David. Uh, hi, Ariel. Where do you rank Andres Cantor? Among the all-time greatest play-by-play -play sports broadcasters, yes. Uh, he is the Univision play-by-play uh, -play guy. The guy who goes, goal! And that clip of him crying. He's from Argentina. Um him crying when, when they won on Sunday was incredible. His son, I think, works for CBS Sports now. I mean, I don't watch the games in in Spanish because I don't understand Spanish for the most part, uh, but he is a legend, and he's got to be up there. But it's, it's hard for me to... Oh, is he... Is he, uh, is he has he joined? Not yet, but we're... Weird. He, he just texted me that he's ready. <laughs> All right. Um... But I, 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 it's hard for you know, it's hard for me to rank because I'm not, um, I'm not a Spanish-speaking viewer. But he is incredible, and he's a legend. He's one of the greats of all time. Blue go for Ariel. Any legs on Eddie Alvarez versus Chandler three? If not, how about Chandler versus Michael Johnson? Uh, doubtful on both. And Bruce, any 2023 fight news you want to break before the new year? Is there anything that I'm hearing? No. Uh, Jamal, 2020. Any news on Nathan Diaz? Um, think we could see him by, I don't know, early summer, spring. Feels like he has decided on a certain path. Let's see if it comes to fruition. Uh, don't want to say what that path is just yet. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. But I, I, right now it feels like they're focusing on one certain path. All right. Uh, let us put a pin in it there at 14 and then we'll get to the rest in a moment. For now, though, I want to talk to uh, the most famous fighter to hail from Argentina. I want to talk to him about this incredible week for his home country. Let's talk to Santiago Ponzinibbio, who's coming off a massive win himself. Hello, Santiago. How are you, my friend? How are you? How are you, brother? Hey, congratulations. Congratulations to your country. Can you put into words what these last few days have been like for someone who is so proud to be from Argentina, to see everything that's going on? What has it been like for you? Crazy. That's a dream. We love soccer. It's on the culture, right? Um, the yesterday when the Argentina, the the players are in the country. That's the biggest mobilization of the people. No, six million alone. Six million people go to the street. That's people completely crazy. We we love soccer. It's in our culture, and, and yeah, that's a dream. And that's that's. I think the Messi deserve the team deserve. Um, I'm so proud. I'm so happy. Um, where did you watch the final on Sunday? Uh, with some friends here in Miami. It's a lot of Argentinian people here, and it's very fun. Uh, yeah, I was with uh, 
some friends. Yeah. So when they're up 2-0 and then they tie to, like, could you tell me about, I was watching it and I was nervous. I wanted Messi to win. I wanted Argentina to win because I wanted to see him. But as someone who is Argentinian, that, that role, I mean, have you ever been this nervous watching a sporting event? No, never, man. That's super crazy. Super crazy. <laughs> That's crazy game. Um, this is an amazing f- final, you know. That's, I think now it's uh, everything perfect, you know, for we won and everything perfect. But in the moment, man, when they do two goals in three minutes, I can't believe that, man. Uh. And when they do the three three, the penalty, that was crazy, bro. It was crazy, but thank God, you know, the guys, I think the everyone in the Argentina team is, you know, very focused and, and won the, the World Cup. doesn't matter what happened. They're always focused. They put a lot of tension. You imagine, you won. They're playing so good. And in three minutes, they did on two goals. And that's crazy for mentally, right? Um then I think they're still, you know, with the hungry, they're still, you know, focused and and and, and they do it. They, 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 that's amazing. Um, how did you react when they won? Did you cry? Crazy, yeah, of course. Crazy, crazy, completely crazy. I go to the street <laughs> and I spend probably twelve more than twelve hours in the street playing songs, you know, with a lot of people, dancing. That's crazy day. Crazy everybody. I a lot it. of people in this a lot of Argentinian people. That's amazing energy. Are you surprised by the reaction back home? Like the amount of people that are showing up, the celebrations, or did you expect something like that if they won? Because this... uh, I know. No, I know. Soccer you know. in Argentina are, you know, is different, right? This this people love soccer. We are very passionate and everyone waiting for that. We're very close, you know, but the last one in eighty six. We are very close with a lot of problems. We're, now we have a Messi in the sweet spot, and it's a lot of, you know, expectation about the this happening. And yeah, I know they're gonna be crazy, crazy. I saw a lot of videos, you know, the the, the, the things that happens in Argentina. And man, crazy. Uh, when you saw them lose to Saudi Arabia, did you think that they would get back on track and win it all, or did you get nervous? Yeah, no, 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 no. I still, I still have a lot of fear, you know, in the, in the Argentina. Yeah, they're, they're good, you know, and that can happens, you know, that can happens when when you play, you know, in, in, when you start, you know. No, I'm still, I'm still very, very confident. They say the word confident. That, yeah, thank you. Someone very just confident. someone just asked me the question, but I'm curious what you'd say. Uh, they asked me if now. Is Messi finally out of the shadows of Maradona? Is he is he viewed differently, or will Maradona always be above Messi? What do you think? Where, where do you rank the two? Man, the numbers the Messi are unbelievable. I think he have you know longest career, you know, long time in the high level. Maradona doing amazing things, but that's very short career, mm. very short time for he have a crazy life. Yeah. And I think the Messi put better number for him, very professional. I think he sustained the level for so many years. And yeah, I think, you know, Messi is unbelievable right now what he did. You ever meet him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When? I met a time ago. Uh, I have a very friend, good friend that's bring the, the boss and um sometimes I talk with him with the with the phone and yeah yeah. Wow. That's good. Nice guy. Yeah. Very nice. Very humble. And also when that happened with the Canelo thing and I told him and my friend sent everything for him and he and he loud, you know. He watched everything, you know, and he loud. You know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you had his back with the Canelo thing with the jersey, right? Yeah, of course, man. I, I I'm pissed off. But that's happened. That's 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 on the past. That's Canelo say. He said sorry. Yeah, say sorry, and that's it. You know. Yeah, that was a crazy thing. I didn't. I didn't agree with Canelo. It was making a big deal out of nothing. And we we know we know this is what I say. You can judge for one little thing, and one guy. You know, if you watch the video, he not doing nothing. First thing, and the second thing, you can judge a Messi for a little thing when he have a 
look at the carrier. He's super professional. You know, it's, it's not only the best. He's an example. You know, he's a humble guy, you know, very. And I think, you know, the, the reaction are bad, but he say sorry. That's it. That's about the past. Yeah. Are you going to go back home to celebrate? Man, yeah, probably. I need to do some thinking in the United States. I'm still in Florida right now, but yeah, I have, I have, I need to go to Argentina. Yeah, and there's, you know, there's a rumor that he's going to come to Miami too, uh, that Messi's going to play for Miami. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, for the so he'll be the, yeah, is- he'll be the second most famous person living in Miami behind you from Argentina. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, I, this is what I listen. I wish he come to the Inter. He buying a percentage for the team. We will see, man. If he coming to living here, that's gonna be amazing. Um, and so, a good stretch for you. Of course, we just saw you. You had the big win over Alex Morono. Um, did, w- w- did he surprise you? Like you had the Robbie Lawler fight. He takes the fight on four days' notice or something. D- did he surprise you how tough he was? Yes, yes, yes. That's the change. Everything, right? I, I, I prepare for Robbie Lawler. That's a tough guy. Boxer, you know, the guy is unilateral, you know, his style. No, no. And they put me this key, you know, they're coming very good. He won in eight in the last 10, four in a row. And, you know, a little heavy. We do in 180 pounds. You know, I, I'm the way when they, they offer me that. But, yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. He, he doing good. And I, I take time in the fight to adapt, to read the fight. You know, for I working for us, I'm working for other things. And, I believe in myself for this. I saw, yeah, no problem. Give me anybody I want to fight. But I, I believe I'm a fighter. I have the, the ability to, to do the things, but take time. I know it's very fast, everything in the fight. You know, I take a couple punches. I give others. But, yeah, I'm surprised. But thank God, you know, I can, I can finish the fight. I can put a knockout. I want my bonus, the performance. And end of the day, everything are, are are good. Are you happy with your performance in the fight, or because he took the fight on such short notice? No. Did you I want to clean? Happy. You're not happy. No, I'm not happy at all with the performance. I'm happy with the result. I'm happy that I can prove to myself that I still can do it. You know, these things that everything are crazy, um, and I still do it, especially in the fight. I take time to read. I'm a little sleepy. I take some punches and I still can go and finish. That's good for me. But I don't like it at all the way that I fight. I don't like But it's okay. Sometimes it happens. Fight is fight. Some days are good. Some days are bad. The most important, I take the victory by knockout. And, you know, and I beat a guy that coming with the four victories in a row. You know, that's good. Right. If I probably love it, the people going to say, Lawler is no more the same. He come and lose in the fight. You know, I think Lawler is our biggest name, but if we need to talk about the moment in the career, more only much better moment mm. than, than Lawler. And it's more risky for me, everything. But I take and I did. I finish. That's, that part are good for me. The part, the technique that I fight or the, the, the that's don't like, but as I told you, you know, fight is fight. This, the thing can happen. Why do you think it went down like that? Is it just because he's a completely different fighter than Robbie or some other reason? Yeah, it's a different fighter. You know, I, um, I prepare for something that changed everything in the last minute. You know, when I I try to use my job, I'm slippery a little bit in the cage. I don't have good posture up. And, you know, different small things, that the different something that they, they maybe doing, they don't have my best performance. But, we did, you know. I, I think I I finished the fight. I won. I'm unhappy with that. Mm. Uh, do you want Robbie next? Do you want to go back to the Robbie fight, or are you moving on from that? No, no. Listen, the fight with Robbie, the, the UFC offered me to me. You know, I'm not asking for him. Right. Um, uh, I, I, I think in the, I'm going to fight with uh, Barbarena. This is what I'm thinking. And UFC told me, you know, we have Lawler to December. In my perfect world, I, I wish to fight in September and in December. You know, for I fight my last fight with Michelle Pereira in May. Mm. Yeah, May. Um, yeah, I'm pissed off. I lose split decision. I think they won the fight, you know. Um, I say, give me somebody to fight in September, another fight to make in December. Um, 
this conversation with a manager, with the people of the UFC, and they back for the, with this fight. But I'm not asking for that. Right? It's a good name, uh, are good. If they tell me, hey, we have Robbie now in two months, okay, perfect. But waiting for him, no. I, 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 if I need to wait, I'm going to wait him for other opportunities, right? I, I want to back to the, to the top 10, you know, to, to have my opportunity to fight for the belt. Um, I think uh, I put good work in my last fight, you know. In the 12th fight, my last 12th fight, I beat nine, but... Three fight that lose two are a split decision. I think they both with Neil and I think I work with Michelle Pereira, you know. And you know, it's everything, you know. A lot of stock right now. I want to 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 back to the ranking, to back to have my, my opportunities. Who makes the most sense for you in your opinion? Or or who do you want the most? I don't know. I need to check the top ten and, and see who, who, who is there, you know. It's a lot of guys that I can do a good fight, you know. I think there there are a lot of good strikers there. You know, we can make exciting fight. You know, I think Vicente Luque are one of that. You know, it's a good fighter. Uh, they have a, um, I need to check the 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 rankings. You know, it's a lot of good guys there. You know, we will see what is they happen. Um, you know, there was that period when you were on the winning streak and you were so close, and you know things worked out the way they did. Do you feel like when you see the top of the division, do you, do you feel like you? You know, you could beat all those top guys. Do you still have the confidence? Do you still have the belief that you could be a champion, that you can hang with the top two, three champion guys? You know, you know what I mean? Like, do you feel that way right now? Well, of course. Of course I feel it. Of course I believe in myself. I know what I can do. Um, yeah, I just only need the opportunities, you know. It's, it's, it's still, I have energy. I'm healthy. I'm going to fight for that, you know. I'm going to try to take my opportunity, to take my shot to for the belt. You mentioned the the judges that you thought that you won the Pereira fight and then you've had two split decisions. Uh, the judging is is an, is a hot topic these days. Once again, it's always a hot topic in MMA, but it feels like it comes and goes. What do you think? Any any thoughts on how it can be fixed? Any thoughts on on what could be changed? Man, we saw a lot of times, you know, in a lot of fights. I'm especially I'm broadcasting. I call the fights. Um, I saw so many times. You know, I no agree with the judge, you know, and this happened with me, you know, two times in a row, you know. Um, a lot of people think they want these fights, but I don't know what they need to do, but for sure the system need to change, man. That they, they can they can finish your car. Right. They can, you know, they, that's crazy, you know, that's crazy what they, they can do. They have a lot of power. They need to change this system, you know, doing something better. And I feel like part of the problem is the fighters don't really know how the judges are going to judge the fight. So like you don't, it's not like you have to fight based on what they are going to try to look for, but I, I feel like there's a disconnect between the judges and the fighters, right? Like you don't, you don't even know what they're looking at or what they're trying to score. Right. Yeah. I don't know if you, if I need to talk with my last fight with a uh, Pereira, you know, I know that I lose the first round, but in the second round, I put a little more punches. And I also, when I, that the, the, the round is finished, I put a takedown. I put a takedown in my head. I say, okay, I, I, I won the round. I don't want to spend too much energy in the floor. Just put the take down, get up, say, okay, the second round is me. In the third round, I go, I put more than double the punches and the kicks. I say, okay, I want the take on the third round. My corner thinking the same, you know, everybody. And and the judge say the one judge say that I lose. I think one judge, I don't remember, but I think one judge said that I lose the three rounds. Is it? Another judge said I lose the the second and the third and the the second and the first round. But this that's impossible. You know, I put more punches, I put a takedown, you know, in the third round, I put more than number of the punches. You know, I can I can understand what is the judge. I can why I can understand what is the, the what are they thinking, you know? Yeah, it's 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 crazy. And then you guys lose money, right? You get half your pay if you lose these fights and your ranking. Half the money, opportunities, man, it's it's crazy for this in when when I sit in the corner and I know the fight is not going good, I'm not feeling good. That's the point. I'm not feeling good in the fight. For all this change, I'm not feeling good. For the, you asking me about the performance, I tell you I, I don't like it at all. I'm not feeling good. And I ask him to my corner, what do you think? And he, he told me, we lose the two rounds. He's doing to put pressure on me. For he knows I can do better. I say, okay, you know, I don't want to go to the to the judge again, you know. 
in my opinion, I think they won the second. I lose the first round, but it's still close fight. I still I don't want to go to the judge. And when the, my corner say that, I say, okay, I'm gonna finish this guy. Doesn't matter what happened. I'm gonna put everything to try to finish. I don't want to go to the judge. Uh, and thank God I can do, you know. But yeah, it's a lot of stress, you know. I think go to the to the judge is a lot of stress. Wouldn't it be great if you knew what the score was in real time, open scoring? Like if you knew after every round how they scored it, so at least you actually knew where you stood in the fight. Wouldn't that be good? Wouldn't that be be a nice luxury to have? Wow, yeah, that's that's right? very good. You like that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Man. I think they we should can do that. Yeah, the way now in the moment and, and you understand what is it happening in the fight. I think that they put it on the screen. They put it on the broadcast. All right. I think that's a very good idea. You can, you can, so between you fighting, that's, they can help a lot. Yeah. It's like, uh, let's compare it to the, the, the World Cup final on Sunday. France knew that they were down 2 nothing. They knew they had to score twice. They knew. It wasn't like, oh, what's the score? We're not sure. You know what I mean? You should know where you right. stand. Right, right, right. Of course. I think that's a good idea. I think that can help a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Next time you do the broadcast in uh, in Spanish, you should say that on the broadcast. My friend Ariel told I me. Idea. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you could say you could say it's your own idea. You don't have to you don't have to say it's mine. Okay. I like it. Okay. It's a good one. I appreciate it's it. A good one. How soon do you want to come back? We will see, you, man. Um I wish to fight soon. I stay activity, you know, try to do three fights and yeah. If I can do four, that's going to be a perfect, but I know it's more difficult, but minimum three fight and stay stay busy. And what I told you, take good opportunities to come back to, to the ranking and, and take my opportunity for the best. You know, that's my main goal. Sure. And you feel healthy, no more problem. You had that bad stretch of so much uh, things happening. Your body feels good, back to 100% or yeah. close? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel happy. I feel happy. Yeah. Good. Yeah, thank God. Thank God. Are you still partying? Are you still celebrating? Or has the partying died down now from Sunday? No, no, it's still partying. Still, still partying. partying. Still more going Back on? The- partying, yeah. Incredible. Of course. Those, I can't get enough of all the videos of all those people on the highway, at his house, at his grandmother. I can't get enough of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing, man. That's, we are passionate. That's we. We are. And yeah, man. It's a World Cup, man. This not happen every day. Sure. This, this is a big celebration. But he's still not as good as Ronaldo, in my opinion. It's still Ronaldo one. Nah, I'm joking. I'm joking. Ah, nah, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I think you're the only guy that's thinking of that after what has happened. I'm joking, my friend. I'm joking. Well, congratulations to you and your country. Congratulations on the win. Very happy for you. Very happy for the whole country. Very happy for you on the victory. And thank you for coming on. As always, good to talk to you, Santiago. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate I appreciate your time, man. See you next one. Yes, sir. There he is. Santiago Ponzinibbio, a very proud Argentinian. Uh, they're still on a high. Those scenes incredible from uh, the last few days. So congrats and uh, let the good times roll. Laissez les bons temps rouler. All right. Uh, told you at the top of the show, we're going to be joined by Paulo Costa. He has been in the news in a big way over the past few days. Let's not waste any time. Let's say hello to our old friend, Bohashinha himself, Paulo Costa. Is he there? Hello, Paulo. How are you, my friend? What's up, Ariel? It's good to see you again, brother. Yes. I miss you. Yes, I miss you too. Where are you right now? I'm in Brazil. I'm in Brazil. My ranch. Wow, you have a ranch over there? Yeah, yeah, of course, bro. Of course. Everybody in Brazil has a ranch. Oh, almost everybody. Yeah, You're... we have a... That's that's how we arrived here in Brazil. Have a horse. Incredible. Uh, it's, a it's a wild lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. You're like a real Brazilian cowboy. Yeah, kind, a kind. Okay. Well, you look great. You look great, uh, Paulo. You have Thank been in you have been in the news a lot the last few days. I don't know if you know this. A lot of people talking about mm-hmm. you. So thank you for coming on. Uh, has it been a stressful time for but, you? No, no, no. I'm pretty good. Uh, you know, I'm I, I kind of um, out of the news and fun. You know, I'm just um, enjoy my myself a little bit. Avoid some. Uh, some news and you know just get 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 to, to myself uh, and a relax time okay so so let's talk about this whole situation because it all stems from you versus Robert Whitaker in February uh, and now we find out that the fight isn't happening but I want to go to the beginning 
Did you ever agree to fight Robert Whitaker in February? Did you ever say yes to this fight? No, you uh, UFC uh, promote that post me against Harvey. I don't know how to spell their name. Every every every, the, every time that I say Robert, the people no, that's right. think I'm talking about the the Lord of Rings. You know the <laughs> dwarfs, the yeah. Hobbits. <laughs> uh, okay, I I say Whitaker. Uh, that that was a pretty pretty fake news, you know. Uh, because I didn't. Uh, get a contract or terms or nothing to fight him. Just um, Mick Maynard asked me if I'd like to fight him. I said, of course. He's a great fighter. And um, they're supposed to be a great fight to, to, to do, you know, a, a fight that you feel excited to, to, to do. And the, I think the people uh, want to, to watch that fight as well. So I say, of course, I can fight him. But now let's go to the be to, to the the terms, you know, to the and uh, that you know, just this happened, and we we didn't uh, keep moving after that. They they didn't uh, send a contract or terms or nothing. They just say, if you want to fight Whitaker, let's do that fight. But I cannot do that fight. Fight the number one or number two. Uh, High level guy like Whitaker for the same money that I I'm getting since 2017. No makes sense. I say okay, I can fight him. Let's fight, but pay a fair money. You know, uh, this fight can move a lot of people, a lot of attention, and uh, I will not fight him for the same money from five years ago. Uh, I got thirty-five thousand dollars to fight Marvin Vettori. He was number one at that at that time. Thirty thousand dollars is a bullshit money. I did a lot of that for UFC. I fight Yoel Romero for the same on the same terms. I fought uh, Desanya. I fought Marvin, and I fight I fought uh, Luke Hockholt on the same terms, just to finish that that hell contract. You know, because I want to be free from that uh, that mistake that I did with my manager, my old manager, five years ago. But the name, the number is so outnumbered right now. So uh, I cannot stay. You know, just continue doing that. I keep doing that because it does not help the fight. It does not help uh, our class. So. At same point, I, I, I should say stop. I will not do that a long time ago. But I didn't because we Brazilians, we just want to fight because we don't care too much, you know. If they, they say, okay, you fight that guy, okay, let's go. Uh you are you you will fight the number five, just let's go. I'm okay with that. The same the same money. We we, we uh we are doing that for a long time. But it's not, it's, it's, a, it's not help for the business, for us athletes. It's not a good way to hand. This is horrible, actually horrible to the business, you know, on the fighter's side. So you cannot just say yes. Somebody say, if you want, if you are good on something, don't, don't do it for free or for cheap money or for, you know. And uh, if you want to sell something, not, you need to put a price. So I did a lot on the past, but it's enough. Mm. Can, can I ask you for this fight with Robert? It's the last fight on your current contract, right? Yes, I have one more just finished. And and what what are the terms for this one? Do you mind me asking? What would it be for this one? Uh, it's like a sixty-five or seventy, seventy for seventy. Seventy and seventy. Not, yeah. And and uh, I think so. are you saying to them? No, it, it, it's not more than that. I, sure. I just yeah. Are you saying to them? Around. Are you saying to them? I will happily fight Robert Whitaker, but I want a new contract before. I say I want a new terms to fight him. I will not fight for the same money. Yeah. I. It's a big fight. It's the main event on Australia. Per you know, uh, the people. Uh, from Australia, we'll be there. They 
is a great fight. So, 70 is not is not en uh, enough for that. Right. Just go a little bit high. And they say, no. So, <laughs> you know. They said no. The, no, they say no. Yeah. They, they say uh, the, the Dana White uh, law uh, hunt comparable saying, we need to make an, a new deal, six fight boats. I said, no, I'm not talking about six fight more. I talk about that one. Don't make sense. Ah. Why you bring six fights on, you know, I'm talking about that one. Fight Hobbit, fight Whitaker. Not more six. It's the same. Not make sense to me. I don't oh, okay. know if it makes sense to you. So, but yeah, yeah. So they're, like, saying, uh, they're saying if you want to resign, if you want a better deal, you need to get six fights added. We're not going to do a new deal just for Robert. That's what they're yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not looking for more six fights, you know. Uh, not on on the numbers that he 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 showed me, he sent me. It's like uh, I, yeah, I I don't I don't think it makes sense. I'm talking about one fight in specific, not more six. Why you 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 dragging more six for you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I did this in, in the past. I told you. Five years ago, 2017, and I paying for this mistake even now because I'm so outnumbered, and, outdated. And at, at this point, do you do you even want to resign past this one last fight, or do you just want to have this one fight and move on at this point? Yes, uh, it, it depends of the numbers, but my my mentality is finish that, and after that we see. Okay. Because why you make six fight balls in the new term and uh, maybe you can get more money, you know, when you do your fifth fight. Right. You will be still hold for on this term, you know? Yeah, it's like a, I say, Ariel, uh, are you, can you, uh, I, I can't, I want to hire you to do an interview to me. One interview to me, how much you, you ask for, for? One interview, you say, okay, I ask this money. Like, I, I, I just figure out something. $5,000 to do. And I say, okay, deal, shake my hand, and now you need to do this for five, for 10 years or five years. Yeah. Straight. You say, no. I just agree with you. One interview, not for a long time. So yeah, that's it. I I don't know, bro. Uh, I think they they just actually offer a very low numbers for Brazilians. I don't know what they figure. Maybe they figure ah, that motherfuckers live in Brazil, in the jungle. That they they don't they don't need a, a real money because the currency is like five times less than dollars. So let's pull, you know pay bullshit. And that thing that I told you before. The mentality of Brazilians is, okay, I agree, let's do. I did that. And I know the Brazilians do that a lot. No, no, don't, don't care who you want to put to fight me. I don't care on the number or the, the, my opponent is on the rank. I ju just will you go there and fight and that's okay. But this is horrible for the business. Yeah. So I really don't care for who I fight. But if it is worth money, I will take leverage from that. If if they come to you now and say, "All right, it's no Robert Whitaker fight; it's not happening. We're going to give you a lower rank guy, lesser lesser name, just to finish out the contract." Are you going to fight that guy for the seventy and seventy, or are you refusing to fight anyone for seventy and seventy? Uh, yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, actually, the terms when you sign has a uh, uh, end. You know, after five years, the yeah. the, the, the terms end. It's a kind of ju juridical things. I'm not a lawyer, and that's why uh, Hunt Campbell is the guy who talk about we fight because he's lawyer, you know. Mm -hmm. But so at some point is a, a kind of leverage for Hunt because he knows the term. He maybe he made the point. I don't know, but uh, I think you can finish that before before necessary need to do all the fights if the the time end. Mm. What coming first? Mm. I think. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Yeah, yeah, that's true, right? So, 
So when does your end? Yeah, uh, when does your contract end? What do you know? What month? I think uh, the beginning of next year, like March. So I can do or not. I think so. Uh, but anyway, if I need to do one more, I will do. But for what my payment right now was, like a ranking guy or so, you know, so lower ranking guy. But I'd like to fight with the bird, bro. It, it, I think he's a kind of, uh, if they negotiate, it will be their one because I want to just put the number and say take or not. Ah, uh, and no back. It's not a kind of negotiation. Yeah. Can I ask what you are need... you looking for? What do you think is fair? Can I ask you that? Uh, maybe. Yeah, he he offered me uh, for a new contract like a uh, half million dollars, but for fight with I can, but not for six one. What do you mean, half million combined or for one fight? No, combined. Combined, you know, but like, what, what is fair? Yeah, for, what is fair for Whitaker? No, I fight him for for that money, but got it. You would fight Whitaker for, for one, half half a million for five hundred thousand. Yeah. Yes, yes, for one yeah. fight. Yeah, yeah. You deserve yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, you've been doing this a long time. Sure, sure. sure. We, we all fight deserve. You know, if you sell, if you sell a, a, a good, uh, on good way, you fight. If you bring attention, yeah, why not? Yeah. So. Are, do you feel uh, disrespected by the fact that they put it out there before you agree to the terms? Like, do you think that they were trying to put pressure on you by making the fight public, get everyone excited about the fight, and then now it's this whole big hullabaloo, ah, uh, guys. And you were being honest for several weeks telling people this fight isn't happening, but do you feel like they were trying to put pressure on you? Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. I, I cannot make sure of that, but it's so weird why they... they, they, they they are doing that, you know. They did twice with me. Um, the first one, I guess, we, uh, maybe I don't remember actually, but they did twice. This is not the first one. Does that upset you? No, no, not really. No, not really. <laughs> no, no. Just I, I just came in and said the truth. It's a fake. You know, what happened. Yeah, did, did I did you my part. Did you see Robert's video? He he posted a video about it. He he seemed uh, very. No, I sent I sent I sent a a, a, max, a message for him. Oh yeah, on on Instagram. Yeah, I say, bro. I say the same things that I tell t- t- tell you guys. I say, bro, what do I do? I think would be a nice fight, a great fight. But I'm try again, very very condition for everybody else, not just for me. You know for. For everybody, yeah. For all fights are all so. Uh, I cannot just sure. say yes and keep doing that, and you know. Did he respond? So he, yeah, yeah, he, he was very kind. Yeah, I understand. Good questions for you. I hope we can fight on on the the near future. And I say, I, I say same, but uh, and he's sad because has nobody to put to fight him. They right. remove him and me. Remove we both. Uh, we have. I had uh, at least me. I, I had no nothing to fight with her. But they made up. They made a post, a fake post, and they removed the both guys. I think it's a great loss for 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 the poor card. But I think just uh, you know uh, more skills on this negotiation would be very. Easy, a easy way to make that fight happen. I can fight him much. Hey, Hunter, if you want that fight, if you want me to fight uh, Whitaker, I think it's worth just send the contract with the fair numbers. Do you think it's dead, the Perth fight? Do you think it's dead? No chance of salvaging it at this point? At this point, no. We need to agree of a term to make the fight. Maybe March would be nice. Okay. And by the way, um, you know, you're talking about the business and terms and fighters coming together. I don't know if you know, but Jake Paul is trying to do a union. Is this something that you're interested in uh, being a part of? Anderson Silva said he's going to help him. You saw all that stuff. Are you, are you interested in any of this? Are you talking to... Yeah, I think... No, sorry. 
Go ahead. No, no, you're talking to Jake? I don't know, because your your situation is very public, so I thought maybe he would reach out to you. Is there anything like that going on? I didn't. I didn't yet, but I think this is very healthy. This is a good thing happening right now. We, sh we should support him. Okay. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think happens? Do you think you fight again for the UFC? What is your What is your heart telling you? Or do you think the contract is going to expire and that's it? I, I actually don't know. I, I I love fights. You know, I love I, like, I love to fight. Uh, yeah, I think I will fight. For UFC or for someone else? Uh, I think we can, I can, we can fight for UFC. Yeah, but I will not accept uh, everything. Sure. You know? Yeah. And who's who's doing the negotiation here? Is it you or is it uh, Tamara or is, do you have someone else helping you? We both. Both of you? Me, uh, mostly Tamara. Mostly oh my Tamar, gosh. Because... <laughs> is it Why? stressful? No, she's very good, but I mean, it's stressful, no? For her. Yes, for her. Thanks God for her. Not <laughs> so you don't talk to Hunter? Yeah. It's it's tomorrow talking to Hunter. It's her job, bro. It's her job. I know. Jeez Louise. Very stressful stuff. By the way, are you chewing on a match? What is that? What is in your mouth right now? Is that a match? This? Yes. These are, I don't know how I, how I say this in English. You, like, you make fire. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you chewing yeah, on that? Yeah, yeah, I will, I will smoke my cigarette ah, in a okay. few minutes. You smoke cigarette? <laughs> Come on, this guy's crazy. By the way, you know who's coming? Yeah, no, no, not real. Just, just to make some smoke. I don't, you Yeah, know? no, bad, bad, bad. Uh, by yeah. the way, you know who's coming in studio today on my show? Dylan Dennis, your friend. You like this guy? Oh no, I don't believe that. Yes. Yeah. He he don't bro you, he don't fire you. I don't know what he's gonna try to do, but you're friends with him. I saw you drinking wine with him. Yeah, bro, yeah, yeah. I I'm not yeah, he's a good guy. He's you a like good him? Guy. <laughs> I like I like Gil. Gil is a nice guy, I think. Yeah, let's see, let's see. I I'm I'm excited to see uh his his fight against yes. uh, side, right? Yes, yes, yes. You might be the only person in MMA yeah. who likes him. Huh? You might be the only guy. I'm the only. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He has a little, bit, a little small problems on his mind, but he's a good guy. Yeah, he needs to stop drinking, bro. Stop Drink drinking a lot. Okay, too much drinking. Yeah, too much, too much all the time. Uh, he took, he took like a, a two bottles of not secret juice. If our secret juice, he was fine, but uh, two bottles of uh, tequila or something. Oosh. Crazy. Did it, is it's it true, bro? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Is it is it true? Usada tried to ask you for your secret juice. They want a formula. Oh, of course, geez. I will not say. Yeah, don't yeah, do that. Don't true. do that. And yeah, th that's another another thing that I want to raise some money. And I have a lot of secret juice order to make to produce. I need some money to produce that secret juice is coming at your hall next month. Oh, for, yeah, probably next month. Wow. Okay, in stores. Great. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. We we start we start with uh, pre order, and after that, for okay, big star. I I I hope. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, one last question for you: uh, Were you shocked to see Israel lose to Alex Pereira a couple of months ago, or last month? Were you mm -hmm. shocked? Yeah, kind. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was was a, whew, was a tough fight for both. Yeah, it was a great fight. I mm -hmm. love to watch. Yeah, but 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 uh, yeah, Alex has something against Israel, bro. He cannot <laughs> defeat. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, I hope the whole situation works out for you, Paulo. Um, yeah, I hope too. I hope as well, bro. Are you Thank stressed you. out? Or you don't seem so stressed right now. You seem pretty relaxed. No, 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 bro. You cannot. You cannot. <laughs> you cannot. You cannot be stressed for U.S. You know too much. Uh yeah, bro. It's a kind of who can less. Mm. <laughs> who do you think? I care almost nothing. Nothing? This is your career. You're in the prime no, of your life. Bro. No, my career. My career is... Don't, I'm. You know, UFC is great, but I don't depend from UFC. What do you depend on? How, how do you make your, your money? No, how do you live? I can fight. I can, I can, I can fight for sure. a, a different... I love books as well. 
Do you think you'll box no. next year? I think so. Wow. Who's yeah. the dream fight? If, you versus who? Who's the dream fight? No, man, we have a lot of good, name, good names, you know? Um, right now, I'm not prepared. I, I'm not having a name in mind, but okay. a lot, guys. Uh, who, who you think who should be? Let's say, well, say something. I mean, Jake was the obvious one, right? But no, I don't know. Now you're going to be on the, the union with him. It's going to be weird if you're fighting him. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. He fought, he fought Dan Sosiva and they are together. That's true. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's the one you want? Let's see. No, no, one you want to fight? No, him. No, I'd like to make... Sorry, I didn't understand. That's the one you want? You versus Jake? Is that is that at the top of the list? No, I, I think we have a lot yeah. of different guys. Maybe, maybe guys came from... Maybe Vito. Vito's a little bit old but he's still very good uh yeah, a lot guys okay Vitor on the secret juice too or no of course <laughs> of course <laughs> of course <laughs> the IV IV secret juice yes 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 Not you just do the drink he's a yeah, different one uh, well I my, hope my yeah I hope it all works out so, to, to recap it's not going to happen in Perth they're offering you uh, the last fight of your deal. You don't want to fight Robert Whitaker, and then they're for that money. And now they're offering you six fights, and you're like, "No, I just want to talk about this one fight with Robert, and then we could worry about the rest." You you want to see what you're worth. You want to test the market, like any athlete. You want to know what's out there. So you want to finish up your contract. You want to get paid what you're worth for this last fight. See what else is out there, and then see where's the best spot for you, right? Yeah, I think. Is a way with no regret, no comeback. If you go, because uh, box is a lot less work to do. Mm. You know, I mean, me train there all day, a lot painful for the whole body. You know, wrestling, jiu jitsu too much, kicks too much. Box is it's not easy, but. It's much less than right. MMA. So once you get more money and less work, why not? Why not? Happy holidays, Paulo, to you and your family. Thank you. Man. How do you say How do you say Merry Thank Christmas you. in Portuguese? Feliz Natal. Feliz Natal. I was going to say Navidad, but that's uh -huh. Spanish. Feliz Natal yeah. to you and your family, my friend. I hope it all works out and you always have a home here. My friend, you should see my friend. You cut his hair. How nice it looks now. It looks fantastic. Oh, what you did was amazing. I, oh, bro, thank you, thank you. I know I have a lot of skills. I, I want to see his his hair. Uh, I will look in the in the, in the, I'll, I'll in the send hair. you. I'll send you picture. Okay. So uh, anytime when you want to, I I do that again. The same haircut. I can come back. No problem. Thank you, Paulo. Good luck. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you very much. All right, there he is, Bye. Paulo Costa. Uh, A.K. Bohashinia. So you you hear it from the horse's mouth. He has uh, one fight left, and he wants uh, he wants to get paid accordingly for that final fight. And it seems like as a result, uh, the Australian fans are not getting Jared. No, Robert Whitaker versus Paulo Costa. Jared Cannonier is coming up. I wonder why they don't try to book Robert against someone else like a Jared Cannonier. I know he has history with them, but he's coming off a win. Why don't they actually do that? Well, let's talk to Jared about that and a whole lot more. He joins us now via the Magic of Zoom, man who won this past weekend. Hello, Jared. How are you? Congrats on the win. Hey, Errol. I'm doing good, man. Thank, uh, thank you very thank, much. Thank you for coming on. A uh, lot to talk to you about. Uh, big win, big time, you know, bounce back win for you. Are you happy with the fight? Are you happy with your performance? Yeah. I mean, I got the W, so hell yeah, I'm happy with it. Um I am a little bit, I don't want to say surprised, but <clears throat> I don't know. Um, it didn't go exactly the way I imagined it to go. I thought Sean would have been present more for, for the big shots, but, uh, you know, he moved around very well. He uh, limited his engagements and, and uh, to the right time. So, you know, it, it, it's another five rounds. So I'll take the experience. So, like, he was a tricky puzzle to figure out? I wouldn't say he was tricky. I'd say he was um wasn't as forward pressuring as I expected him to be. Okay. You know? 
So he didn't really, uh, I wouldn't say he pushed the issue the way he normally does against, against some of the guys he fights. Do you think that maybe has, I'm wrong. I don't know. Do you think that has anything to do with his last fight? Him getting knocked out made him uh, a little hesitant to engage, a little gun shy, so to speak. Uh, possibly, but I don't know. Uh, uh, I can't say either way. Um, to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of used to it. Guys usually change things up when they fight me. They don't fight the normal way that they usually do. They don't approach the fights the, the way they normally do. So uh, I can't say I'm surprised. Um, when you heard that one judge had a 49, 46 for him, what did you think? I'm like, here we go again with these, split de- with these <laughs> split decisions. So, uh, I don't know. They must've weighed heavily on that jab of his, but his jab didn't do much damage. You know, my legs kick, my leg kicks did more damage than his jab did. Um, so, uh, I think I heard somebody say that these are boxing judges, uh, mm-hmm. judging our fights. And uh, they may hate weigh heavily on more, uh, more so on punches and things like that. So uh, who knows? Crazy that we're still dealing yes, with this, I was right? definitely surprised. It's definitely upsetting to hear that two judges had it 49, 46 on one side, and another judge had it the complete opposite on the other on the other side. I mean, that must be that's a huge discrepancy in yeah. in, uh, in judging. That's that's huge. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, what more can you say about that? That's a discrepancy that needs to be fixed. Yes, I would like to see it fixed. It's like they're sitting around the same cage. How could one guy see it so completely different than the other? It's not like they're sitting, you know, seeing different camera angles. Like they're sitting on opposite sides, but it's all the same. Like, come on. 49, 46 opposite way to me is pretty damn egregious. We had this last week. I don't know if you heard with one judge scoring 50 to 45 for Danny Sapatello and Bellator when the other dude clearly won 48, 47. Like, this is not good stuff. There's too much at stake for you guys. No, it's not good stuff at all. So um, I'm not. Yeah, I don't want to make too many comments on, on yeah. what to do uh, uh, or anything like that. But uh, it definitely needs to be uh, addressed. OK, um, c- can I ask you, you know, I asked you about Sean's last fight and how that may have translated into his performance. Considering your last fight and everything that went down against Israel, did you feel any different going into this fight? Maybe. I don't know, more pressure or, you know, confidence is at a different level because you're coming off a loss and you need to bounce back. Like, did you feel anything differently about going into this one than you did when you were on the winning streak recently? No, um, this isn't my first time. Uh, Izzy wasn't my first time losing. Uh, so uh, I don't hang on to these losses and feel it, feel any way about them. They're just moments in time and they'll, they'll pass and then a new one will come about. But... Um, <clears throat> The only thing I felt was the need to perform. You know, um, I wanted to be more offensive, more, uh, more. Uh, I wanted to provide more pressure in the fight, go forward a lot more, and not wait too much. And I think I did that to a certain extent. I didn't do it as much as uh, as the uh, fans would have liked, but um, it's you know, it's a work in progress. It's something that I'm, I'm continually uh, continue to work on myself. So. Uh, just a few things that I picked up from that last fight, just being more uh, present, more, more, uh, what's the word? Like going first, not waiting too much. Not counter-striking or waiting for him to to lead yeah. the dance. Yeah, sitting on counter-strikes and stuff like that, yeah. Do you, do you have any regrets from the July fight? No. No. I have no regrets. I mean, it would have been nice to win the title. Sure. That's always nice, but I don't, I mean, no, I don't sit, I can't sit around and, and uh, you know, hope for what would have been. It just wasn't my time, you know what I'm saying? It's, it just didn't happen. I'm not going to sit and hang on to that moment as if I want, you know, coveting it so bad that I'm just going to hang on to it and it's going to be a scar on me. Like, no, I don't do that. That's not the way, I, that's not the way my mind works, you know? Mm. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> yeah. I didn't, I made adjustments. I made adjustments, you know? It was a learning experience. It was a loss, but it was a good learning experience for me. Uh, Have you ever gone back and watched that fight? Oh, yeah. I've went back and watched it. A lot? I wouldn't say a lot, but I've watched it a couple of times to see, uh, just to verify the adjustments that I needed to make, you know, go back and watch it and see uh, what I'm doing in practice and things that I need to do more, more in practice. 
you know, he took a lot of criticism after that that fight, and it was a win for him. But he he took the brunt of the criticism. Did you think that was fair? No, I don't think it was fair. I mean, we were both in there fighting. Right. But um, he took the criticism from a bunch of ignorant people. You know, I don't think the people who are criticizing him doesn't don't know what they're watching. You know. Uh, so, you know, I don't really listen to to uh, I don't listen to what people say. You know. I hold myself in high regard, and I don't put anybody else up there. Call me a supremacist if you want to, but um, <clears throat> I don't listen to the opinions of others. You know what I'm saying? My, my, the only opinion that matters is the one I tell is, is the one I give when I have it myself. So, um, <clears throat> on top of that, you know, it was it was two high level fighters fighting at the highest level. You know, they people want to see people going in there. They want to see blood and viscera and people getting smashed up against the fence and getting beat up and stuff like that, but when you got two guys who are good at not letting that happen to them, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get, you may get a fight that, that looks like that. <clears throat> but I had fun in there. You know, it was a good experience for me. You know, it was a good learning experience in there. Another five rounds from that one and this one. I think that puts me at about 99 or 59 minutes of yeah. uh, of ring time this year, which is really good for me. In the last couple of years, I haven't had a lot of ring time. So it's a lot of good experience I've been getting this year. Um, obviously I knew how much, we all knew how much, uh, the title fight, like how much you wanted to fight for the belt. You, you had been, you know, kind of pushing that for a long time. Everyone does. Did, did it take you a long time to get over the fight? Like, did you have any sort of period where you were like kind of bummed about it or did you get right back on the horse? I mean, you know, right after the fight, I went to the locker room, I cried and, and stuff like that. But on the way home, I, I was fine, you know? I wasn't like still bumming out about the fight or anything. It was over. So when I was on the way back to the hotel, I was fine. It sucked. Yeah. But, you know, I wouldn't say the sting was still there. It was just a moment in time. I don't hang on to these moments like that and let them drag me down or, or weigh on me like that. So, um, if it's not going to help me, there's no point in, in hanging on to these thoughts or emotions. Man, respect for saying that you cry because uh, I feel like you're somewhat, um, you, you, you're you a very tough guy and I, I almost can't even picture you crying if I'm being honest. Like, I feel like you show no weakness out there. So uh, I- Well, crying isn't a weakness, you know? Sure. Crying is a, is a biological thing that we do to release stress, relieve tension. It's not a weakness, you know? So the fact that the world has led us to believe that our natural bodily functions are bad for us is- ugh. This is why I don't listen to people, you know? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You Trust that, me, I'm a, I'm a big show. crier, so I'm happy to hear you say that. <laughs> no, don't, not, don't get me wrong. I wasn't back there sobbing and needed a shoulder to cry on. I need somebody to hold me and, you know, a tit, a tit to suckle on or anything like right, that. Right, right, right. <laughs> it was just something I did to deal with it. You know, I, I it was a frustrating cry. You know, I tensed up. It was, it was frustrating. But, um... I wouldn't say it was a sad cry or anything like that. It was more of a frustrating. Yeah. Have you ever had that feeling after a fight? Oh yeah. After a loss, hell yeah. Really? Um. After the uh, fuck after when I fought uh, Dominic Reigns when he knocked when he okay you know when he TKO'd me, that was hard to deal with. But um, I got over it. This one a bit of a different one, right? Because like it never really felt like it got going. Which one? The one that gets out of time? Yeah. Um, As opposed to a knockout loss or a TKO loss. Right. You know, when you, I feel like, you know, to be honest, when I'm in a fight and I'm taking damage mm. and I lose a fight, I'm, I can accept that. Like when I when I fought uh, Robert Whitaker, he broke my arm, he battered my eye up, and uh, he didn't get, he hardly got touched in that fight. So, I, you know, I accepted that loss, you know. Um, with my with my chin held high, you know what I'm saying? Um, against Reyes, you know, that was embarrassing. Dude. The dude hit me with that clean ass uppercut and then followed up with some good shots and <clears throat> you know, uh got the finish. Um <sighs> yeah, that one wasn't fun to deal with. Oh shit. But um I got you get over them, you know. Um by the way, uh, we were just talking about Robert Whitaker, and he's got his whole situation with Paulo Costa. And I was wondering why they took him off the card because I don't know how much you follow this stuff, but Costa's not fighting. I was like, why don't they do Jared and and, and Robert too? Um, but I know that's 
in February and you just fought, if they called you and, and said, are you open to going to Perth? Would you do it? Hell yeah. I've never been to Australia mm-hmm. before. I'd yeah. love to go there and um, fight Robert again. Um, and uh, hopefully get the job done that time. You know what I mean? Have they reached out to you about this? No. Man, I'm surprised. I'm really surprised. Like he he's an Australian. Obviously, he's a huge fan favorite there. He lives in Australia, and they just took him off the card. Doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't get that either. You know. So uh, I don't know. Maybe You're- Robert wants to take time. I mean, maybe it's Robert's decision. You know, maybe he wants to take more time off then, since he's not getting this. He wants to have more of the holidays. No, really he go, said. Really go crazy during the he said. He said he was disappointed. He put out a video. He said he was disappointed. So I'm happy. So you're saying if they did call you, you'd be open to it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, maybe uh, maybe they'll call you now. Uh, by the way, were you shocked at how the Izzy Alex Pereira fight went? I wouldn't say I was shocked. You know, that's how fights go. Yeah. You know, that's how some fights can go. Um, you could be winning one minute. Next thing, next thing you know, you're. You're you're trying not to get hit with some of the biggest shots coming your way. Um, that's how it goes. It's unfortunate how how it went down for Israel, you know. But uh, that's the fight game, man. Yeah. Do you think he beats him in the? Uh, in I don't want to say rematch. Uh, it's kind of a rematch, but it would be their fourth fight. Do you think he would beat him? Who Israel? Yeah. I think I think anybody can win a fight. Sure. Anybody who trains, especially anybody at that at this level, at the highest level of sports. Anybody can win. So, um, like, I mean, look at the fight. Israel was on his way to winning. You know, he even rocked him in that, at the end of that first round. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if he had maybe 15, 20 more seconds, he probably could have finished that in the first round. Um, so I'm not going to say that this person's going to win or that person's going to win. Nobody has nobody's number in this game, I would say. That's the way I, that's what I believe. That's what I tell myself, um, and that's why I believe I can beat anybody in this and beat anybody in this sport. Any part of you happy when you saw that result? Because you don't have a history with Alex, so now it opens things up for you to get back into the title picture. Is it was like? Did you view that as a good thing for you? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it, it was a good thing for me. I wouldn't say I was happy or anything like that. I didn't have an, an emotional reaction to it. It was more of a logical thing, and the way I think of it is. Uh, it brings more interest to the division as opposed to bringing more interest to Israel himself. Right. So it is good for the rest of us. We all can get a, a more of a chance of fighting for the title as opposed to uh, trying to uh, make our way back up to a rematch, which is I feel is harder to do in this sport. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I wasn't happy that Israel lost. I wasn't like holding, like clutching my clutching my crystals hoping Israel loses fight or anything like that so uh no I'll never wish ill will on anybody um by the way uh when you when you weighed in and I think even after the fight when you did your photos might have been before but I think it was after you you wore that that hat um what was that was was it a monkey hat or or a gorilla hat what was it it was a gorilla hat it was a gorilla not a monkey kill a gorilla doesn't have a tail okay yeah doesn't have a tail so it's a gorilla um, we're just gonna have to use our imagination. I'm gonna kill a gorilla. Yeah, I'm wearing a primate hat. Let's call it a gorilla. I love it. All right. Yeah. If, if 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 we can go around this world and say boys can be girls and all this other stuff, <laughs> then you can say that this hat is a gorilla hat because a killer gorilla is wearing. It. All right. All right. Uh, why did you wear that? Well, I've had it for like 11 years. Right. I bought it in Alaska. It's an Alaska weatherized hat. It gets hot as hell, and it was cold. So uh, it was a perfect time to pull it out. I never wore it up until then because it's hot in Arizona, and I look like a, I look like an idiot wearing that hot-ass hat. Yeah. So, and, and what makes it so hot? Like, what is it made of? I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's Alaska. It's made in Alaska. Oh, you got it right there. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, there, there it is. It's warm. It's is it? warm as hell. It's real nice. I like you, you've had that hat for 11 years? 11 years, man. I bought it at the Alaska State Fair. Wow. And uh, is this yeah. going to be your new thing now to wear it all the time? Good luck charm? <laughs> I don't know. No. Weather permitting. Okay. I'm not going to be wearing this thing in the middle of the summer. I got you. By the way, who gave you that yeah. nickname, Killer Gorilla? Uh, uh, one of my teammates, Joe Murphy. Okay. Um, 
Lauren Murphy's husband. I'm sure you okay. guys know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Joe Murphy, he's a real good friend of mine. I lo- love that guy. I met him when I went to Alaska. And when I started fighting, um, he was one of my main training partners. And we were, I was looking for a name, um, getting ready for a fight. And just uh, brainstorming with him. I told him I like gorillas. Um, and he just said, if I can just go with the killer gorilla. And then we looked it up. There was already one in MMA, but... Um, I don't think he was continuing. I don't think he was continuing fighting. So I took the name and continue to make it great. Um, by the way, speaking of props, uh, did it bother you at all that Israel had, you know, did the Undertaker thing before the fight and had the urn with your name on it? I don't know how like some people would view that. Did, did that annoy you? Did you feel some sort of way about that? No, I thought that was pretty cool, actually. Okay. Um, you can't go wrong with the interest like that. But if you don't finish, you know what I'm saying, people are going to look at you like, what the hell was that for? Sure. But it was a cool entrance, you know. Uh, I get the point he was trying to make, um, but I did a good job in, in not getting myself buried, burned, and put in that urn. That was a long-ass intro, right? Like, like you were you had to wait there for a long time. Yeah, it was a long intro. And I think I think they may have did that on purpose, you know. That's how the Undertaker moves anyway. He moves slowly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Moves in, so he, he was he had you know he had to do some shit do some things to get in the character and you know make that entrance. You knew what but, he was um, doing. You you recognized it. I mean, when I looked at the thing, I saw the 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 hat and the urn. I, yeah, I knew he was doing the Undertaker. Yeah. Did you did you notice Vince McMahon was sitting cage side during your fight? No, you didn't know that. It's crazy. I didn't know. Oh, he was he was he was cage side. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First uh, time. Maybe that was why he did it. No, it was coincidence. He said afterwards it was a total coincidence. <laughs> Wow, that's crazy. That is wow. That is crazy. Um, yeah. well, well, you bounce back. So uh, now, if they don't call you about Robert, um, when, when would you like to come back? And, and do you have someone in mind? Um. Well, naturally, whoever gets me close to the title, mm-hmm. you know. Um, at this point, I'm ranked number three. Um, a contenders match would be nice, or uh, a fight for some money, you know. Um. I'm starting to recon- uh, rethink my approach to this fighting game. There's a bunch of guys who, who are in the top 10 that I, w- I would like to get my hands on, you know what I'm saying? Get an go- opportunity to get earned two checks. and uh, Or if not the title, you know, I'm ready, for all- I'm ready for whatever. When you say rethink your approach, what does that mean? Well, not just be title-oriented. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, especially now that I'm getting higher in the rankings, you know, <laughs> I have... Uh, changed my my I wouldn't say I've changed my approach I'll still fight whoever you know what I'm saying but uh I had to be more career, career oriented thinking about my career not just fighting whoever they put whoever they uh whoever they asked me to fight yeah but um you know I get paid pretty good so uh, I would love to fight somebody not the level of a champion and <laughs> maybe I, maybe make my ability to get the win a lot easier but not to discredit anybody in the, in the middleweight division. We're all animals. We're all beasts out there. We're all doing what we can to be the best. So, uh, whoever. All right. Well, congrats on the win. Congrats on, uh, you know, a big W over a top contender. And uh, I wish you the best in 2023. Always great to chat. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Ariel. I appreciate it, as always. All right. There he is. Jared Cannonier, the killer gorilla. Get it right. It's a gorilla. It's not a monkey. Gorillas don't have uh, tails. Learn something new every day. Did you know that, Frank? Uh, he's working on something. Frank's working on something. What's he working on? Next guest? Yeah, Mike Goldberg. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to that. Uh, all right, getting Mike Goldberg set up. And uh, after Mike, we will be joined in studio by one Dylan Dennis, who is in the... Uh, he is in the HQ. He has arrived, yes? He has arrived. He is in the building. Nice. Did you meet him? No, Alex went and got him. Is he happy to be here? Yeah, Alex said he's a very nice guy. All right. Uh, and he seems excited about coming on the show. Nice guy met him. For Alex, yes. <laughs> um, so that is still to come, and uh, that will be, he will be our final guest of the year. What a what a fitting way to end 2022. For now, though, let us say hello to our next guest. Uh, one of my favorite people in mixed martial arts. Had the pleasure to see him in uh, in Glendale just a few weeks ago after the Jake Paul Anderson Silva fight. And today is a very big day for him. December 
1997. Amazingly, 25 years ago, our next guest made his UFC debut as the lead play-by-play man all the way over in Japan. We thought it would be fun to celebrate that, reminisce, all that good stuff and more. Let us say hello to the one and only Mike Goldberg. Hello, Mike. How are you? I am very good, my friend. How are you? I'm doing great. Great to see you. Uh, you're, 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 you're in the office. It looks like you've got the, the, yeah, the memorabilia, yeah. the mementos, so to speak, December 21st, 1997. Is this a date that is just kind of like engraved in your brain? Oh, of course, of course. And not just because of the UFC and it now being 25 years, it, it's, it's crazy, Ariel. And, um, my niece's birthday is today. She's 21 years old. So we call each other UFC buddy (laughs) and I miss you, dad. My father passed away five years to today. Wow. Um, and by far he was my biggest fan. So love dad. Dad's up in heaven. He was, he was my biggest fan. No question. You, my friend have always been my biggest and most loyal supporter. I've said that to you many times. I will say it to you again, because this seems like the right time to say it. Um, so it is, it's a very special day in a lot of ways. And today's a celebration day for my niece, for dad. And of course, for 25 years since I was in Shin Yokohama, Japan. Wow. Uh, and thank you for that. I appreciate it. So could, could you paint the picture for us? Uh, where were you when you got the call? How long? Because I, th- I think you were replacing Bruce Beck, who is still a fixture yes. here in the New York area, working for uh, Channel 4 NBC. Like what were the circumstances surrounding you getting the call to go to Japan to, to call your first UFC? Well, the best news is that Bruce is still there. But one of the greatest hirings in my life was NBC hiring Bruce Beck. <laughs> so that he could no longer free. Is that why? Serial. Is that why? Is it? Yeah. Wow. That's exactly what it was. Because at the time, and as you know, being in the, you know, the metro area, Bruce had a role on MSG that I had at Sports Channel Chicago. We were play by play for maybe the smaller college basketball games. We were sidelines for the Knicks or the Bulls in my case. So we we were somewhat virtually identical, if you will. Uh And then when he was no longer able to freelance, I was at ESPN by then, Bruce Connell. Of course, Brucey, may he rest in peace, my dearest friend in the world. Um, Brucey said, and you've heard it before, Goldie, 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 I got a a gig for you. It's in Japan. You got to take a jujitsu class. I heard gig, I heard Japan. Um, I, I have Gracie Baja up the street. I mean, I'll go there this afternoon. I promise you, Brucey. Uh, but that was it. And I was actually in Vancouver when I got the call. And both of us being hockey guys, you will appreciate this. I was doing some Vancouver Canucks games as a freelancer at the time. And so my flight was from Vancouver right into Narita and right onto the Shinkansen, which seemed really simple as I was flying over to see bullet train. And then I came up and there wasn't a lot of English there. Somehow I got on the bullet train and I made my way to Shin Yokohama, Japan. But it was, it was all about Brucey and our relationship at ESPN and Brucey believing I could bring some energy and enthusiasm to the ultimate fighting championship way back when. And, and how many days or weeks before the event came this call? Uh, I would say, Three weeks, maybe three weeks, two weeks. Um, That's not a lot of time. It was, it, 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 it wasn't a lot of time and I'll be the first to admit, and I know people will be like, well, he still doesn't know, but I'll be the first to say that it was a cram session. It was an absolute cram session in every form and fashion. I watched old tapes. I watched like UFC 15 Vitor. I watched Randy beat Vitor because my first title fight was Randy Couture and Maurice Smith. And that was when Randy won the belt in the heavyweight division for the first time. So it was a cram session, but it was also a ton of quality time when I got to Japan, Ariel, with Elaine McCarthy, who taught me immediately. She was the first person I saw from SEG. So away from Bruce in production. And she said, and I quote, R is H in Portugal (laughs) and Portuguese. So it's not it's not Royce Atoys. And of course, it's Elio Gracie. She told me about the, the little man on the bottom and the guard and explained a bit to me. And then I met the Olympic gold medalist, Jeff Blatnick. Now we lose too many people way too soon. Yes. But Jeff and Big John, we were in a ballroom and 
They're talking to me about different things. And John lays on his back area and he goes, come here, kid. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. We, I just met. We're not yeah. dating. They're, they're like, what, what's going on here? And he, he showed me guard. He showed me half guard. He, he showed me just enough not to know too much. And, of course, I leaned very heavily on Jeff during those many first shows. The same way I always did with Joe. I always understood my role. And Joe's the expert. I, I was Summerall. Joe's Madden. And that was no different at the time for Jeff Blatnick. He definitely favored the wrestlers, if you remember back then, uh, for obvious reasons. And then we did the show. And uh, it, it was crazy. And, and who knew that my 100th UFC would be Randy and Brock and that this thing would turn into a global, a global phenomenon because that's what it became. Because way back when, that production truck was a milk truck and Brucey was on a stick mic, but somehow we made the show happen. And as you know, you go over to Japan, and you get the Wimbledon yeah, clap. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on here? People are beating each other up. Um, but a day to be cherished. I'm I'm getting chills. And for for many, many reasons, my emotions are all over the place today, but but obviously so. By the way, uh, at this point, I mean you're you're a veteran, ESPN, Canucks, all that stuff, Chicago. Are you kind of freaking out before? I mean, this is a brand new sport. You're in a foreign country, you haven't called it. Like, were you super, super nervous before the call? Absolutely, 100%. Because much to your point, I I had made it to a really nice level in the mainstream world. Yeah. And I mean, I started doing the Detroit Red Wings. You know, with the, I did the Red Wings Stanley Cup season right in the same time frame as I went to Japan. Um, but it was Bruce Connell. And Bruce was someone I trusted. And I knew Bruce wouldn't put me in a situation that was too crazy. And for better or for worse, the distribution wasn't all that spectacular at the right, time. Right. Senator McCain was right. Um, so it wasn't going to blow through millions of households right away, as I kind of learned and, and understood that it was renegade at the time, but that these were athletes that were going in there to compete. And so my, my learning curve was definitely a fast track. And guys like Randy Couture took me under their wing very quickly, accepted me. And uh, I mean, I'm forever thankful to Jeff Blatnick for the way he welcomed me, for the many others I had learned from, and more than anybody, John McCarthy, because John has been there throughout this entire ride. He's been a big brother. He's told me things, Ariel, that I didn't want to hear, but I needed to hear. And uh, I would not have been on the journey that I've been on if it weren't for Big John helping me, this newbie, to try to grow with this sport of mixed martial arts. It is a, a reminder of how, you know, the times have changed. Because could you imagine someone in 2022, you know, walking into a UFC broadcast for the first time in the social media age, people would roast yeah. him if they thought that he was a, you know, a, a poser. It might go as well as my NFL. <laughs> did, right? I, not, I can say I had a bad game. I should have I should have stayed on social media. Uh, but you are absolutely right. right. So <laughs> that uh, that would be a tough time to do it right now. Right, absolutely. Um, as far as the event, it's it's actually a, a very memorable event because of the Sakuraba uh, controversy, and then having to to replay the match and the tournament middleweight title. What do you remember specifically about UFC fifteen and a half Ultimate Japan? Frank Shamrock's MMA debut, his UFC debut. Ken was already well established. He was the world's most dangerous man. And this guy, Frank Shamrock, was finally getting his moment. And his opponent was Olympic gold medalist Kevin Jackson from Michigan State, a good Sparty. I'm an Ohio kid. So I'm okay with Sparties. It's those other guys uh -huh. that I don't talk about that I hope to get a rematch with, but that's another subject. And he armbarred Kevin Jackson in, I want to say, 18 or 19 seconds if, if we look back at it. That is the most memorable moment because I go in with an Olympic gold medalist in Jeff. You have Kevin Jackson, who is an Olympic gold medalist. I'm told that wrestling can dictate how the fight goes. And boom, here comes Frank Shamrock, who had great credentials at that time. But I only knew what they were worth to a certain degree because I was new. But I'll never forget how quickly that fight was over. And then I learned why that fight was over. Like, wait, wait, wait. what's you know, afterwards, what's a tap? What's a tap? Well, if he would have held on to it, Goldie, Big John telling me, he would have snapped his arm. I'm like, oh, okay. So it's not no mas Roberto Duran. And they said, absolutely not. It's checkmate. 
And that's what it was. And it didn't take long for checkmate for Frank Shamrock against uh, the Olympic gold medalist that day. That That's the one I remember the most. Um, when did you get the call that you'd be back for the next one? Like, I'm, I'm assuming when they called you for this first one, it was more like, hey, do you want to jump in here? But it wasn't like you signed a multi-year deal with them. When did right. you find out that you were being asked back? So one of the best things, going back to my time, struggling with Big John and being supervised by Jeff is Bob and Ellen Myrowitz, the owner, and of course, Bob's wife, walked by the ballroom that we were messing around in at the time, and he poked his head in. So he, he saw the new guy on the floor in this ballroom in the Palace Hotel in Shin Yokohama, Japan. And I'll never forget that vision, I looked at both John and Jeff and I go, that, that's not a bad thing. The owner knows that I really want to learn. And I knew it would be good. I knew I would come back and I knew that I was going to be my Rose guy. And it very much was that moment of them seeing how proactive I was already being to try to be the best I could to broadcast the UFC for SCG at the time. Mm. And uh, it was a, a run that lasted two decades. I see your- yeah. You're, you're, you're rocking the gear. You still have the poster. It doesn't seem as though uh, there's any ill feelings. Do you, are you still able to watch the sport? Are you still able to follow it? How do you feel about the sport and in particular the UFC? Um, blessed and much more appreciative than maybe I was at the time. And I say that because I know you and many others can relate. When you're so darn busy, and you're trying to learn and you're traveling and you're you know, the next fight and the next fight and the next fight, you don't really step back. You're amongst those trees and you don't step back and you don't take that view at the forest. And so was I always honored, blessed and appreciative? Of course I was. But now I cherish it much more. I haven't had this jacket on in a while, but this jacket has always been right in its spot in my closet. I'm very proud of the time that I spent with the UFC. And that, and that took some time for me as a person and as a man to be able to reflect on the positives once the sting of the negatives and obviously the sale and, and then the non-renewal of my contract, those go away over time. And you have fans hit you at different times and places and fighters, like the podcast I just did with Sugar Sean O'Malley, mm. where he asked me to call a fight I do and it, it pretty much goes viral. And and he's loving me, and I never called one of Sean's fights. He came to the UFC after I had departed. I am so appreciative because there's so much in my life that I have experienced, so much in my life that my family has experienced, and so much in my life that I have today because of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. And so it's it's nothing but respect. It's nothing but well wishes, and it's nothing but thankfulness, especially on a day like today. Did it take some time? Yeah, it, it took a little bit of time to get that sting away. But I was never, I, I was never unappreciative. I was just hurt. I was hurt. And I was saddened by the fact that I had such a great gig with great people and that I no longer was able to do it. I understand recently you actually bumped into Dana White in Las Vegas. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? That was, that was a little while back. It, it was kind of crazy because... I it, I would like to run that one back because the whole did Dana say anything? And I mean, it was an awkward situation. Craig Borsari was wonderful. The hugs, the tears, everything was there. I should have been the guy to be proactive and walk up and thank Dana as I look back at it. I should I should have done that. I, I should have said, Dana, thank you. Because business is business. And when I saw Dana about I want to say probably about a year and a half later. So this was after my departure. We were in Las Vegas. My son had a hockey tournament. I was coaching. We were staying at Red Rock, still using those Fertitta uh -huh. connections, of uh -huh. course. And I walk out and I see Dana in the valet area with a couple of buddies. And he's he's getting into his car. He's leaving probably after a dinner or or a little bit of gambling, as we know, with uh, with the UFC president, Dana White. And my son, Cole, looks at me and goes, Dad, that's Dana. And honestly, Ariel, I froze. I, I did not know what to do. do. Do I say hello? Do I nod? I, what do I do? And I'm usually a guy much like yourself who's got a pretty good instinct. And my son, God bless him. He's like, dad, go say hi. 
And I did, and I shook his hand, and I said, thank you for everything. I said, I hope we can stay in touch, and I, I wish you nothing but the ultimate in success in everything that continues in the UFC, and I'll always be thankful for it. So it was, it was a great moment of, I guess, closure at the time because of the way that the ending went. And, you know, like I said, I should have been the one to think Dana and not waited and then have a little bit of negative come out of it. Because Dana White was great to me. He was great to me. He was supportive of me. He was the one who called me when I was going to go to the WWE and said, don't go. We want you. We got you. Lorenzo is the man. I mean, I was Lorenzo Fertitta's guy. There's no question. But it was, it was a good moment. And I'm really glad that I walked up to Dana that night or that day in front of the Red Rock. And I'd be kicking myself, Ariel, if mm. I wouldn't have. I'm, I'm glad I did because it turned out well. But was there a little fear and trepidation? Absolutely. Actually, the first thing he did say is, what the F are you doing here? Uh, but he meant, like, why are you in town? Sure, 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 of sure. Course, sure. With, the Dana, with Dana, you can take that a lot of different yeah, ways, yeah. right? <laughs> so do you still follow? Do you still watch uh, the organization, the sport? Are you still, you know, keeping up to date with things? Absolutely. MMA will always be special to me. MMA is what I'm known for. Um, but make that combat sport and the athletes that continue to take the sport to where it is today, not just on the UFC platform, on every platform, because my five years at Bellator was absolutely tremendous. And I have a chance to sit next to Big John and have him be my broadcast partner was truly a, a, a full circle. I was one of the guys who was part of the roast at Big John's 50th birthday. I mean, we were always very, very close. I, Ron McCarthy, obviously, judges all the time, does a tremendous job. I went to Ron's high school football games with John and Elaine. So to be able to come full circle and do that, I'll always appreciate the athletes and always appreciate those who were part of my family and always the fans. Because the fans remind me um, at various times that I did okay. I did okay. And they enjoyed what I did. And they appreciate it. And yeah, can I watch every single show now? No, I don't think anybody can <laughs> humanly watch every single show out there right now. But it, do I turn it off on purpose? Never, yeah. never. It's a, it's a great sport. My friends are still part of it, Ariel. And um, I love the fighters. I, I love the fighters. And I, and I think about those fighters and what they've said to me over the years. And I watch the next breed. And hey, Sean O'Malley's call to come to his podcast. And, and then reaction to that video just reminds me that, you know what, a lot of the fighters still appreciate what I've done as well. Uh, I'm so happy to hear that. Um, I, I would hate to hear that there's, you know, you're, you're a human being, you're allowed to have feelings, you're allowed to have emotions, you're allowed to have pride, ego, all those things, but to live with the resentment after all the great things that you did for this sport, that you were the soundtrack for the sport, some of the greatest moments in the history Thank of the sport. You. You. you know, you're the voice that's attached to it. They can't play those moments without you being involved. And you're part of the reason why so many people got into it. And, and, and for the longest time, new fans might not remember this or not, might be surprised to hear this. There was only one play by play guy. There wasn't three that's right. or four. Yeah. It was just you at every single event. Uh, you and Joe for the longest time. So you're, you're a huge part of the history. I, I go on and on, and, and you don't even have to comment on this. I just feel like the history of the sport needs to be celebrated more. You know, the 30th anniversary is coming up in November. Um, and I would love if they did something like the NBA did last All-Star Game where they brought out the 75 greatest for the 75th anniversary. Why don't we name the 30 greatest in the UFC's history and bring back, let all the, 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 the grudges go away for one night. Just bring back everyone who's around. Wouldn't that be great to celebrate the people who made the sport what it is today, the organization what it is today? I would love to see that. Um, and I'm sure you would echo those sentiments, and I think it would be a great thing. Yeah. But the good thing is you're still calling fights. Uh, you're calling BYB extreme, right? That's, that's bare knuckle yep. fighting, correct? Bare knuckle fighting, yep. And then pro box TV with uh, Roy Jones Jr. this past year. I mean, you want to talk about the best of the best. I got to work with Superman. And my partner on both BYB and on Pro Box is Pauly Malignaggi. And um, Pauly <laughs> reminds me a lot of working with Joe, Ariel. And it, I think if people know Pauly's personality and they know Joe's personality, you can understand exactly why I say that. And the one thing you know, there's many traits that they have, the enthusiasm and, and the, the look and the energy, but 
But the one thing that is consistent with both of them is they're the best at what they do in their sport. To me, Paulie is the best at what he does in boxing, and Joe will always be the best at what he does in MMA. And to be able to learn this past year and, and really embrace the sport of boxing, coming into a new form of combat sports, to have Paulie next to me, Ariel, has, has been tremendous. To Just real quickly, go back to your point about the 30-year anniversary and the celebration. I, I was reading your post, and I, and I saw that, and I was thinking about it. And you and I had texted last week, and congratulations. And shortly thereafter, you texted me, Goldie, do you want to come on today and, and talk about this? And I mean, it, 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 it rattled me in the most positive way that any human being can be, let's just say, embraced. It's like my guy, Ariel, still loves me. He always had me. He appreciates what I've done. And I think we should appreciate everybody. And I agree with you. Let the grudges go away. Let's just have an open forum of who has helped make this sport so special. Get all the politics away and let's name the 30 greatest. And hey, maybe they'll they'll have my voice on one or two of those fights. Oh, man. Some of those 30 guys, I called many of their Yes, fights. more than one or two. Um, more do, than one. Do, do you have any desire to call MMA? Like you, you're, you're very busy. You're doing bare knuckle. You're doing boxing. But is there a part of you that would like to still call MMA? Does that matter to you? Yeah, it, it, it does matter because if I am able to be placed in the right situation in the sport of MMA, I'll attack it with the same vibrance, energy, and enthusiasm, and do my homework like always. You know me and my prep. I mean, I redefine OCD. They're big capitals I, in, in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. And that's why I enjoyed my time at Bellator so much because there really was so much crossover. I mean, Douglas Lima, Diego, Chinzo Machida. Obviously, Leoto, Bader's over there. Obviously, Rumble came for the one, and now I'm getting chills thinking about Anthony. But Mitrio, Nelson, it, it, it was the same in a lot of ways other than don't say Joe and don't say Octagon. Uh, yeah. You know, Jimmy, Jimmy, that first show, I asked Jimmy Smith, I said, I call you Joe. He said, ah, nah, a dozen or two times. Don't worry about it. I go, okay. Then I say Octagon. He said, once. All right, all right. Yes, of course I would. And, a, you know, it's a crazy world, and I respect so much what they're doing at the UFC today. But if for some reason, somewhere, somehow, I got a call from them again, would, would I be on the first flight and go back in a heartbeat to be with friends and family that I was with for 19 years? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And, and if that doesn't happen, I'm just saying, you yeah. asked if I would go back, I would go back in a heartbeat. And, and if that doesn't occur... That's okay too. I understand the business, but man, I'll tell you what, I would be better than I was in those 19 years being able to step back as I've been able to do in the last five or six years and take it all in. I, I would be better. And I think there were areas in which I improved when I went to Bellator because it, I had a minute to take a deep breath. Mm and say, and look in the mirror and go, I, I can get mad at everybody else, or I can look in the mirror and be a better man myself. And that's what I've chosen to do. And I'm attacking boxing the same way. And um, you know, I, you and I have talked about it, your success and your crossover and you work in the boxing, it, it just, it makes me smile every time I see you because I feel like, hey, I'm gonna join my buddy Ariel on this on this boxing thing uh -huh. real soon. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so far so good, and, and who knows what could, open up maybe my next journey is as a lead commentator for the sweet science in some form or fashion. I love it. Um, you mentioned Anthony Rumble Johnson, still shocked of his passing. And I remember him calling you out, mentioning you, uh, that, that, that took, that took some guts that took some balls to do that, yeah. you know? Um, and so can I, can I just ask, you know, how, how you're dealing with that? And, and, and when you found out about it, did you know that he was that sick? I knew that he was very sick. I did not know that he was that sick. Okay. We were constantly in touch via text. When Desmond Green made his BYB debut, it was in Miami. And Jason Jackson, and I mean, a bunch of the guys were, were in the stands. And I asked Rumble, he's right there. I go, Anthony, AJ, you coming to the show? He's like, well, you know, I'm dealing with some health stuff. And this is three years ago, Ariel. Uh, but I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. And then 
hey, how you doing, bud? I'm good, I'm good. And he never got into the details of what he was dealing with, but I knew it was very, very serious, but I only knew that it was serious to the point of he couldn't fight and compete. I didn't know the fight for life was going to end for Anthony Johnson. And I, you know, I wish there was something that I could have done, but I'm not a doctor. Um, but I know that I said the things that I wanted to say to him in the time before he left us. And that was really important to me because you know what, man, that did take a ton of freaking balls for him to do what he did. Mm at that UFC aerial and, and not be scolded by the management there. And I remember I was laying on the couch watching that show and he goes, and one more thing. And I just froze. And then when it was me, I was like, there's no way there, there's no way he just did that. And that encapsulizes everything about fans, fighters, friends like yourself that will be in my heart, my soul forever. But that moment right there, Tells me I did it right. Tells me I did it right. And um, man, when I when I heard of his passing, I was in shock and disbelief. We did we did a tribute that I wrote, of course, uh, at the BYB Extreme that I was broadcasting shortly thereafter. And we were getting close to it because we were set to do it before the main event. And um, I, I started to get quiet on the air. And Paulie knew it was up. Benny Ricardo knew it was up. And then Fernanda, you know, my better half, Nanda came over. I texted her. I said, can you come over here, please? And she put her hand on my shoulder as I read that tribute to AJ. And um, that tribute and the one I had to do for Bruce were the two toughest things I've ever done on TV because of how much both of them meant to me. I wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for Bruce Connell. Not even close at so many levels, Ariel. But Doing that tribute to AJ was was tough. You just want to get it right. You just want to get it right. And thankfully I did. And uh, I love that dude, man. He was two people, as you well know. There was Rumble and there was AJ. And uh, I was very blessed to call him my friend and for him to call me his friend. You're the man, Mike. Uh, happy anniversary. You, so great to have you Thank on. So great to connect. Uh, so great to see you doing well uh, at peace. Uh, in a good spot professionally and personally. I wish you the best this holiday season in 2023. Keep on doing your thing, my man. You know a lot of people still remember you, still love you. You texted me if you still remember me and you still, of course, I will never forget you. <laughs> you, knew, you, you knew I was. I, I know, was, I know. Kidding, not kidding, not kidding, because I had seen you at Jake I know, I know. But, but of course, I will never yeah. forget all the things you've done for me Thank and you. and, and uh, falling in love with the sport because of your cause, as someone who looked up to broadcasters and tried to emulate broadcasters, you were the UFC guy. You were the only MMA guy for a very long time here in uh, in North America. So I hope you know that a lot of people have your back and love you. You are at the top of that list. Do you remember us playing trivia with Zach Candido in Mexico City? Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> that was fun. What's his nickname? What's this? What's that? I got it. I got yes. it. And highs and lows. You've always been there. and And I mean this sincerely you having me on your show today because i consider you the best at what you do and your platform has grown because of your hard work and your commitment and i've told you many times so this isn't coming out of left field how proud i am for you of you and how happy i am to see your success and for you to say goldie do you want to come on the show and talk about it today i'll save that text as well so Thank you for everything that you've done for me and for the sport. And may our journeys become very close together. Let's get on some gigs together moving forward. Only the broadcast gods know for sure. But the more time I get to spend with you, the better. Because you are a, a, a world-class human being who is loyal to almost to a fault, I suppose, when you look at where you and I have gotten our hands slapped at times. Uh, but I love you, brother, and um, I thank you so much for having me on. Today. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that very much. All the best. Talk to you soon. See you, bud. All right, there he is, the great Mike Goldberg, longtime voice of the UFC. Happy anniversary to him. 25 years on this December 21st, 1997, his first call. If you're a... Uh, if you're a new fan of the sport, go back and, and, and look at some of those early days. 
incredible stuff. And him and Joe, they were the soundtrack. They were the voice of the uh, the UFC for all those years. There were there was no one else. There was absolutely no one else. All right. Uh, thank you very much to Mike Goldberg. Um, and now our in studio guest and uh, Joe is telling me. We're ready to go. All right, let's do this. Dylan Dennis is here going up against KSI on January 14th in London. There he is, the bad guy. Of course. How are you, my friend? I think we should shake it until the end. What do you think? Well, come on. Come on. Don't be... Until the end. You're not going to shake my hand. Unless you apologize. Shake my hand. Come no, on, after, Doug. after. You're not going to shake my hand. After. Wow, what yeah. a bitch move. You're after. seriously going to sit here and after. not shake my hand? I want to hear what you have to say. What I have to say? Yeah. What are you talking about? Well, you started all this. I started all of this on yeah. uh, January 1st, yeah. responding to a tweet of yours, calling I, me a bitch. What did I tweet first? Looks like nothing's changed. Stop it. Come on. <laughs> you don't have the security here now, so. What security? Uh, where was it at when you ran behind the security? You're, you're gonna, you're gonna do, you can't do the lies when you're in person. No, come on. You, you did can't it? do the lies. You walked up to me with three people. No, no, Taylor no. You were hiding and then I Taylor came. Serrano and you're like, what's up? And I was like, yeah, what's up? No, I was by no, myself. No, 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 no. You went behind the I was literally the, by myself it. and you had three guys you were behind sizing the thing. me up. How much did you pay those guys to be with you? About like, what, 50K? 50K each? Did you, did you get fake teeth too? No, real. Everyone's getting the fake teeth now. No, you have nice teeth though. Thank you. I'll give you a compliment. Mine aren't fake. Yours are super, super white. Yeah, always. You I had coffee though. You got the NWO shirt on. You got the sunglasses. Can I can I say uh, didn't think that you would uh, show up? What? Well, first of all, you didn't show up to the press conference. Yeah, well, that's different though. We'll we'll talk okay, about that. Yeah. yeah. And but I, why why did I call you a bitch that first time? I oh, don't remember. You don't remember? No. Of course you don't remember. No. Uh, I I tweeted that uh, there was a picture of Jake and uh, Drake, mm -hmm. and I said that that was a big dub. Yeah. And you said Ariel, stop being a bitch. Yeah, because now you're kind of like. With them, you know. What do you mean know. with them? Calling their fights? No, yeah. Well, just they hired you now. You're just like part of their employees. No, I work for Showtime, and I do other stuff for Showtime too. Come on. What do you mean? What do you want to see my? Uh... I'm just saying your bread is buttered with Jake now. So now my you bread like, is hype buttered? him up. I've called three fights. You hype him up now. You think you think my bread is buttered calling three fights? With Jake, yeah. No, that was because of Drake, who you love too, and you took oh, a picture I, with as I well. I like Drake. I Drake know that. Yeah, man. Drake is fellow the man. Jew, fellow Canadian. Yeah, great man. But every time I would tweet something about Jake Paul. You chime in. It's you and yeah, AJ Agazarm. Every single AJ time. AJ Agazarm. Like what the hell was that? clockwork. AJ Agazarm. And, and then it was the greatest 10-7 in the history of 10-7. Terrible. I mean, it was... Terrible. I have never received so much love. Obviously, because anybody talks shit about me. It's the same well, thing. Up until the Patty Pimbler thing recently, yeah. uh, which you gave me props for. I appreciate yeah. that. I mean, that was a series of like 10-7, 10-6, I got you back good. Don't worry. It's, just, it's harder because you, you know, had the MMA on your side. What are you MMA talking about? You have a whole... You're a fighter. Yeah, I know, but it's different because it's easy to hate me, you know, because everybody wants to be me, all the fighters and all that. So it's easy. Whenever you talk shit about me, they're just going to jump on the bandwagon. No, it, yeah. was people, it was baseball players hitting me up. Everyone was like, fuck, that was, it was incredible. Good. And, then and it's even, hard because you're sensitive, you list, though. You're you sensitive. list the, the help of Douglas Crosby? I don't know who that is. You 100% I don't did. know who that is. You were writing the same material. Which, I don't know who that is. It's crazy. Dude, you're the worst for talking shit, though. Yes, you, you get Douglas sensitive, Crosby, though. Douglas Crosby, the MMA judge, you get some, wrote your material, and then you started doing I don't know the who same that is. hits. You were doing the same hits as Brendan Schaub. I don't know who that is. Fire, Dana White crying. It's true. What happened to us? No, you're sensitive, I was actually the only guy who had your back. That is true, but how, how am I sensitive? Because if I'm the only one that had your you back, or it gives you anything, then you get like all like emotional and start posting texts and stuff. Yeah, I f if you come at me, I come back at you. Yeah, but you're different though, because I made like a stupid joke, and then you started coming all crazy when we were friends. Well, My joke was very dumb. Come on. No, that, but it was after a true, series though. of bullshit tweets. No, the thing about Every you that you get mad because By the way, they're you true. Called me a bitch. Have I ever? Oh my called god, you a bitch? I called you a bitch. Have I ever called you a bitch? I Me mean, probably. I don't know. What do you mean? Did I ever refer to you? No, the one that you got mad about is because I said that you you hang out with your wife's boyfriend or something like that. I don't even remember. You remember that, that was the one you got mad about. You're like, don't bring my wife, and it wasn't even bringing anything into it. I mean, that is a pretty shitty thing to say to what? someone. Like, I give a fuck what you have to say. I'm about... saying, but it wasn't even like that. It was like a okay, funny so meme, you... and you got upset about no, it. No, no, no. Okay, if we're gonna break the fourth wall here, yeah. you claim that I got mad about that. You texted me saying, "Oh, you brought my wife into it," and I said, "What was the fucking meme I put?" I said, "Ariel's the kind of guy to hang yes. out with his wife's boyfriend." It's true though. But, but what really? That, yeah. You remember what really happened is what? you then went and told John Kavanaugh. That I that I was saying some stuff and no, then that's and then not true. and then John lost trust in me but because you true. broke my fucking trust. That's not true. Yeah. We, what do you mean not true? We, we Go ask it. Kavanaugh. Remember we cleared Kavanaugh it. stopped talking to me it. because of you. It wasn't because of me. I don't know what that is. And by the way, you call me a friend. What yeah. kind of friend talks about someone like that? Dude, you said way worse than that. That was like a, what did I say? Tell me what I said. I don't remember. There was some. No, other you stuff can't. You can't say I said way worse and not. It was a meme, and then you got mad because I called you dick nose. Like, come on. 
That's like ch- now you're trying to like get did. little shots in. No, but you did. Now you're trying to get little the, shots in. The picture I posted, and then you came back at me. No, I didn't. Tit for tat, but you know. Oh, when I said that, you yeah. know, that you would get knocked out in like the, that video, something like that. Yeah, and then I came yeah, back with something, been, and then you get emotional. Constant W's. You get and emotional. I get tired of the W. I what feel bad because you call me crying one time. I still have the fucking. Oh thing. fuck! Stop it. Don't do, do the lies. Don't you do the lies. You do. Don't don't get, do the lies. Then I feel bad Here's the one thing. As you know, as you know, I don't like people who lie. That's fine. Now this is the second lie so far. The second lie in five minutes. You have a lie detector? Yes, it is a fucking lie. With you. For what? Because I, I don't lie. That I called you crying? Are you, you shitting me? I have the phone. Don't be voice a phone. fucking bitch. I have the voice You're going to... Be careful with the, the words. Vo- Pull it out. I actually have a new phone. Pull the oh, fuck you. off. I do. Look, it's a brand new one. What does that mean? Because I don't have all my old texts. I don't keep Oh, it. fuck off. I See, you're a liar. I'm not lie lying. number one. Okay, Check. Go. What do you... What do you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't put things in the cloud? Yours? I don't like your messages. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sure you don't. And you got a new number. You, well, By the way, what Darren Till did to you was way worse than any shit I ever said about you. Putting your number out there? That's fucked up. Yeah, that is fucked up. I'd be fucking pissed. And then you still befriend Equal- him and do all this shit. What shit? He's never been on the show. I don't know what he saw you guys talking. I don't really. No, we haven't. That's Another lie. Up, though. By the way, an- it's not a lie. How's that? Lie? I don't know what the fuck you guys do. We're three. Joe, can you keep a running tally of all yeah, the go lies? Ahead. Let me call out your, your lies. Okay, then there's the other one. When after I had to block your number because you were incessantly hounding me, you, you started stopping? texting me from different when you numbers. Called, you were sending me voice oh message memos God, crying. Like, guy. dude, you fucking talked about this and that. Joe, this guy kept sending me texts. Oh, my God. kept... What kind of a person sends that's texts lie. Put the from for him. different that's, that's a lie. numbers? That's not me. Those are my people that find your number. And, you know. Yeah, your people. It's who true. are your people? Who, I don't know. I'm not okay, going to say so names. Who, who, who are these people that are saying, know. Dylan, give me Ariel's number no, they so find I can text yeah, they them. Find it. Yeah, you mess with the wrong guy, kid. That wasn't me. You mess with the wrong that guy. That was not me. It's literally how that you speak. That was not me. We, we, you don't know how you I posted. Speak. Yes, the Hasbulla DMs that you posted. It's literally the same thing. I, I drink. I drink. You know. I drink bottles the size of you, kid. You, you that speak that way. That was a good one. This is the way you speak. Have you ever had alcohol? In my life, yes. I thought you said you were. You don't drink. So. Nah, I don't really like it. But here's that? the thing. What the fuck happened to you? What? How did you go from this like incredible, you know, talent in the world of BJJ? Mm-hmm. To this guy who hasn't fought since 2019. Well, you, I had a bad knee injury. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, you wouldn't know that because you never done anything athletic. But sure, man, nah, that's wrong. Captain of the Maccabi basketball team two years in a row, no big deal. Oh, we um, played basketball. Where were we? Yeah, I kick your ass in basketball. Right, let's do it. How long ago was that? We're approaching four so years. So you know, you never asked me what happened. So I had the knee surgery. Yeah. At HSS, which is supposed to be like the best. It yeah, that's failing. the one. My my graph failed, like okay. completely failed. So I had to get another surgery, which is another year. So. Basically, two surgeries within a year. They says like being in two car accidents. So my knee was like completely fucked. So I had a surgery that failed. They had to use a different graft and do a whole thing two, uh, within the same year. So like my knee was fucked. It's not like I don't want to fight. It's the stupidest thing ever. Like why wouldn't I want to fight? Right. But um, you talk about fighting all yeah, the time. Yeah, of course. Time. I want to fight. Once I'm ready to fight, now I'm ready to go. No, but throughout that process. And I'm still the, the same person. Like I'm still going to like choke everybody out. It's, it's, it's easy, you know? And sure, like, but you t- the, here's the thing that I think would bother you can't people. Say I was. I'm, it's been two years. I'm still the same but person. But you talk while you're injured. Yeah, why not? I'm still the most relevant 2-0, and and I'm about to make the biggest bag on anybody in MMA. How much are you going to pay? I'm not going to say, but it's way more than anybody. Well, tell us the in, truth. Then it's another lie. I have to put it. No, but once it comes out, then you can see. It will come out. Mm, that, where's this I'm fight telling happening? You, I'm making more London? than any UFC, not gonna... any UFC champion right now. Izzy's not a champion anymore. Carter's right. not. Right. I'm telling you, I make more than any of them. How are you and Connor these days? We're good. Yeah. What's, he called? When's the last time the, you talked to him? Um, don't, don't lie. Think, I don't think about that. Don't lie. What do you mean you don't think about that? I don't, I don't know. So you're not because I saw he was do, he did an IG live. It was like before the Poirier fight last summer, and he's like, "Come on, Dylan, let's go." I think you were trying to yeah. talk to him in the comments, which is weird for a friend to try to talk to another friend in the comments of IG Live. We weren't talking in the comments. I just said, yeah, and he's like, "Come on!" I remember he was in the car, and I was like, "Shit, Connor's trying to like get Dylan back," which I thought yeah. was a cool thing that he did. I actually had another surgery after that time that we talked. So how many surgeries? Two surgeries. Yeah. Total. Yeah. They said it's like literally being in a like a total car accident twice, because my knee was just like. So why why aren't you guys friends? We are friends. Come on. What I happened? want to be friends. <laughs> When's the last time you spoke to him? You don't even remember. I don't, yeah, because we just talk. I don't know. You would think, Why you can question me about this? It's so weird. Well, because he he was the guy was who brought you. last time you to Dana or something. I don't know. Yeah, two th- February of 2016 was you the last time. You Dana over, though. I don't know. You get all mad about him. He, I mean, you did fuck him over. Yeah, okay. How did I'm I fuck saying, him over? Don't try to change the subject. I'm just Connor saying. Connor is the reason why anyone in MMA knows who you are. That's I didn't know true. who you were. That's not true. I legit Stop didn't it. know who you were before no he brought you in. I don't know what you mean. What? I'm gonna know who would have made you pop. It was, it was, it was <laughs> first. It was Ito Portal. Then it was you. And then it was like, all right, here, That's here bullshit. we go. Just, what, you're yeah. just saying that because you just want to talk shit. 
No, listen. Do you think I'm I knew? Ito, hold on. Do you think I knew? About you Ito fucking over Dana. Was... No, no, no. I was talking about Connor first. Don't try okay, to play yeah, this game. Yeah, but you, you asked me weird questions. I just wanted You're to know like when's the last time you talked to him. Is that a weird question? That's weird. When's the last time you talked to your freaking friend? Ask me and I'll tell you. you I don't know. You, have any, you don't have any friends. It was different. <laughs> what, DC? I spoke to him this morning. DC? Like, DC hey. hates you. He's on a different side. He's on ESPN. Okay. Come on. You know, we're doing this low-hanging fruit stuff. You could, you could, you I just want to know why you don't fruit. talk to him anymore because he, he was like your main guy. He was like your main He's going through backer. some stuff right now. I don't know. I, don't talk. I mean, we what's talk all the time. To? Hey, what's up? I don't know. Call each other. Are you going to train with him for this fight? I don't think so, no. I think there's a... Boxer. Yeah, no. I mean, if it comes to opportunity, I'm just here. He's there. Um, You know, he's but traveling a lot. you go early? Maybe we'll see. I don't know. I mean, I trained with him my whole life, so it's. I mean, I. It's not like I haven't trained with him your whole life. I met him when I was twenty-two. I'm twenty-nine now, so that's a lot of years of training. You're not five years old. You met him five years ago. I mean, you know what I mean. But I I obviously learned things from him throughout the years. You know. When was the last time you trained with him? It would have to be before my my knee injury. Yeah. So really, of those five years, you trained with him like two years. No, that wouldn't make sense because when he fought Poirier was when I hurt my knee. No, it wasn't Poirier. It was Cerrone. Two thousand twenty. Yeah, two thousand twenty. Yeah. So that's so why I blew my knee out. It was right years. before the cold, yeah. Um, so are you... Subject, okay, yeah, what, I didn't change the subject. You can't say that I changed the subject when I was bringing... I was saying that's first. fucked up what you did to Dana, I think. What did I do to Dana? Here we go. Because Let's hear it. He Let's took hear you it under his him. wing. He made you popular. He did all this he stuff for you. made me popular? How do you Dude, make you, popular? That's how I knew who you were because you okay. used to do all the interviews with Dana and all that all right. stuff. That's the only thing. That's not true? That's the only thing I did? I mean, he I did. did like all the, the, you know, oh, like he brought you into stuff. everything. He did everything for you. Okay, he and did then, everything. And then the Brock Lesnar thing was fucked up. But yeah. for the company, why would you have to go spoil it? Mm. As a you're as a wrestling this? fan, you're doing this. As a wrestling fan, you're really gonna do this now? I'm just asking. Well, you're asking me weird questions. I can't ask you weird questions. But you're bringing up lies. That's not. You know that's this not the is lie. Not true. You, I'm not going over this again. I'm just I've saying. done it a million times. You've never Dana answered. Dana just brought it up, so it's actually still relevant. No, he didn't bring it up. He did. I only watched the with Patty. Yeah, the Patty thing. Yeah, he didn't bring it up in that clip. I've watched the clip. Next, what's what else you got? What exactly. else is your, you didn't answer your, your my question. repertoire? You didn't ask my, I answered what is your the question? question? You didn't ask a question. So why did you fuck him over when he had your back? Because I didn't fuck him over. Okay, I, that's all I asked. Same, You're answering. Way, I'm giving you the, the I'm asking for an answer. Jabroni just, YouTuber guy reported on this fight yeah. when it came out was the same thing that I did. What else you got? That's different though because you no. announced it before. It wasn't be like announced. Would, I didn't announce it. I reported it. Keep going. Yeah, but that's still, Keep going. It's just What's the difference? Words. What do you mean? There's a huge difference between announcing. Announcing is what a promotion well, does. Where they were going to have this big pop. What big pop? It was a fucking 60 second commercial that took them probably you like, 30 minutes fan. to make. You know that it's a big pop when someone comes on the screen and no one knew he was coming back. Who gives a shit? I've reported a million things. I reported when Connor came back to fight Nate for the second time. What's the difference between that? Why doesn't anyone like bring that up? Thing. It wasn't a hidden thing. No yeah. one knew about it. I'm just asking. I mean, that's why he said he got mad at you. Okay. You well, no, you're saying that I, I screwed know. him over. Now you're trying to backtrack. No, I'm anyway, just saying. But I was asking uh, you a question. Why are, are you, you fighting? Time time? Why are you fighting KSI? Because I'm gonna make a fucking bag to fight a YouTube. Well, what's a bag? Tell us. It's yeah. a lot. I told you. It's more. When, I, Seven I figures. Lie. Yeah. I no. Say so. Yeah. 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 You'll see. Uh, plus sponsorships, everything. At the end of the why day. Why are people make... saying you're not going to show up? Why wouldn't I show up? This is the stupidest thing ever. Well, you didn't show up to the press conference. Yeah, because they want me to beat to like fucking walk to their drum. Fuck that. It's, it's a press thing. conference. Who cares? No, they, I'm going to go to London for one day when I'm fucking sick. Well, and at least I'm come. Stupid. Are you sick right now? No, nah, I mean, I'm a little. Jesus. You have COVID? You're a germaphobe, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, God. Dude, you're almost what 40. You're a germaphobe. You're scared of germ. What do you got? Gonorrhea? <laughs> Gonorrhea. Look at it. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, oh. So, okay. So why did you go at least like, you got to sell the fight. Yeah, of course. I already so sold go, it. Who sold this fight the most? Go on don't, don't fucking lie. The most you heard about this fight is all the shit I done. I was trading number three and, and fucking on Twitter in the whole world after that whole coffee thing. Oh, that thing. Jeez. When Anthony Taylor knocked you out. Oh, stop it. Come you talk a lot. You talk what? a big game. You never trained. What? Never By the way, I never, what, who may I never train? Of you course. Ne you ever trained? Yeah, of course. And what? I train right now. And what? Twice a week. Boxing. What? <laughs> Boxing. <laughs> Boxing? Stop it. Dude, your arms are like noodles. Yeah. So they used to look like freaking uh, angel hair pasta. So I've come a long way. Yeah. I mean, you've covered the sport for so long. You should train, you know? What happened with Anthony Taylor? Dude, that's, uh, he's a fucking loser. I didn't even know who it was, to be honest with you. I thought it was a homeless guy, like, chirping, like yelling. So you're in the, where are you? What do we, what do we, we have? We went to a court, this guy's screaming like, you don't hurt my friend KSI. I was like, oh, who the fuck is this? I was like, just get the fuck Where out. were you guys? We were in the parking lot, but it was a different I think a scenario. lot of people didn't see it. Do we have, we have it? We're going to watch it right now. No, I just for the, for the audience. <laughs> funny. You know, pretty sure they've seen it, it was all over the place. I don't think so. But it was in the video. It doesn't show. There were so many groups of people that were trying to fight me. Like, and even Chael said this. Anybody wants okay, to Okay, here we go. So which one is, oh, that's Anthony, the yeah, short guy? Wait, wait, let me get my knockout in there too. Okay. Put my knockout in there. What would have happened if that
So why I didn't did you, have a mark? But what, I didn't know you guys had beef. I didn't know what that is. So, but why did he punch you? Because he's a loser and he wanted to make a fucking name for himself. Did it work? No, I mean, he probably did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's probably the most fucking, I don't know who that is, I swear. And it was fucked up because I was with two people that can't fight, right? So we come outside, they have Haseem's camps trying to fight me. This was for the uh, yeah. Haseem um, Yeah, so it's Greg like Haseem's camp. And then there was like a bunch of boxing guys I want to do. And then a bunch of YouTubers all just trying because they know that I'm the fucking, you know, the king. And they're going to get clicks after. You know it's true. When you talk shit about me, you get your most engagement. So stop no, that's it. not true. That's true. That's not true. Don't lie. It's not. Uh, go look at the just, engagement. Okay, I will. Just go look I will. At I'll, I'll go bring it up. Okay, please. All right, another look at, lie. Look at Check. Big John McCarthy. He fucking. What do you he, say? He gets like three likes a post, and then he talks about me. He has 10K on it. So. It's 10K. Jesus. Not something on to write home Twitter? about. On Twitter, it's good numbers for a guy that doesn't get gets five likes. All right, fine. Whatever. They, what happened here? Why did he punch you? So that so the situation was actually weird. The reason I was trying to like pay attention to everybody. I'm with two guys that don't know how to fight. They're, they're Who are the guys? It was my brother and then one of my friends. And my other friend is just like a normal, like at least my brother could, you know. But uh, my other friend doesn't, he's like a, like a normal dude that just like, you know, works like a regular job. And we go outside and there was like fucking 30 people, 40 people trying to start a fight with me. So all of a sudden the punches started throwing. And then I had to watch out for my brother to make sure he, because there's a bunch of guys that are like fighters are trying to jump him. Then my friend is getting jumped. So I'm like looking around trying to like make sure everybody's okay because obviously I'm, I'm the one that knows how to fight. Sure. And uh, so you see in the video, after he hits me, I kind of, it, it was so like crazy. I didn't know who hit me because there were so many people. So then I saw my brother was on the ground. I came over. I, I smacked one guy. I think, he, I don't know who it was, some boxer. And then- uh, and punched just, him? Yeah, punched him, yeah. I didn't see that. I could show it to you. Okay, where is it? On my Twitter. Okay. Tell me to go on my Twitter. It's a good shot too. You have this shot, yeah. Connor? Maybe yeah, I'm getting it. it right it's now. on my Twitter. Just go down. Um, and then it was just, I, I knew that was going to happen, dude. All these guys just want to make a name. They're all just like, I don't know who that is, Anthony Taylor. Did you feel embarrassed though? No. I took that smack like a, a fucking champ, dude. That was a hard hit. If the car wasn't there. No shame oh, in that, man, by the way. You talk you a lot of shit. I'm not just saying. If you the think car... you could take a hit that hard? If what? Is it, you, you think you could take a hit that hard? From Anthony Taylor? Yeah. And probably not. Okay. But I'm not a pro fighter. Yeah, no, but you talk like one. What do you mean I talk like one? I'm a guy who talks about fighting. That's not true. It's what not... does that mean? You talk shit to fighters all the time. <laughs> to who? I don't even know, but I know you do. I know you do talk. Again, another thing that you don't have actual receipts for. Yeah. So you got knocked out. And then... Uh, Shut up, you get knocked out. Well, yeah, did you not? Stop it. I if there wasn't a... I don't know if you saw the thing. Okay, what happened with the coffee? <laughs> Someone told me he was thirsty. I would just fucking, you know, get No, but coffee. that one was weird because... Oh, was so weird. I well, I mean... smacked him with it. It was in my hand. And he was right there talking shit and I just whacked him. Right. It's a great video. And that was KSI. All over your past company. ESPN covered it like crazy. They loved it. Yeah, they yeah, loved it. They all loved over Sports it. Center. I don't know about that. You're probably crying watching. Yeah, well, to get I was, the cover I was crying. I don't think I mentioned it once on the show afterwards. Yeah, no one yeah. batted an eye. You know what shit I it got? It was all over you? Sports Center. Yeah, what does that mean, Sports Center? The IG of Sports Center or no, the actual no, it was television on the real, show? Yeah. You're telling me that the television show Sports Center was talking about it was on the top you? 10, they said it was like a pitch. Get out of here. Yeah. Well, was that a good moment or a bad moment for you? Great moment. What do you mean? Did you hit him with the coffee? Of course, he was soaked. He had his little outfit on. It was so funny. He had like this like broke back mountain fucking outfit. I don't know what the hell he was wearing. Was the fight made already before that or? It was, yeah. I mean, I wasn't there just like I walked up in Texas. Like that was the fight, yeah. That was the It fight. was already a done deal. So I was supposed to fight Logan. I don't know if you know this. No, Logan I... was completely signed. We were done. With signed. 100% signed. And uh, we were going to announce it at that same date. So that same date, we we're going to go announce me and Logan. And then he did that match with Roman Reigns. Oh, yeah. And he blew his knee out. And then they were like, oh, you want to wait for Logan? So I could have waited for Logan. But then he was like, I don't know about my knee. It could be six months. I'm like, dude, I've been out long enough. I'm going to fight. So I just took KSI. So that night they were going to announce Logan if... Yeah. If, if he didn't hurt his knee. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I wanted Logan more. I mean, because me had more beef, like the Pauls sure. and us, you know. But KSI is good, too. I don't really give a shit, to be honest. I'm a jiu-jitsu guy. about the boxer. Couple and, million and, dollars. And, and where <laughs> would the Logan fight have happened? Not London. It would have been in... It was oh, supposed to be Atlanta. Uh, no, Houston, where the Houston Rockets play. Okay, Toyota yeah, Center. Yeah. Toyota Center, yeah. Were you bummed? Yeah, because I'd rather be here. I don't want to go to London. Right. You know what I mean? But uh, it is what it is. I run London too, so. What does that mean? You know what? I don't know what that means. Come with me to London and see who gets more popular, me or KSI. KSI's a big freaking deal. I know, yeah, but I'm more popular in London. I have more respect on the streets. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What do we got, Frank? See? He's... Frank, look, listen, we're, tr we're trying to show Frank's all sides. Side. What is this? Jesus Christ. Right, we gotta get a little bit. <laughs> what is going on here, Frank? <laughs> here you go. <laughs> All right, so look, I right, look. I don't know what's going on. Watch this KO. Boom. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait, play it again. Play it again. I want to see it. Look, I'm trying to show all my, sides my of the uh, of the coin here. I don't know why it's so small. It seems a little suspect. Because it, it was like a guy recording like, a, you know, they oh. do those lives. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
It's a good right, shot, this, right? Yeah, but who was that guy? He was one of the guys that was punching my brother in the back of the head. So I, all I saw was like, okay, I see this guy throwing punches and cracked him. He was a boxer too. He's like, but did you get revenge on Anthony Taylor? No, I didn't. I mean, I'm not going to talk about that. Why? He gets, he'll get it handled. Oh, you're going to sue him? No, I don't sue. What does I, that mean? I never sue. Right. I just get handled. Did you did you try to sue the guy in? Um... Was this going to be another joke? No, no, no. You're fucking smart. The guy, the guy, the guy in Jersey Shore. Did you not sue that guy? Oh yeah, yeah. but that that's just just like so much. Put you <laughs> I, I, yeah, I could. It's it's going on still. Actually, that's still not been settled. Still, still, yeah. That's been two years. Yeah, that's crazy, right? What is the the holdup? Just because he's like another guy trying to press charges. I'm tr like it's just like a whole thing going on, and the the fucking place they delete all the footage. Uh -huh. of, like everything that happened because that guy jumped me from behind when I was getting held by eight people um, and like I was on crutches like who, who jumps some fat ass motherfucker jumps on my back um, th and the cops weren't doing anything they're all like fans they were like they, they didn't even move there was like cops there and then like the guys on my back and then like because I'm looking at two cops if you watch the video so I thought it was a cop so the guys are telling me not to move so it's like a bunch of cops got fired because they leaked the picture the oh, wow. yeah two of them got fired so um, who's suing who here it's like a whole thing the I'm whole going thing. for yeah the bar can get sued too because they have like a terrible reputation, but it's fucked up because the bar's owner has some kind of like connection to the guy that uh, is like the prosecutor and stuff. So it's like a weird, so they're trying to get into it because over there in those small towns, everybody kind of knows each other. So like they don't want to prosecute the bar and like all right. this stuff. If you go in their Yelp reviews, it's just like this place sucks. They jump everybody. They're like a piece of shit. And it's just- When like, you go out, do you need security now? Yeah, no, I do. Yeah. Legit. 100%. Like do you have security here? No, I didn't. With you, no. No, but just when you go out. Oh yeah, well, I was worried because outside I thought maybe some crazy fans or some shit like that. So you were you were worried of the people? No, no I'm not worried about like fighters and stuff. I mean, I don't no, really like of shit. the people. It just sucks when I want to go out and have a good time. I have to worry about fucking some idiots like throwing shit and like talking. Does that happen? Hundred percent. Yeah, I told them about this one. I went to this fucking press con or whatever that shit was. Yep. I said, listen, every fighter here is. Injured. When I walked in, the guys were like fucking like in awe, and I'm like, dude, this is gonna happen. And they're like, no, no, we got security, we got security. I was like, all right, whatever, because I don't want to give these fucking no names like the opportunity to even like, sure. you know what I mean? So uh, it is. Does it not get tiresome though? Yeah, it does. So did you, why don't you just stop? I don't do that much. Just people are very sensitive. Uh, you're you sensitive too, though. You know that. Again, you're gonna go back to me. This is not about me right now. This is about you. You're the uh, guest were you on trying my a therapy show. Session? Well, you know, I'm try I, I actually. Can I can I be honest with you for a yeah, second? I actually think deep down you're a good guy, and I think you have a good well, heart. I mean, you think? Uh, I don't know, I mean, uh, but but I, it. I, was in... I feel like you've lost your way. You're, you, you ever see the movie Billy it's different Madison? Though. Would be like You're me. like the puppy who lost its way. Okay, I mean, I'm explain this to you. Um, I don't know. People always ask my friends, they go, is he a dick in person? They're like, no, or like something like that. It's because when I hang out with people that I like and stuff, it's not me just talking shit to them. Sure. I have friends that I, I have, like, I'm not going to the fucking having dinner and they go, fuck you, right. bitch, you know? So, like, when I'm talking about fighters, they're trying to kill me and, and have, my, you know, talk shit to me and say they're going to knock me out from my family. In case I was talking about my mom. So yeah. like then it's a different story. Then yeah, she gave your mom props. I guess so. Yeah, but still, like he was trying to like why even go past that? Sure, I agree. And then his mom is nasty. So like I told, her, I I got him back with that good. It, it didn't. So stop. Listen, it was a good comeback. It was a good comeback. Yeah, I agree with you. You he should never talk. That you, yeah, yeah, you should never talk about mom. I don't. I don't. I don't overstep that boundary. I'm. Uh, I made a joke about my wife. That wasn't a joke. That was a joke about you. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. It's you're saying that my wife cheats on me. You no, it fuck. wasn't. It says that you're the kind of guy to hang out with your wife's boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, that was that. <laughs> and everybody liked it. It was like everybody's like, yeah, it's true. He probably does look sure, the kind okay. of guy to hang yeah, out keep with your wife's boyfriend. How's your girlfriend? I don't know. I'm single. All right. Single um, bachelor. Okay, so and and, and come out with me one day. I would love to. Would you drink? No. Why? Actually, speaking of that, we just had Paulo Costa on. I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I always drink him though. Did you ask him? He yeah, actually, thank you for saying that because he I said, Paulo, we have Padillon coming on. He's like, oh, I can't wait to see that. Yeah. He's a good guy. I said, Paulo, you might be the only person in MMA who likes Dylan Dennis. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but, relax. But then he said, a lot of fans. he said, this is, and I quote, you need to fix your drinking problem. He says, you drink too much. That's not, he challenged me. To, he said he could drink. His whole thing was like wine, this and that. Yes. And I was like, great, let's do a he wine He said you chart. drank two bottles. So we, yeah, I could, no, I could, I could put down a lot. But so we get there and I was like, oh, I was taking a shot to start up. And he was like, oh, I don't really drink like that. I was like, dude, your whole thing is like <laughs> drinking. And he started drinking and then he was like, I can't keep up. He's like, it's too much. Yeah, he was. Dumb. So you beat him. Oh, yeah. But are you drinking too much? No, I haven't drinking. I actually stuff. wouldn't blame you if you if you were drinking. I mean, it's been a tough no, three no, years I, for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I drink, but when I'm in camp and I have a fight coming up, I don't drink at all. At all? I don't touch When's it. the last time? <sighs> Maybe 12 weeks. So it would be, I'm going to go with math. So, yeah, I don't know. 12 weeks from the fight. Maybe uh -huh. sometimes more. What happened at MSG outside MSG with uh, Nathan? <laughs> That's a whole different story. That okay, they get on camera. So we went out to go get a couple beers on the top. 
And uh, it was me, my co couple friends, Craig Jones, actually. And uh, I see them, like, um, I see, like, that guy that he hangs out with. I don't know his name, the, the smaller guy. He's, like, Spanish. Avila? I think so, yeah. yeah. He's, like, he's, and I knew, I'm like, dude, this dude is, like, he, he's just, like, Anthony Taylor. He, they're looking for fucking the most attention they can get. And he's with Nate. And then they're coming, they're coming, and then, like, I'm like, all right, this is going to be whatever. So whatever, so they come. And, like, Nate is, is like, looking at me. I'm like, what's up? And then his boy's like, yo, fuck you, man. Like, he's, this like, is standing, inside the... Yeah, inside the arena. And yeah. his boy's is like, I don't know what the fuck he was saying. Cause they're all kind of, like, you know, they don't really make sense. So they're all kind of just, like, punch drunk. So I have no idea what he's saying. He's like, man, man. And I was like, what? And he, like, just throws his beer on me. Like, he, it, it was actually, like, a tequila soda, which wasn't that bad. So I took my <laughs> beer, and I hit him in the face with it. And then everybody started kind of like brawling and the cops got involved. And like, <laughs> it was funny because one of my friends slipped on the beer. His friend slipped. It was like going back and forth. And Nate is like, Nate was like trying to separate it. Like I was going after Nate and then his boy was like trying to, and then Nate like separated it. The whole thing happened. And then he walked away and I was like, yeah, fuck you. Walk away or something. Like, I don't know. We kind of got into it. And he starts coming back and then the cops like took him out. So then we're outside. And so we're just talking. By the way, I don't think people knew about that. No, no one knew about it. There's a picture of me and the cops because they, they were restraining me. Yeah. And uh, so did they? Did they no, take you it, in? The guy was like, yeah, I, tra I used to train Marcelo's. He's like, I got you. Don't worry about it. He's like, I oh, saw wow. he started it and shit like that. Because he, he threw his drink first. So then you had to sit and watch the rest of the card? What? Yeah. Ugh. But it was tequila soda, so it was kind of like not that bad. It's just like seltzer water. You know what I mean? I know, but it's uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. I was pissed off about <laughs> that. But I got, him, I got him back with a beer, which a beer is worse because it has a stain. And all right, all right. So then we go outside. And now the night is over. Yeah, the night is over. We go outside. You and see him Audi again randomly? So no, this is the funny thing. I'm talking to Audi. So I'm like, my back is turned towards the subway station. And I'm talking to Audi. I'm talking to Audi. And I get hit with like a, like an empty Snapple bottle or something. So now I'm like, in my head, I was like, oh, it's just some heckling. Because there's a bunch of fans out there from the UFC. I was like, some guy heckling me or some homeless guy. And I turn around and it's like Nate. And he's just like screaming and doing shit. And, I'm, and then Audi's like flipping out because his kids are there. And he's like a bunch of young yeah, kids. Yeah. And Audi's like, dude, my kids are here, Dylan. Please don't do this. Like they're gonna, And like, they're crying. And like, I'm like standing there. And we're going back and forth, kind of. And I'm like, yo, his kids are right here. If you want to, let's go. Like, I don't know what street I said. Let's go to the next street. Like, what's not doing it in front of the kids? The kids are freaking out. And then Audi's in the middle, and then the kids are there. And we keep going back and forth, back and forth. We're talking shit. And then he comes up. He's like, hey, man, I always have respect for you, Audi. And I don't know what he was saying. So I'm behind Audi. And then he goes to me, yo, fuck you. Don't come that close to me. I said, what the fuck are you going to do about it? And then he kind of slapped my friend. Yeah. And then I came to him, and I was like, yo, let's go over here to whatever the street. He's like, okay, I'll meet you over there. And then just kind of, that was it. That was it. Yeah. But, so, Apparently he wants to have a boxing match with me. Really? Yeah. So Would after the case, hundred percent MMA or boxing. How do you feel about your boxing, you know, skills? Because obviously you grew up as I'm a not, I'm, not a, guy. I'm more of like a Toriel Gotti. I would yeah, say. Yeah. I saw like, your I saw your clip of hitting the pads. You like that? Uh, I mean, well, you never boxed. I feel pretty confident that I could hit pads better than you. Should we do it? Legi Why do we should what? do a sparring session? No, 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 no. Just oh, we just you, whatever you were doing on the pads. I feel like you were trolling. If you could make. Was it was if, that a troll if can, job? If you can make a minute sparring with me, I'll give you a million dollars. That's not the point. Yeah, no, this is the point. You're saying you, you could be a better boxer than me. No, no, no. I said I when I saw that video, I was like, you're trying to like lure KSI. I don't in know what you're and talking think, about. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Do we have that, Connor? It was great. I, I was like, this is one of your better stuff. I don't know. Because it was so slow. Oh, yeah. And well, you were doing the thing. It was like Stephen too, A.S. We were doing that thing to the side. <laughs> no, what they don't realize too is that KSI like runs that that like misfits thing. Yeah, so yeah. they're coming. They want me to spar. I'm like, no, fuck you guys. Like, they, they would just give it straight to them. What do you mean they want you to spar? Like, they want to record like a bunch of sparring and do like a oh. bunch of shit. And like, I'm not stupid. Like, they have no footage on me now. Oh, why wouldn't they just like watch it? That's why I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, of course. Giving I'm giving props. Give them, so you like, gave them like the my, worst stuff possible to think that you're gonna. That play was possum. my. That was my hitting the mitts. I don't know what you're talking about. That's how. I, that's how I hit mitts, bro. That's not how you hit mitts. But you know it's fucked up. I'm gonna hurt case. I really bad. And no one, a, no one realizes. Who's this. the favorite? He is. It's fine. He, Does that piss you off? No. You're you're a legit pro money. fighter. Yeah, yeah, but everybody's I mean, a sort of. jiu-jitzu guy. Jiu-jitzu guy, yeah. I mean, sort of. Well, 2-0. Oh. I've has, been hurt. He has more. I'm 2-0. Oh. He has more boxing matches than you have I'm, MMA fights. Stop. I mean, I'm 2-0, and, and I'm about to be more money than any guy that in, in MMA right now. That's not true. It is. That's not 100%. true. 100%. I, I can shake your hand on that when the purse comes up. That's not true. Izzy for sure made more in his last okay, fight. Okay, Izzy, because he gets a pay-per-view and he has that. No, for sure. Actually, might be close to Izzy, though. And then Connor's not fighting right now, so I'm telling you. I'm like. I saw what Paulo was going to make against uh, yeah, Whitaker, and yeah, that's he, he tweeted it seventy and seventy. That's like, yeah, but that's, that's that's like what I was getting like in my first fight for Bellator. Like that's nothing. That's embarrassing. I got more than that from my first fight with Bellator. Usman probably made more. Uh, Usman's boring as fuck though. I know, but that's not the point. That's yeah, all we're who, who wants to see him fight? <laughs> like you know. I'm sure Ngannou will make more in his next fight. No, his last
Um, so what, you're talking about the guys are not active. I say guys are Volk, active. Sure. You know, Volkanovsky. Yeah. But how much? Why don't you tell us? How much do you make? I'm not the one. Oh, okay. I'm so not like, the one being questioned. Right I know, now. but you're questioning me about money, so I know because you, I'm not the one saying I'm the highest paid this, that, and the other. Okay, so it's yeah, a natural it doesn't matter. When it comes out, then that's fine. Do you think the London Commission will actually put this out? I don't know how that works. I don't know how it works either. I don't know. I hope so. Are you still with Bellator? Yeah, Scott Coker. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about how I had to do that because Go ahead. it's, what, a, what are they it's a Showtime and the Zoner. Oh, the rivals. Yeah, the rivals. So I had to, you know, pay had a give hefty you, fee. You had to pay. I don't know if I'm supposed to be talking about how much. I can say how much. What does I don't that know. Is tell really, me. I need like my publicist. I don't yeah. know, I want to get in trouble with Coker, but it's a lot of money. It's it's. What does that mean? When I'm paying Coker for me to let me fight is more than probably another. You had to pay UFC. Coker to let you out? Not to let me out. I'm still with them, but it's okay. just like a, because it's, it would be different if it was like with Showtime, you understand? Because with Showtime, they have a deal with them. Yeah, yeah. And the zone is like. Why does it seem like he's like, I don't know, some of his comments. I, I understand though, because he wants me to come back to MMA his star you know like obviously there's no one in bellator that's mm -hmm. gonna bring that kind of noise you, you think they're still struggling since your last fight in 2019 who, who, they haven't who, who they brings haven't that recovered much hype? who brings that much hype legit legit okay, okay. Can I ask you right now, I know, what was okay. the name of the guy that you fought in 2019 legit off the top of your head 2019 yeah what was his name max humphers <laughs> See, i know is he a legit yeah, person of course no he was fake no no like is that i i wouldn't you could have said right now he, there's Joe actually a thing Blasolino. he beat someone that john jones lost to Come on. I, I'll find you the thing. Since? Yeah, I'll send it to you. Or before that? I think it was before. I don't know. First off, Max Humphreys is the guy who dude, delivered my every, UPS package yesterday. Did he? Yes. And then maybe he got a new job. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? Uh, if you look at anybody's record for their second fight, they fight. Ben Askren had a guy that was 0 5. Like, these guys are terrible. Uh, my guy, at least, it was a winning record. Yeah, but the difference is you talk a big game and, and you say X, Y, and Z. I'm still here. I'll still fight anybody. Yeah. I'll fight Patty right now. I'll fight any of those Why guys. Why does They're it terrible. feel like Scott? I'll fight this kid too. Who's This is the kid that uh, just fought the 18 year old, right? Yeah. Uh, Sc Scott is trying to distance himself from you. Why is that? He's not trying to distance. I just think that he's mad because you... like, the big comeback should have been an MMA, which I agree. But like, why not just beat up a YouTuber for fucking a ton of money? Were you close to coming back? I wanted to. So it was before. The, so I was getting ready for my comeback. And then Logan, they were like, okay, you want to do Logan? Didn't guarantee Jake for a crazy amount of money. I said, fuck yeah, why not? And then they wanted me to wait for him. And I was like, dude, you fucking... He's a scumbag, to be honest with you. Because he kind of didn't update... Logan. He didn't update me on the fight and tell me like how he was he was doing the wrestling and stuff. And I wasted so much time because I was like, oh, I'm going to fight Logan. like you know. And uh, he just kind of had me like you know, waiting. And then I was like, I could have came back already. you know. Mm. So that was the only thing that pissed me off about him. He's... Yeah, I don't know. Those guys are all fake. The wrestling is uh, impressive. He does do a good job. He yeah, does. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. I'm a big wrestling fan. I know. Look, you're wearing an NWO hat. Yeah. Is this your is, favorite wrestler? Does it say Nose World Order? I think so. I know you're a closet fan. <laughs> I didn't get that joke. I was you. actually, I was actually Who's really, your favorite wrestler? I was actually really surprised when you DM me, asked me to come back on. I was like, this is big no, of you. No, that. What are you talking about? We, we do you want to? No, but you said, are we BFFs again? So the, that was kind of being. The zone reached out. That's because they don't know. Paradigm reached out. No, but you started. You, you started. Out. We. You started what? the niceness, and I kind of said, "Okay." No, you started the niceness. You said that I got Patty ten seven, so I said, "Thanks." Yeah. Does this mean we're friends? Well, he again? helped me out because you paid me a hundred k to come to. That's this. right. Good. So he got to help. Another him. like, Cha -ching. no, it was hundred um, k, right? So speaking of money, um, yeah. when you do this whole thing with the tweets, yeah, oh, I'll pay you. I do a uh, hundred thousand. No one ever wins them because <laughs> I'm always uh, whatever you it happens. The ones where you lose, no, that's not true. Must follow that. Dylan Dennis. Why you do this? I never done that because I like to give back. And why would I pay someone they don't follow me? But why do you do this? What is here? Because I like to give back money. If I don't finish Patty Pimlet in under two minutes, I'll retire and delete all social media forever. Plus, give everyone who likes this one k each. It's true. You're really gonna go through it and start paying people a thousand? Mean, yeah, I would. Yeah. Oh, here's another one. If Mbappe wins the World Cup, I will cash app everyone who likes his tweet. Yeah. Two hundred thirty. Did he won the World Cup? Must be following Dylan Dennis. But again, you why would I give the money? You delete to the that, you delete the ones. That's not true. Yes. Now you see, there's another that is lie true. from you. If Sean O'Malley out. beats Pedro Munoz, I'll give one person who likes this tweet a thousand. Must be he following. Up. It was a draw. Win. Right, right. So, see, I do. They're all up. Yeah, but why do you do this? Is the question. I like to give back to my fans, and have why not do it in it? a fun way? Have you ever done it? Of course. I can show you my bank account. How much have you given away? From all those, maybe like six, maybe, I don't know. I, I usually thousand? give a thousand yeah, or two thousand. What's the point though? I told you I like to give back and why not make it fun? And then people uh, get mad, like must be following. Yeah, obviously I'm not going to give some money to, to some guy that's not a fan of mine. That's not following me. It was the stupidest thing ever. But if they're, I mean, if they see that tweet and then follow you, yeah, now, uh, yeah. maybe they're not a fan. How do you know who's been a fan? But now they know. Now they're seeing my stuff and then they fall in love with me after seeing all my tweets are so good. Stuff like One that. might say, this is just a way to get followers. 
I mean, you could say that, but I just, I'm just giving back. At least I give back to my fans. You ever give back to your fans? Yeah, I do this show for free. That's actual okay. content. I've done more in the last three years. And what, what have you done? You've sent out a bunch of tweets. I mean, I'm still fucking uh, on top. So what does that mean on top when you say that again? Relevant. Is fighting KSI... Uh, KSI is huge. You just said he was big. I know, man. but is that is that like ultimately what you want no. in your career? No, it's not. Does that, so, so does why that not mean you're add extra a ton of money that is going to help me with my career and my training and everything? Why? And why not prove... You know what's kind of cool to me too, to be honest, is I've done jiu-jitsu. I competed in jiu-jitsu. I competed in wrestling, Greco Roman, freestyle. I competed in everything. Now it's going to be like, at the end of the day, it could be like, I've done boxing. I've done every single martial art. I've done MMA. It's more than a lot of people could say. How many styles have I fought? I'm a jiu-jitsu guy about the box and like no one ever wants to give me shit. Like right. how many people would do that? Like imagine making Cron Gracie do a boxing match. He'd probably be like, fuck off. Sure. Like I'm going to a territory that's not my specialty. And, and you're upset that no one's giving you credit for this? I don't, you know, no one ever gives me credit. I don't think anybody ever gives me credit on anything. Are you when, surprised by this? I don't really care to be honest. When I right, was exactly. younger maybe, but now I just say fuck everybody because everybody's against me and then when you talk shit about me, they make more but you headlines. you know why they're against you, right? It's fine. But when I'm, you're the reason I'm the why. rich one, so it's fine. You're the reason why. That's fine. How, what do you mean you're the rich one? Like who, every single guy talks shit about me. They're just like, they just do it just to get the fuck. I don't know. I don't really care to be honest. Mm. I feel like you do care. No, I, I mean, sometimes I'm like, come on, just fucking, you know, but it is. But you bring it up. I'll prove, I'll prove them wrong. That's the thing that I'm trying I'll to, prove them wrong. to get at. It's fine. I'll prove them wrong every time. But why bring it up? You, know you know what the worst thing to be though? is someone that no one cares about. Like Demetrius sure. Johnson, like no one, no one ever tuned in to watch his fight. It was always just like, a, like a, you know, like, yeah, if true. I, if Demetrius Johnson. Johnson is fighting, everybody be like, okay, I'll probably catch it on the back end. No right. one's ever going to be like, how much pay per views has he ever sold? What, do you, what beef do you have with Demetrius Johnson? No, I'm, not, I'm just saying, like, that's the worst. Why do you have to bring him into this? Because he's like the kind of guy that, or even Usman, like, no one's ever like, yo, I got to watch his Usman fight tonight. I never heard anybody say that. Hmm. And then with me, maybe they, you have a guy like, yo, I can't wait to see Dylan Dance get knocked out tonight. Like, that's like something, at least they have an emotion towards me. Does with it bother it. you that the majority of the people are hoping no, to get knocked it's out? No, it's great. As long as they tune in. Yeah, that's the best. That's the best thing. I mean, viewers? how many heels in wrestling has sold sure. tickets? Yeah, you know? no, that's true. But there's a difference between being a heel and like having X Pac heat, right? There's change the channel heat, and there's I want to see this. No guy. one changes the channel. Stop. You think so? Yeah, hundred percent. Well, no one changes channel because you're not fighting. All my all my videos. Yeah, there's no channel to change. I'm coming back. Are you fighting in a month? Why do I feel like this fight isn't happening? It is happening. I don't know why. When, the, when do you go everybody's to been saying like, because I don't know, because everybody hates me. But when do you go? Probably the week before. You have to do some media stuff and shit like that. Are you gonna go? To the no, media not, stuff? I'm, yeah, I'm not going to show up. <laughs> of course I'm going to go. I don't know. You just didn't show up to this yeah, That was stupid. They want me to do everything <laughs> on their fucking back end. Like, I have fucking safety. But aren't they the ones paying you? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. matter. I'm going to go to London for eight and a half hours and then go do like an hour press conference should... to come back. Sure. And then, come, and then I'm already not feeling good. I'm going to go there, get more sick, and then come back and fuck that. Right. Everybody's been sick around here too. It's just like... Were, so... they, were they upset? Yeah, I think they were. What'd they say? Uh, I don't know. I had like 30 minutes. The yeah, they were like threatening to pull. I was like, okay, pull it. Go ahead. You guys need me more than I need you. Mm. How many viewers do you think you this keep gets? You smart. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, KSI <laughs> is infinitely bigger. He's got like millions upon millions of yeah, followers. Was, You're asking people no one, to follow you so you can who, cash at them. Who did he fight? Uh, he fought the two dudes. He didn't fight any. He didn't fight anyone of note. Oh, well, other than uh, I mean, but you wouldn't Logan. know. I'm saying everybody knows about this fight's happening. I mean, I know that he You're fought the two dudes. He fought the two dudes. Yeah, the two dudes. Yeah, you think I... That's the same thing I would say to you, the two no, dudes. No, I'm just saying. I don't saying, know who the guys you fought are yeah, you were there fucking covering it, so stop it. I was not. I did an interview with you after. KSI? No, I'm talking about the fucking... Oh, your fight? Yeah, so stop yeah you it. think I was there to cover your yeah, fight? Yeah, you were. Well, first don't of all... Remember Dylan, come on, please do it. I will please, say, number one, I'll say Dylan. Chael Sonnen, retirement fight, my friend. Number two, yes... You're right. Like, Dylan, please, hey. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I know it, I'm right. It was worthy to cover a fight of yours okay, back yeah. then. You were someone of note. You think I'm going to London for this? No. They didn't invite you. They won't invite you ESPN guys. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I was supposed to do uh, Misfits Boxing. Were you? Yeah. Well, you got Jake on your, you know, you're on no. his payroll. So no, I was, uh, I, was, I was pretty much at the goal line. Yeah. But then I heard they were signing people like you, and I was like, "Fuck!" I knew you were gonna uh, come with that. Come no, it's, it's actually it's the actual truth. Speaking of, I Jake, thought they were gonna give you. I thought you were actually gonna work with us for this fight. They said you were gonna be the ring girl. Yeah, good one. No, but they um, did say that, and I was like, "That's awesome." Ring boy it would be ring boy. No, you'd be Shout out to girl, Elias something. Teodoro. You want to see me in a bikini? I want to get dog. up there. That's gross. Listen, <laughs> what happened with Jake Paul? Why haven't you fought him? I, I I thought about this before. We were supposed to fight so many times, and then I don't know he just why. I'm you not were 50. unhealthy. I'm not 50. I asked for two months extra because I had a knee surgery. That's pretty fucking goddamn not that crazy. If you would beat him, uh, you know. I mean, good for him because if it would have been me instead of Ben Askren, he would have never done this whole thing. It, everything would have changed. Everything would have You changed. would be the guy. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't know if I want to box. I'm a real fighter. Does it drive you nuts though? No, I'm not the kind of guy that like hates on people's success. Like good for him. He's doing what he does, you know. Um, we had her back and forth and stuff like that. Uh, but he it's just so cheesy how he's fighting Anderson. Anderson's 50 years old, dude. 47. 48. 47. 48. See, look at your little Jake 40, Dick Rider. No, I'm just saying. I'm I'm more of an Anderson Dick Rider, if anything. So you think that Anderson Silva should come By back the way, at 50 years old? I gave Jake his worst loss of the year. I 10 7 his ass worse than what? I 10 7 you. When you we never 10 7 I 10 7 you back. You're just not going to admit it. <laughs> and it's hard to get stuff on you because no one knows stuff about you. For me, it's like easy to get fucking shit. Get I have shit no, because I'm an actual place. good person. Because I don't treat people like shit. Who do I treat like shit? I'm not shit? disrespectful. You treat everyone oh, like shit. It. You're disrespectful to everyone That's in the community. True. The only one you've not been disrespectful towards is Connor. That's not true. I give people their crops. I made props. Props? Yeah, props or props? Props. You a farmer now? <laughs> Farmers only? Who do you give props to? I mean, not you, but tell other, me one other, person. other good Tell me one person. Real journalist. Yeah, why aren't yeah. you on their show? Um, uh, I was on their show. Yeah, who? I'm going on ESPN this week. I'm going on... Yeah, with uh, who? who? Who else are you using for? How what? many people? Who, yeah, uh, go, 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 go through the list. Go through. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you ain't going to show it's up hard, on any of those different, shows. You're on you're different show, show on every single day. It's hard, you know? Okay, so Jake Paul. Maybe this is the fight that gets you, Jake. It was supposed to be guaranteed when I beat Logan. They were, it was in the contract that they wanted to Jake. So I, don't, I mean, I would imagine they're both going to be fucking begging me after this. I'm going to hurt KSI bad, dude. Like, they're going to see. How many rounds? Six. I'm, uh, I want 10. KSI was like, oh, my fucking cardio machine, dude. And I was like, yo, you're going to six rounds? rounds? Three. Three minute rounds. I'd probably be 10 rounds, 12 rounds. Sure. Just do. I'm going to break it. Is, it. is it a pro bout or is it exhibition? That's one thing I want to find out. What? You don't know? <laughs> I swear I don't know because I'm, I'm going to get pissed off if it's not pro. Because I don't trust it someone be as, if it's ex exactly. I want it to be pro. I, I'll get my boxing license right now, and I don't trust them with expedition. Exhibition. Expedition. Don't get nervous. Right Are you nervous? No. You water. But uh. Oh, look what I have here. I have a fucking like triple prime. Ah. Uh, don't give me that. Throw it at you, and then this <laughs> shit is great. Is it? Oh, uh, shout out to my guy. Logan and Jake. Hey, Dick right what's up, Logan? How I don't are know you? what's bigger, your nose or the, the bottle. Mm. Probably my nose. Yeah. Um, so why would it be exhibition? I don't know, but if it is, that's fucked up because they're gonna pick the judges. They're gonna. It's already oh, in London. So? They're gonna pick the ref. Dude, these things are like with like KSI, Logan, Jake. They're all very KSI and Jake don't like each other. I'm just saying, like just these promotions where they get their sure. own fights. It's very. You said that you had evidence that Jake's fights are rigged. I can show it to you. But there's someone. I don't want to say the name because the guys. I mean, that you he, like. You only had a previous trainer that everybody can kind of put two and two together. Um, okay. He's an older guy, and he asked me specific, uh, specifically to not put his name out there because he doesn't like trauma, and he doesn't want to be in the limelight. And you know, meanwhile, he supposedly Jake gave you this fucked information. Over something with his wife, or like he did something, or I don't know, something happened. They had a falling out. Okay. And then blowjob floors took over. I think you can figure <laughs> out who it is. And uh, oh, he's an older fighter that he used to train with. That was his coach. All right. I don't really know. Okay. Well, yeah, I do. But, okay. Uh, I don't. He doesn't want to get involved in that because it could be like you know some. Shane Mosley. I'm not gonna say yes or no. I mean, why? Was you, you, got, you got an earpiece? No, I got nothing. Uh, I'm just trying to think of who yeah. Jake has trained with. Okay, so it is Shane Mosley. I'm not gonna. He get doesn't want. Him. He doesn't want the drama. I know. I kind of just gave it to him. Yeah, you just did it. You just said yes. <laughs> um. No, but yeah. I mean, so Shane Mosley, you're saying has. I'm evidence. not gonna go. I'm not gonna. Okay, go. someone has evidence that. Yeah. The fights are rigged. Yes. How would this guy know if he's no longer training him? Because he trained them for a couple of the first fights, and he knows how Jake operates. Like, Jake won't fight someone unless he knows he's going to win or if he, they have a handicap or they have, like, it's a whole thing. I don't remember the messages. This is when we were supposed to fight. Pull him out. The second time. I mean, I would. I could show you, but I don't trust just you. Read read out loud just read them. No, because then it's obvious. You just said the name and I'm not going to. Oh, stop it. That's a, For him, that could be incriminating. Cause what are you talking about? Just fight. read. Just read the. Uh, no, no. Come on. Like, I could show you it so way, you know I'm online. Have the receipts. Okay, but I'll show you so you know I'm online. No, it's, what does it matter that I'm seeing it? Let the audience. No, I'm not gonna show. Okay, because the guy asked me as a fucking okay, older me. man not to sh fuck show me. Go ahead. Okay. Here we go. I swear, if you read them out loud. I'm not gonna like show you close. I'll just show you. So, so Shane Mosley reached out. Someone, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. I'm not gonna do. It. Okay, no, we'll keep move going. on. Move keep on. Going. No, move no, on. I want the evidence. Move on. Well, I almost had it. No, you almost did, but you're uh, okay. no, you're talking too much. Come on. What bell is this? That's me, ten seven all day. I actually oh, yeah? they awarded that to me after this. We should have a press conference. Tweets. We should do that. What were they? Uh, what were they? What me and you press conference? Yeah. What are the? Uh, rip you apart. Kind of. Where are the January first ones? You have that money in the bank. Is that real? Yeah, it's right behind you. It's pretty cool. I think Austin Theory. He's cool. Good Who's dude. that? Austin Theory. You like him? Yeah, we hung out when he was in New York. He's actually a good dude. Guys, if you think life sucks right now, just think you could have begged for three years to fight an Ono oh, YouTube. You only said that online because you know I was the next Three years later. It's fucked up. Still not be popular enough or good enough to even be. Come on, that's good stuff. That's not. That's, that's just what everybody says. You I was just taking a nap when I read that. When I wrote Stop. that. That was. My stuff hurt you, so. Oh, here we go. That shit didn't bother hey, me. Hey, guys, follow me real quick. I'll follow you back and pay you. 
<laughs> oh yeah, we're still on that. Hey guys, if I you're you're still playing the same old hits. What? Uh, if I if it's I hard lose, to talk shit about you because you don't do anything. Uh, I mean, I oh see. my shit, I have fights everywhere. I have all this shit, so it's easy. You're just gonna get, like say what everybody says online. And everybody's gonna rally behind you. Right. You know. And and as I predicted, by the way, you did reach out to me and say, "Hey, no, bro, dude, we're still you friends." You fucking guy didn't we're call me friends. crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Remember I when I posted post that? I had and then you even had Ali get back, uh, uh, get on. Yeah, Ali. No, there's other. Your, there's fighters that like don't post text. That was such a bitch move. No, that was a bitch move. No, it wasn't for someone that exactly. someone I known you how long, and I always had your back with all the other shit. Yeah, I know, but why would you post text? Who posts text? That's like girl shit. No, because you're that you're, was girl shit. You're calling me a bitch. Oh my god, you never called a bitch. No. You're pretty. That's the one thing with you, though. It's when I, someone no. talks shit back to you, you kind of get like all like emotional. No, I just sit here and I just dish no, out ten on. sevens. That's one of the worst things day. too. Like in high school or something. You like did when exactly you, when you talk what shit I predicted. To, when you talk shit to a kid and then he can't take it, like, but he gives it out, but he can't take it. That's the worst I thing. Can't take it. I could take it. I could take the banter. I could take anything you say. But when you did it, then you get all emotional and start crying. Why do you send DMs and then delete them? I never done that. You do that all the time. No, I don't. Yes, you send me DMs and then you delete them. Dude, you making shit up? You're such a liar. If I get on you, you now, I don't want to make so you cry. What are you, so what are you going to do about the evidence that you have? I mean, that's pretty big stuff. I am i don't disrespect someone that says don't. I don't well, you do put what it you out do. There. You fucking put text you put out, it there. out there. You put DMs out there. You put it out there. No, I didn't say anything. You said his name, not me. No, you put out there that you have evidence that Jets oh, yeah, just because rate. he's fucking talking so much shit about me and KSI now. Like, oh, this guy can't box. This and that. He was begging to box me for years. Now he's like, oh, he can't box. Mm. Like... He's just obsessed with KSI, so he's just upset that he, you know, he has me and all this. And then he's saying all this shit when Logan was begging to fight me. So it's like it doesn't make any fucking sense. On Monday, we had Gordon Ryan on the show. Yeah. And uh, he's not a big fan of yours. Yeah, actually, he is in person. In person, he fucking no, you're the man. You're fucking my idol. Is that true? What he said since you became black belt? No, he just talks shit. First off, anything that Gordon, anything that Gordon has done in his career doesn't mean anything. Who's the best home run hitter of all time? I mean, I, some would say Barry Bonds. Uh, oh, you're going to say Barry Bonds? Well, he got busted for steroids. Oh, who else he actually never one? tested positive. Uh, who's the other guy? McGuire? McGuire. Well, Dude, not Hank Aaron. He who, is fucking juice point? to the gills. I mean... It doesn't matter. Like, he, nothing he does is like... like the, imagine an NBA player that got busted for steroids. He was doing it all season. No one would even care. You think there's just a big asterisk on his whole career? Yeah. Like, what, he is like just a juice Did, Didn't you compete against yeah, him? Yeah, he's not that good. And who won? It was a, a ref decision he won. But everybody says I won. Ask Chael. He was there. Because <laughs> Chael was there live. Every Chael, single person in the arena. Chael actually might be And you know what's fucked up about that yours. match? If you watch that match, his fucking right. dad is sitting with the judges. Really? Yeah, how crazy is that? Why don't you do a rematch? I feel I like would. at this point you guys... He has to pass a drug test. That's why he's not doing MMA. Why do uh -huh. you think he's not doing MMA? Well, one... He can't pass a drug test. One doesn't... Oh yeah, he would have to go fucking overseas or something. Nothing he's done in his career. It doesn't mean... like I I can test USADA tomorrow or today. Let me see if he can. You know? Hmm. So, is there um, drug testing for the KSI fight? I hope so. I wouldn't mind. But I is think there? He, I don't know. I, dude, this, that's what I'm saying. The show is like wrong a little bit, you know. Yeah, but why? So, why are you taking part in any of this? Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I think that too. <laughs> but are you the, having second thoughts? No, but the money's nice. So. Any doubts? No. Is it I don't care. You could be taking steroids. I could be have the flu, fucking sick. Humble. Is it guaranteed? Like, meaning, like, oh, yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no, no you no. have to show up this. That. It's no. like you step foot. And if they don't want to make a pro, if I can, I'll choke his ass out on that. Who's going to stop me? In the fight, never yeah, know. he has to would, be careful. You would never be, you would never be licensed again well, as a not, pro boxer if he's not licensed. Well, I mean, a uh, commission in the states would never license if you really want to be I'm a MMA boxer. fighter anyway. Sure, yeah. you know mm. I mean? more jujitsu. Do you consider yourself more jujitsu or MMA? Well, now I'm getting, you know, my striking is more. I, I'm overall, you know, I'm still always going to be a jujitsu guy. It's just stupid. Who are you training with right now? I just train around different gyms. Yeah, you don't have a home? No, not right now. You don't have like a main head coach? No. Who's going to be your, your guy? I coach myself. I don't Who? need fucking help for KSI. You're not going to have a corner? I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Come on. Dude, KSI is you not good. You can't be that disliked. Yeah. No one wants to train with you? No, it's not that. I just don't trust nobody right now. Why? I don't know. That's not a good way to live. Yeah, it's not. I go through, I've been through a lot this year. You know, I lost a lot of people and, and I just kind of been. What do you mean? Just I'm like, just spend, yeah, I lost my dad. I lost. Oh, really? Leandro was one of my close friends. Another friend just died in uh, Orlando. Um, There's a bunch of shit that's been going on, so. Just I'm been sorry. a rough year. No, it's all good. So, um, so, so, but why not have a? I mean, don't you need a coach? Yeah, I mean, I coach myself. I, I've been in the fight game for a long time. The greatest Floyd Mayweather has a coach. Yeah, I mean, once I find the right person, it's just hard too because like for this boxing fight, like everybody comes out of the woodwork. Sure, it's like fucking, it's crazy, and I don't trust anybody. Everyone wants to be attached. Yeah, everybody. It's just like, hey, can I coach you? I have a boy that'll coach you. Do this and that. I'm just like, nah, I'm good. So, but like, where, like, let's say you have to train today. Like, where, where are you going? 
I'm gonna spar today. I just set it up. I'll hit up a couple boxers or something. But like, let's go get some rounds, you know, stuff like that. Or I'll you know hit the bag or ask one of my friends to hold mitts. Or I, I, it's like I have people there, coaches. I just don't have like a sure. main guy, you know. And 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 come January 14th. Yeah, I think by then I'll find someone. But isn't that is problematic? I don't know. I don't. I don't see KSI being a threat. So you're not worried? No, no worried. Do you think it would be detrimental to your brand, to your career, if you lose to him? I don't see myself losing, but I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a jiu-jitsu guy. Anyway, so uh, you can't use that as the excuse. <laughs> you can't use that as the no, excuse. But no, I, if he knocks you out, I mean, he's, he's got power. Me. Stop it. He's got power. He's never finished anybody. I mean, he looks like he's a strong guy. No, he's, he's small. Got, he's got eight pack. I see yeah. him. How many people have eight? Tyson Fury is not that a guy with eight pack. He's like fat. And sure, sure, sure. Doesn't mean nothing, you know? There's no concern whatsoever. The only thing that might fuck me up, his forehead is so big, I'm going to get clear and I can't see. Have you ever seen his forehead? He wears a fucking bandana for the, his whole life. Right, Looks right, like right. your shirt kind of. Yeah. His bandana. Um, were, were you close with your father? Yeah. Well, we had a, you know, every parent have a you know, rough relationship, but uh, yeah, it, it was uh, it was tough. We actually got more along towards the end than when I was young. Was it sudden or? Yeah, pretty much. He called me and said he had a stomach ache. And uh, I was trying to get him to the hospital. He was like, oh, I don't know. I think it's just like a stomach ache. And then it was a, like stage four cancer. Shit. Yeah. And then wow. it just kind of went really fast. And then really? it went to his brain and he had surgery. And yeah, when I was, was with that? him the day. Huh? When was that? It would be like maybe one or two months ago now. Maybe more. I don't know. Oh, shit. Yeah. So it was tough. Um, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people uh, were still saying bad shit about me, which is kind of crazy. You know, that's how much people hate me. <laughs> when they heard about this? Yeah. Why this came out? Yeah, it was, I mean, I had a, I guess I'm, I was like all over, but yeah, I posted about it. Oh, okay. On my Twitter, like, rest in peace and stuff. The, the Andrew thing was fucked up too. Like, I was with him not that long before he, he what happened to him. And it's just like, so crazy because something like that can happen to me too. Sure. I don't know if you know what happened with him. Did he get stabbed? No, he got, yeah, he got shot in the head. He got shot. Over a tequila bottle. Fuck. Yeah, it's fucked up. And and what happened? Like, what, what, like, what, what were they arguing about? So apparently the guy was like, uh, jealous of him and he was outside the table yeah and uh leandro had a bunch of girls they were hanging out and the guy was just jealous so he took the bottle like that and like drank it and the the andrew took him down choked him out oh and uh like and then they got separated and the guy was like oh i'm good i'm good and then he was like pacing back and forth and just came up and shot him damn fucked up did did they find the guy like yeah he was a cop (laughs) what yeah the gun was registered when he went into the club yeah and now it's fucked up he's in like a like a prison for like cops and like no one can get to him, you know, because Andrew was like a love, so right, it's fucked up. Uh, this is I'm not trying to, but like, do you get worried about that sort of thing? Um, I can't say it has crossed my mind because I've been in so many street flights and stuff in in Manhattan. Obviously, it hasn't been publicized and a lot of things, you know, like people saying they're gonna kill me and stuff. But it doesn't really bother me because I'm pretty aware and I, I'm smart. And I but you have to myself. keep your head on a swivel. Yeah, of course. Yeah, especially when I go out drinking because sometimes you get a little bit. You just want to have fun, so usually it's, it's easier to have security, so I don't have to worry about that shit. But right, um, anywhere I go, like it's like some guy is just like grilling me or saying something, and it's just like I'm pretty good at it now. It's just like bro, just like, you know. are people trying to fight you left and right? No, because I'm, you know, I think they know I'll kick their ass, you know? Right. I mean, they, they can say what they want, but like at the end of the day, they know what's going to happen. So, but I mean, you do get a couple of drunk guys that be like, oh, it was wrestler, do some shit. Um, I don't want to say stuff as, I mean, I've gone to a lot of fights in Manhattan that haven't been out um, in the streets and stuff. You've been arrested? Nah, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> don't want to incriminate myself. <laughs> well, I mean, we know of one. A couple, yeah. Yeah. But uh, it is what it is. It, isn't there a party that just wants to go back to 2016? When you were like the the youngster, everyone liked you, cool guy, con like. I'm still, I'm, I mean, it's not like I don't know, I'm like shunned or something like a, that. Yes, you are. I would say that's fine. I don't mind as long as I'm getting paid. Doesn't matter to me who likes me or not. But who's paying you? I still get paid. You know how much I make from like Instagram and Twitter? You have no oh, idea. How much you make? I probably made more. I don't because I, I don't want to fucking have the you know well, <laughs> the you IRS just, on my ass. Well, I mean, you brought it up. You said uh, you know how much I make. Yeah, no. Even when I was during the pandemic, I made killer, killer. Doing what? Just posts and, you know, stuff like doing like... Sponsorships? Yeah, sponsorships. Who yeah. sponsors you? It was mostly just like, you know, like one-offs or stuff like that, you know? Like who? I don't know. I don't remember the names of it. It was so long ago. I'd done a bunch it of... It was not long ago. It was two years ago. Yeah, exactly. Get in the head. I get hit in the head for a living, so... So are you still making money off Instagram and Twitter? Yeah, of course. I mean, even for the fight now, it's like, you know, you post some sponsorships. But sure. uh, I always have money. I, I fucking... I save money. I'm not stupid, too. I'm not like... You know what I mean? I made a lot of money in my career. Obviously, it, it's not good when you're not fighting. Sure. Yeah, obviously, I want to keep fighting. So, I mean, but yeah. Um, Gordon said that uh, he doesn't know how you support yourself. Like, are you? Gordon's like a, just obsessed with me, dude. I know. 
Well, but like, why did he say it? Like, are are you? I mean, just, by the way, there's that, that's nothing to Gordon, be ashamed of if your family has money. No, they don't actually. But it's fine that he wants to say that because he wants to try to anything with Gordon. He just wants to try to put me down. You know, mm. so it, it's fine. I don't care. Um, everybody knows how I make my money and stuff like that. I don't need to tell him or prove anything to him. You know, I think everyone doesn't know. That's why. Okay, that's even cooler. Okay, I'm like mysterious. What you should have said was, I made so much money from the two Bellator fights, I could live. I did. Yeah, that's what I you should have said. I'm out about it forever, See, but I, I'm, I have. No, nah, yeah. Um, the thing with Gordon, too, is like, we were supposed to fight. Like, and this is, if you, you ever, MMA or, you ever had a Holes Gracie on? Uh, Hollis Gracie. Yeah, yeah, yeah a so long one time. of the things, he tells me, uh, I don't know where we were. He was like, you know why I respect you? He's like, is that time you showed up at the gym to fight him? So there was a, I think I told this story on here before. I might have. You showed up at the gym to fight Gordon? So he posted something about my mom. Gordon? Yeah, so me and my my old friend, we went to the gym and we were looking for him. And we like, we were, I was like, yo, we're going to fight. Like, it's going to happen. And he he like ran out the gym. He was so scared. It was so funny. And and uh, no, I'm serious. You can ask, uh, I don't know how you say his name, Hollis or Hollis? I think it's Hollis. Yeah, so uh, what happened was Marcel found out about it. And Marcel said, yo, listen, if you want to fight, I'm going to call John Donner here. We're going to set this up MMA. And I was like, or he said like Valley Tuda. I was like, yeah, I don't care. Fuck it. He's like, okay, eight o'clock tonight. This is all you can ask anybody in the gym, Marcel's or Henzo's. You can, and I don't think Holis or would lie to you. Um, so eight around, uh, eight o'clock came around and I saw John Donner in the gym and they were like, oh, we don't want to fight. Like, uh, we want peace. And there's a picture of Marcel and John Donner on the mats. It's a long, it's an old picture. You can probably find it. And they like wanted to make peace, and like Gordon was like saying like sorry and all this, and we never got the fight. Yeah, I, w- I was ready to go. We were gonna like do it like old school in like a circle, and like all this would have beat his ass. This would have been this would have been pre pandemic. This is when I was still Marcelo. So okay, yeah, you and Marcelo. Uh, no, no, never talked to him. Never. No. It's it's. I don't think he even teaches anymore. I think he lives in like Hawaii or some shit. But it's unf- just a relationship. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, unfixable. I don't. Know. I don't think about it anymore. I have no idea. I, I'm just trying to get at like uh, maybe like the relationships that you had back then. A lot of these people, you know, like Marcelo, Connor, yeah. like a lot of these people aren't around as much. Fine. Does that I mean, not bother you? That's not for you? me. No, I have my own friends and stuff. I mean, I talk to Connor still. I don't know why you keep saying stuff like that. Well, I mean, when's the last time? <laughs> I don't know. Who's on your necklace? The saint. Why? Because I'm religious. Are you religious? Yeah, I'm a little bit. I'm kind of dabbled. Uh, but uh, it Christianity. You. Yeah. That who gave it to you? I got it. You got it for yourself? Yeah. And then this is, I got this from Dolce Gabbana, but it's uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe, I think they say. Yeah. Uh, Happy Hanukkah, by the way. Thanks, bro. I appreciate that. No why, uh, why Why do you feel like you need that? No, it just protects you. Okay. It protects all like the, not to say bad people, but it just protects like, you know, people. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So January 14th. Yeah. KSI Boxing. Mm-hmm. Uh, y- your New Year's resolution is to... Become a better person. No, I am a good person. Not be uh, I give, I give, as disliked. I help a lot of people, dude. Have you ever talked to people that know me? How many Who things do I do? A lot of people. Like taking people out, doing stuff. Or even when I'm out, I the give so much fortunate. money. I give, dude, All ask those, anybody that my friends. Remember when you post those videos of the kids like that got bullied? Yeah. Did you ever help them out? Yeah. The, uh, which kid? You know, like the kids. I, was supposed to, I actually had a TV show signed for like Netflix or something. It was going to be like me going around and training with people that have like, disabilities and stuff. I don't know why I have that Hmm. We had like the pilot. We were supposed to film the pilot. But like, you remember when you said like, "Oh, I'll bring this guy out. I'll yeah. train him." Did you ever do that? I did once, and then the kid was just like, he did not want to train. <laughs> like he did a couple classes, and then he just wanted to like, you know how it is. He just didn't. It's hard. I can't like force him to be in the gym. Right, right. I think he was doing other stuff. He got a little bit older, and he was kind of doing stuff. And I can't like. He lives in Baltimore. I can't force right. the kid to train. Right. I, had, I got him the membership. It was all done. He has a gi. And uh, a lot of the other kids, it's hard to find them. And then, like, they don't want to train. They're just like, it's, you know, it's, it's tougher than it actually looks. And then Jake Paul kind of took my idea when he did that bullying thing. Um, that's why I don't ever, you know, come back to you, too. I feel like I'm bullying you. So, that's mm. why, you know. That's why I actually stopped. Oh, yeah. You just took my joke. I, unf- I unfollowed. You just took my and joke. And then you unfollowed. Because you, uh, you're emotional. You do, you do, how I, you're so emotional, dude. I'm so emotional. <sighs> Any other questions? What are we gonna do about you? I mean, it's it's it actually bums me out that you what went you well because you went from being this sort of darling still to now being. You ever have you ever hang out with me outside of fucking fighting? No, why would I? Because I'm saying I'm a different person. Yeah, but I don't. I actually don't. That's what I'm saying. That. I don't need any of these people to know who I am. Like I don't really give a shit. Like if some guy from fucking on Twitter says this guy's a di- like a dick bag, come and hang out with me. Like I'm not gonna be a fucking anything. You know, it's the stupidest thing ever. 
Well, I mean, but I, this all, you say that none of this bothers you, but it yeah. really does bother you. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Because yeah. you ask people to follow you. You're constantly no on social me. media. I am asking to follow me. You're just reading this shit off the fucking thing. No, you do. You ask people I to said I like to do giveaways. And that's because. I know. So clearly off, social media means something First off, to Mr. Beast does the same exact thing. Yeah. All these guys do is oh, giveaway. Okay, you have to subscribe. What does that mean? It's just fucking. Uh, it's the stupidest thing different. ever. Mr. Beast does it. You go to Aiden Ross's thing, does he it. He actually goes through with it. Yeah, I do too. You delete I, the ones this is not when, a lie. He's oh, so every you don't even follow me. Every single one. You don't even follow every, me. Trust me, we did the deep dive. Oh, you did the deep we dive? We did. We did. Yeah, how so how would you know if those? I delete it? Yeah, because we know. How would you know? Because we, I know that you're you all over my shit. It. You're fucking stalking me. I know when you. Yeah, right. Yeah, come on. I know when you post it and then you lose, you delete it. Never in my life. That's fucked up. Anybody would have called me out on it. That's a whack move. Someone would have called me out on it. So every time you, you do it, the other side It has wins. been. Look at all the ones. It That's has been. That. What a crazy Just admit coincidence. That you're obsessed with me. Obsessed with you. You Just asked me it. to come on the show. No, that's not true. You did. Dude. Do you want me to pull it out right now? Don't pull it out. I mean, you could, but what you, would you say first? Uh, What? You said, are we, are we best friends? I didn't that? ask you to come on. You said, are we I best no, friends? I'll tell you what I said. You know what? I don't lie. I, I called you I called no. you very recently. You want me to pull it up? No, I'm I'm right I, I could read it to you right now. What about now? the zone guy asking me? What about See, why are you Paradigm? Pulling out text again? What? Why are you pulling out text again? I'm like just, ex-girlfriend. Because when you lie. I'm not lying. I tell you what you said. You said, are we best buds again? I said, a reunion on set would be good. Or no, I said something like that. I, that's well, not what I said. Then within... Within literally two hours of this exchange, and I you had said the zone reach January. out. I that had actually, Paradigm reach out. That was everyone me. reaching out. The zone wanted to do it with you, but I don't think they knew that me and you were, you know, enemies. Come on, I swear. How would the zone know me Every, and you hate each other? I mean, it's pretty well publicized. Is it? I would think so. Someone, I don't know that where it was. Ten seven. I was. A, this is like before ten seven. Stop it. It was. I mean, it was. People were posting. Yeah, obviously, you're not going like, to say it was a ten eight that you got me with. Uh, if you want to say it's a ten eight, fine. I mean, there's discrepancies in judges. It's just hard because clear victory for Helwani. I mean, it wasn't even it was close. close. It's harder for me because it's say be you, like it's, I'm, I'm fighting with a handicap because everybody already hates me. So it's like you know you no. I think people are pretty. You're kind of hated too, though. Mm, I don't think so. Did yeah. you see what happened recently when a couple of people? You did call out Patty. That was fucked up. <laughs> what do you mean I called out? No, I'm saying you called him out on his bullshit. Yeah, he and, asked you and, for an interview and then and said you, you need a pay. on that exchange? I would say you did because you had the message. I oh, give you credit again. Yeah. Receipts. I mean, he, I told you, he helped me out. And now you're paying me. So that's the only yeah. reason I came today. Um, no, no, I'm happy that you came. Are you going to do, is there a lot of media? Yeah, I'm going to do a bunch of stuff. Yeah, like um, who? We do Andrew Schultz this week or next week. I was supposed to do Theo Vaughn. Um, there was another guy, Chris, the, I don't know how to say his name. He does a show with Sal from uh, Practical Jokers. He has a podcast at Staten Island. You know what he is. He's like a comedian. I don't know. I don't know how to say his last name. It's very Italian. Fighter and the Kid? I was supposed to do a... Uh, the food truck diaries but i don't know if i want to go to la you're doing food truck yeah maybe wow we had really good numbers on the first one yeah. was the was the last one when he, he yeah. you got pelted with the toilet paper you talk a big motherfucker <laughs> what? Coffee here. So what are you gonna do about that i gotta throw the coffee on you no but was that the one? <laughs> oh yeah it is see that's the difference what? you're a fighter yeah fighters shouldn't be threatening people you talk a shit to a fighter with no one here i said was that the one where you got pelted give you a freaking is, wedgie is that not true yeah but well, why you... are you saying pelted he fucking missed it was a drive-by. Stop he, it. But by the way, there's a rumor. Imagine I give you a wedgie on the fucking live TV. Yeah, imagine. Good luck. I'll give you a how, how much you weigh? Good luck. How much you weigh? Don't tell me because I will. How much you weigh? I'll give you a wedgie. How much you weigh? <laughs> right now? Yeah. It's a uh, 190s? I don't know. Nah, I weigh more. Listen. Way more. I'm fighting 170. No, I weigh more. Oh. Should we, should we try to like, do it? You, the fact that you want, you're so obsessed I'm with touching my underwear probably, is a little underwear, bit be honest, suspect. I was on it's today. a little bit suspect. I'm you're probably not wearing underwear. You know I was coming. In any event, there's a story out there, a theory that Brendan told Jake where you guys were. Uh, so which the, seems like a breach of trust. And you're still going to go on food truck? No, but I'll tell you how it went. He didn't, he, he didn't nice. tell me, but he kind of like, he was like, oh, they were fishing around on text, like asking what time and stuff like that. I just want to let you know. That's all he said to me. He was just like, I want to let you know. Like You believe? So he kind of gave me a heads up, but he didn't. He was just like, oh, these guys are asking about the address and stuff. So I just want to let you know, like they're what? like fishing, something like that. And you don't think he gave them? I would imagine he did. I don't really care. I mean, Good for his thing, right? Yeah, maybe, yeah whatever. And you would still go on? I like I like Shop to be honest with you. I don't think he's a bad guy. I mean, I know you two have beef. Even but... though, even though he he set you up. Yeah, it's all right. I I've mean, he set that. me up with like a, a guy who murdered me and a fucking guy no, throwing toilet like paper. He, like, what's Jake Paul gonna hurt? Got dunked on. Stop it. With the toilet paper, you didn't think that. I that threw was... it back. I was gonna punch the fucking. I was I had a bad knee. I was gonna punch his tail light out, but I couldn't oh, fucking Jesus, get close. That would have yeah. been bad. <laughs> the one thing that pissed me off about Shop, I'll tell you. Okay. 
because he was like, yo, if anybody does come, I got your back, this and that. And then like when the car pulls up, <laughs> I run over, he doesn't move. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this motherfucker. <laughs> so I was like, I'm by myself with like eight guys on a car. More proof that he potentially said that. Because he was, I think he was saying it in the interview. He's like, oh, anybody like, you know, I, I'm with the MMA guys against these guys. He was like, give me this whole thing. And then like they came and he didn't move from the thing. I was like, motherfucker, what the fuck? Yeah, that is whack. No, you know what's but, the crazy thing? You, you've you've done this thing for a while, but the one guy who always had your back was me. Yeah, yeah, I and never you screwed you that up. It. But then you got emotional. No, you screwed it up. You got emotional. You started you posting texts, dude. No, that was after. Come on. That was after you proved me right. Because I called you a so bitch. So is this, is this, no, it was after every time I'd post something, it'd be you and AJ Agazarm. AJ Agazarm. Uh, okay. Yes, Stop you two. Like two peas in, in a pod. Where is he now? I don't know. It's the same where, same place actually, you are. He actually has more MMA fights than you. Who cares about that? Okay, more fights, period. Okay, great. Who cares? I'm just saying, you're saying, where is he now? He's been more active. that is. How many fights do you think you'll have in 2023? Including boxing or MMA? Just fights. I'll try to do four, maybe more. You think so? Yeah, because I'll, 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 when I come back to MMA, I'm going to run through them fast. So Two you, fast submissions. You're, you're, you're going to have more fights in 2023 than your I have two more fights over Bellator, time. so. Okay. You never know what happens. Hottest free agent in the game. It's true. They're all going to come after. Yeah, I think yeah, I think it's not true. Who wouldn't want to see me fight? Either if you want to see me lose or you not even want to see me win, it's still people want to see I feel it. like there's a very strong chance you never fight for Bellator again. In what sense? Like, I'm going to just stop fighting? Like, it's just, they're just going to be like, enjoy, you know, fighting for uh, bare knuckle or some shit like that. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't want to, I can't say what can happen. If you're, if it's, it's not like they a have a CBS show interest. coming up, it's not right? a conflict they, of interest. No. I say, like, I want to. No, they're just going to tell you. Yeah, you so know, I'm not going to say what deals. my plans are or anything like that. They have a CBS show coming up. Yeah. Why wouldn't you fight on that? I would, but I have this first. I think maybe I could just do it. I don't know what date it is, but I was going to... It's February 4th. This is, I'm just saying, if they were so interested in you fighting, why did oh, they... Yeah, they, like, they, not, they don't send me every Japan. fight card and ask me to fight. I don't mm. want to fight in Japan. So you're calling Scott Coker a liar, the guy who signs your checks? No, I didn't, what did I call him by? He's the one who's like, yeah, yeah, you know, Dylan, call me, you know, no, whenever he's, you're he, ready. He says, yeah, like we offered him fights. They had Every single card they offered me a fight. I'm not saying he's lying. Try and start this little. This is what you do. There's a little. Like, he didn't. He actually has said the opposite. He has said, "That's not true." Dylan, call us. There's a bunch of interviews. You saw the last one. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I'm the fucking golden cow. They know that. But you don't fight for him. I do fight for him. I'm still signed to him. I know, but you haven't fought since I was 2019. Fucking hurt. I just told you the whole story. Two and a half years. We're I told no. you, you don't know injury. Three and a half years. You never Holy shit. 2022. You're scared to fucking box a schmo or go jujitsu with the schmo. Three and a half it. years. You're hiding behind the desk. What hiding behind? This is you. I can say the same about you. That's not true. Anyway, this has been a well, great chat. Bubbleheads. I've really enjoyed this chat. Do you think get we have a picture a of me and you up here now? Yeah, I think it would be nice. It would, Where right? do you think I should put it? I don't know. We'll get one. <laughs> Which picture do we have together? I don't know. There was the one time. Where can you fit me? Maybe over here in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I was playing really good. So we just changed the whole background. I thought that was real when I watched that. Yeah, I know. There's a car parked right there. Yeah. Mistake on our end. This is good. I mean, this is like a little bit hostile, but it wasn't like crazy. You enjoyed it? Yeah, it was alright. Yeah, we talk a lot of shit. Thought Should it was give you a swirly, but you know it's fine. Thought it was a bit, you know, if I'm being honest, a bit of a bitch move not to shake the hand. At I'll the shake beginning. it after. I, you you apologize for everything, so it's fine. When did I apologize? In the middle. Mm. Yeah. Joe, did I apologize? With your eyes? No. Yeah. Joe says no. You With my eyes. Your eyes. Yeah. By the way, You're so submissive. You know, there's you? two. Okay, you're like, you know, there's two people. Only two kinds of people wear sunglasses indoors. Okay, let's hear it. Blind people and fucking assholes. You're wearing glasses indoors. Sunglasses. Same shit. You got no. <laughs> you got no vision. What are it's we worse. doing here? What are we doing? That's worse. What are we done here, Dylan? Uh, January fourteenth on the zone. Is it? Who called you for it? Was it MGF? What? MGF. Uh, no, I saw he called you for it. That's such a watches all the content. No, no, no I, I like MGF. It's unbelievable. That's my favorite wrestler right now. Yeah, I bet he is. No, he is. I swear. Um, fellow I think he's Jew. Huh? Fellow Jew. Is he? Yeah. What do you mean, is he? Favorite wrestler, and you don't know he's Jewish. He talks about being Jewish all the time. I'm just saying. Is this a pay per view? Yes. In, in the sense that they're going to have to pay us to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Who is going to watch this? You. Who's going to order this? You. You're going to be sitting at home. You're going to be like, oh, I'm going to watch it. Frank, what's the line? I don't want to say anything jokes with you because you just start crying. Frank, what's the I'm line kidding. of this fight actually happening? What did GC say at the beginning of the show? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Frank says yes. G I'll pay for it. Thank wow. you, see? See? So you can go to his see, house. We're, you guys we're, we're not all night. bad. No, GC, what did we say? Plus 10,000? I don't know if you... You could... said plus 10,000. Yeah, I did say plus 10,000. Who do you think is going to win? Um, Careful. If the fight happens? Yeah. No, if it doesn't happen, who's going to win? Well, I'm trying Obviously. to just put the caveat. 
Uh, well, well, you keep ca- saying that. I You're think supposed to be fucking hyping up the fight. You're supposed to be a journalist. You're just like against me. No, I'm not against you. Yeah, you are. I just have my doubts at this fight. Why? You didn't have show I ever pulled out a fight? You didn't show up to the press conference. Yeah, because bo- fuck them. You would think that you would want to sell the fight. It's now the, sold. I'll say this. I sold I'll already. say this. I'll say this. What? The fact that you're, you're not here, going sold it. It was the only article that was all over the, the place. Fact that that you're here, go. The fact that you're here tells me that, okay, like I believe it a little bit more. I'll give you that. Okay. The fact that you came. Can you tell me that wasn't the biggest article? What was it? Dylan Dan doesn't show up to the press conference. They actually so sold more that was than like me a, being on Zoom. That was like a form of, of promotion. By the way, that picture that you had with the two belts. Yeah. Did you take that in your apartment or what? Where did you take that? That's from me holding the belts. Where? No one ever took them off me. Which belts? That's the two belts or belts I got. Which ones? For my two fights. Come on. Yeah. Undefeated, they undisputed. You, they gave you participation trophies over there? No, those are all world champions. Those belts are worth as much yeah, as well, Jake's... Uh, What's his belt? Jake's, uh, they, uh, those belts, this belt might be worth more than that. 45 years old, you got fucking action figures on your desk. Yeah, not quite 45. I don't know, you, look, you like to embellish the... You look uh, a little bit 45. Do I? Yeah. You think, yeah, you're trying to think, you think I look worse than you right now? That's not going to good comeback. It took yeah. you too long. You had the same shirt on when the last time I was on. No, this is a new shirt. It's the same shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the mullet is good. You it's like a good it? look. I like the mullet. Legend? It's too bad that we didn't get the uh, the eyes. I wanted to see the you eyes. See I appreciate that you wore the NWO hat in, in tribute. I asked you who your favorite the nose was. world order, uh, Bret Hart. Oh, of course. Yeah. Why, of course? Never Shawn Michaels. No, Canadian legend. Yeah, no, but Shawn Michaels. Um, I accept your apology for all the no, texts. The incessant text. The, 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 okay, we'll say it at the same time. Okay. Deal? We'll shake a hand. Three, two. No, I don't trust you, you <laughs> fucker. <laughs> uh, I wish you the best, man. Uh, I wish you the it. best. This was fun. You think we should hug? No, I don't want, I, I'm a German. I might folk. give you a wedgie. Um, I'm about use of those, though. For sure. Me- remember, remember MSG? When? When you rocked up to me with three guys. Dude, and they you all, hid behind they were, security. They were all like this. Like, you hid behind security. Yeah, you know, the best part, he was like this on his phone, and, and he saw me coming, Looking and then he went behind the security, and you're like, no, oh, please and get him away from me, he's going to hurt me. Can I just say, legit, what? try to be a better person. I'm a good person. You the world about? needs positivity. Okay. The world you're, needs... You're negative. I'm negative. You do talk shit about a lot of people, too, so... Name one. Dana, Patty, uh, who else are you talking shit about? Again, receipts. I'll get receipts. I just don't have... I'm not, like, on the laptop like you are. You have all that shit on your phone. No, I'm there. saying I only respond when they hit first. 99.9999999999% of the fighters in this game know what I'm about. They have my back. How many have your back? Your lot, peers, actually. your colleagues, no, how about the guy, your peers. There was one fighter how that was like, I'm back? not doing an aerial interview because he posts texts. Real men don't post texts. Yeah, that was, that was Ali pretending to be a Giga Chikaze. I remember okay, everything. Okay, but that's still a fight. That's Ali. <laughs> I don't even know you that You know how Ali. low things are for Ali you when you have back? Ali having your back? Why would Ali have my back? That makes no sense. Two peas in a pod. Birds of a feather. You know what I'm don't talking about? Don't compare me to him. him that, that, that's, that's what happened. No, that, I don't know if he fucking... He hitting know. me on the side being like, brother, I'd love to be on your show. And then all of a sudden... Why would Ali have my back out of all people when we because, fucking hit each other? Because uh, enemy of my enemy is my uh, enemy. You know what I'm talking about? I guess. Well, I, I'm his enemy too. Fuck him. I don't mm, like yeah. him at all. Listen. What? Try to be a better person. You too. I'm, well, me too. Yeah. It would me too. Dude, You're sensitive. You gotta you stop are. being sensitive and then get mad at everybody when they talk By the way, shit. Well, sensitive talk is shit not first? a bad thing. I was just talking to Jared Cannonier about crying. He said that that's actually a good thing to cry. He said it's actually a, a what makes sign. Him the freaking yeah, because he's fucking kill a gorilla. That's what. He just be... Sean See, there you go. Dick. It's true. Why do you have to so be so boring? You you realize though that it it annoys fighters when you talk shit about them when you don't fight. It's one thing I do fight. fight. I just fought fucking twenty times in the street. Okay. What are you talking about? I fight every day. So, so Anthony Taylor won, Dan is zero. Stop it. He, we'll see. That would be, by the way, that would be a big fight. Stop it. He's you don't always, think so? He's like five and eight or something like that. Stop. He's not even close to anywhere in the realm of anybody knows. You think he goes out and someone's like, oh, it's The Anthony last Taylor. televised fight you had was in the parking lot of a Holiday Inn in Austin, Texas. When was the last time you had a fight? I'm not a fighter. Exactly. But you but talk you like one. You are a fighter. You talk like one. You are a fighter. Anyway. You're a journalist. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you can't be calling so I talk about and shit fighters. like that. You t- no, not, sh- you- not shaking someone's hand. Yeah, because of all the Whack. shit you said. So I said, wait, we'll, uh, once we have a good conversation, then we'll fuck Was it a good tail. conversation? I mean, it was good. You're not crying, so it was good. You had a good back and forth, you know? I mean, you could take it. Yes. That's one thing you got to work on. So if you tell me to work on something, you got to work okay, on Okay, I'll take the criticism. Gotta, what, what, what should I take? When you talk shit to people and you do all this stuff, you got to be able to take it back. Yeah. One thing about me, I tell you, I say a bunch of shit about people, and when people talk about me, I don't, I take it. Yeah, you, you gotta roll with the punches. I yeah. roll with the punches. I might give some back. Yeah. I don't see me crying and me hurting. When's the last time you saw me cry? 
When? When you fucking called me and FaceTime. Right, what? right. See, that's <laughs> like, it. dude, that's so fucked I don't, up. I don't, I don't respect liars. That's the thing. You did. I have you the message. So, I'm going to find go, it. Go right now. This is my new phone. Hold I'm, up. I have oh, an old phone. Such a, such I swear, you're like, dude, come on, my boy. Oh, my God. Dude, I anyway, have proof. You you went to John Kavanaugh. You complained to him. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's... I really don't. You almost ruined my relationship with John Kavanaugh. Nah, that wouldn't... After yeah. what? I mean, that was fucked up that you... Went yeah. after you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that. I've, I've helped you before with that stuff, yeah. so stop it. With Can't what say stuff? It happened. What stuff? With you and that whole relationship and stuff like that. With Kavanaugh? No, not with Kavanaugh. Just in the past, I'm saying we don't have to talk about. I don't. What's like you. I don't Go pull ahead. Pull out receipts. Go. I'm saying, but I always had your back. You know Go that. Go ahead. Pull it out. I'm saying I always had your back. Go ahead. Throughout the years, I don't know what you're talking it's about. It's not a bad thing. Help me out. With what? Other than coming on the show, which helped you out? No, you're talking about when you stayed in the hotel. Waited thirty hours and I helped you. I, wait, I waited six hours. Yeah, what okay, did you I'm help? just saying. I'm just saying. We always helped each other, and then you fucking came at me for no reason. No, well, call me a bitch. That's such a fucking little insult that you got sensitive know, about. You hit, it, here's the thing. So you when, when Dana like calls you way worse than me, do you cry? No, I didn't cry then. I, I hit him back like I hit you back. It was great. It wasn't bad. I didn't see the Dana. Oh, I didn't. I don't know. Yeah, you that's did. a tough one. Anyway, the Patty uh, one. We I have like to go. Patty. He's a fucking loser. So all right, fine. I hope you get to fight him. Oh, it'd be easy. I don't. I'm so young. Yeah, like I'm not. I'm not, okay. How old are you? Twenty nine. I'm in my prime yet. Okay. When do you hit your prime? Thirty one. Thirty two. So, f so to recap, four fights in twenty twenty three. Uh sure, I'm not going anywhere. I haven't fought three years. I'm still the biggest. You got time so to, to to you got to. Why are you against me? It's like you don't want me to. See, you don't want to see I'm, me. I'm with recapping these big what you said. So you don't want to see me with these big fights? I didn't say that. I want to see you fight. Okay. I, I've been injured. By the way, what do you want me to fucking get, get my knee and fucking long push ass, it back in? It's a long ass time off. Two fucking knee uh, surgeries, major knee surgeries. That one failed. How long was Dominic Cruz out? He had not even close to what I had. Right. How Dominic long was he out? UFC champion. Okay, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about someone being hurt. Like he's right. dealt with that and he didn't have, my knee was fully reconstructed. He also wasn't insulting people throughout the entire time. So that feels, there's like a, you there's insult like a people, want. You there's like so a want. It's, oh, it's yeah, like the same thing. Uh, You're a journalist. Uh, all right. I, mean, I feel like I'm losing all my viewers here. We're just going in circles. Oh, no, they love it. Trust me, because I'm putting you in your place. Two th what putting me in my place? Gosh. Stop uh, it. By the way, it's a sad state of affairs when you're trying to pick a fight with a journalist. I'm not picking a fight yes, with you. Yes, you are. That's, you said, let's spar said for a million dollars. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's you do talk that. A big game, so it was, uh, you've been in this we sport longer than I have. When I was growing up, I used to watch you on the fucking I know. shit. So yeah, what, so you, you tell me you never had a which fight. Which picture did you have of me on your wall again, you said? You said you had a picture of me. It was the one of you and OJ. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was, it, did you, it was it the one that you asked me to sign outside the hotel oh, yeah. in Dublin? It was a picture of your nose. In the yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm not, I can't you, go too hard on you because no. you're just like getting emotional. No, I know. I remember the first before. time you came up and you're like, man, I used to watch you when I was in high school. Uh, yeah, I, I did. Cut from class yeah. and stuff like that. And I will admit it. honor for me. You switched And I was like, and your name is Dylan? No, come on, stop it. Good luck, January 14th. This was good. I think we sold I think this is good. three pay-per-views. <laughs> <laughs> Here, motherfucker. Joe's going to walk you out. Are we going to shake hands or not? Nah. Right. I mean, if you want to, I can, but... No, you can't pull back because you're the one who went first, so... Yeah, fine. If, if, if you want that to be your big victory, go ahead. I'm not... I'm but saying I said... Don't forget... To, don't forget... To talk first. Don't forget who had your back during all this shit, and you turned your back on the one guy who always had your back. Stop it. That's the same thing for you. What? Yeah. I I don't need your support. That's you true. need mine. That's, That's the true. difference. No, it isn't. When you have the fucking uh... We beg to differ. We beg to differ. No oh, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> um have a good one, buddy. Take care, man. There he is, Dylan Dennis, January 14th, KSI DAZone. It was a three finger handshake, so it doesn't technically count. <laughs> <laughs> uh you gotta love it. Does anyone have a shower? You'll be fine. Can I take a shower? Oh, he said that was good. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, need to douse myself. Mm. He took both belts and took a photo. All right, well, I hope you all enjoyed that. Oh, it was great. I actually tried. That's the thing. Like, I do believe deep, 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 deep down inside. I do believe that uh, that there's a good person down there. Yeah, he likes you. Yeah. Well, I don't really care about that. I'm not trying to say that. I guess I see what you're saying. Yeah. Just saying. It would be nice. Um, tried to threaten me with the coffee cup. By the way, <clears throat> thanks a lot, guys, for having my back on the uh, the plus ten thousand. I was supposed to say like oh, plus fifty thousand, you know. Yeah, sorry, I've we... believed in him this entire time. Yeah, you have.
By the way, uh, thanks for letting him walk in with a, a coffee cup. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> um, anyway, I look forward to hearing from the people at DAZN. Do you think that they're going to pay us to watch it? <laughs> That's... <laughs> Do we have a uh, something else we should go on to? Mm. I'll pay for that pay per view. I'll watch that. Fight. You're gonna I'm, pay for it? Yeah, I'm gonna watch it, and I'm gonna bet on Dylan Dennis. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of team Dylan right now. There were a couple. There were a couple pot shots that got traded, and like when he was going at you, Frank was like, "Let's go, nice." Is are, is he holding you guys hostage back there? This is the thing I talk about all I the time. Right no loyalty whatsoever. He uh, he did say something. Frank was like, "Nice." What did he say? I can't remember now. Okay, now Connor's just stirring the pot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. No, what it was... Sad state of affairs when my own guys... When he was saying that, that you to... were crying, and you're like, when did I cry? I said under my breath, like, he means it figuratively. And then Connor was like, man, you're on Team Dylan right now, aren't you? He's like, yeah, man. <laughs> I was just wrapped up in the theater. You were wrapped up in the theater. It was great stuff. The thing about people like Dylan and uh, you know the, the the same five guys is that they use the same five insults. They don't have anything else. They don't have anything else to say, but it's the same five insults over right. and, and the over. lies. That's the one thing it seems that well, yeah, people I mean, do like they just fabricate stuff, right? But you know you're uh, gonna take the high road, which is re- what you should do. I don't even know if I took the high road in that one, to be honest. <laughs> it was funny really when you missed called out on a, I missed out on a chance to tweet a screenshot of your tweet where it's like, "We do not deserve this theater." That was <laughs> that was this interview. That was the interview. <laughs> the one he did for the World Cup. Yeah. One um, thing that I do have to say though, please. there was a the picture of him and Paulo. He's wearing an Apex Twin T-shirt. And I started geeking out. I was like, that's so cool. So when I saw him, I was like, oh, I thought you'd wear the Aphex Twin t-shirt. He's like, what is that? And I'm like, my, my heart got broken a little bit. What, what is an Aphex? Aphex Twin is an artist from England, and he was wearing the shirt, but he didn't know who it was. So it just... Poser? I'm not going to go that far. It's still a cool shirt regardless, you know? Maybe he picked it for its design aesthetic, but it had more meaning. All right. Um... Let me answer the rest of the questions here. We need to move on. We, but need we to... should probably read first. Oh yeah, we need a we need a um... palate cleanser. Yeah, we need a palate cleanser, Frank. Uh, first, a quick word from our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. They are the place to go when betting on the NFL this holiday season. New customers can bet just five dollars on any NFL team to win their game and get a hundred and fifty dollars in free bets if they do. Plus, everyone can earn up to hundred percent boost with DraftKings. Stepped up same game parlays. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code the MMA Hour. Place a five dollar bet on any NFL team to win their game and get hundred and fifty dollars in free bets if they do. That's code the MMA Hour only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Twenty one and older in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com/sportsbook for details and state specific responsible gambling resources. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler in New York. Call eight seven seven eight Hope and Y. Or text Hope and Y four six seven three six nine. Bonus issued as free bets. One boost per eligible game. Opt in required. Ten plus leg required for hundred percent boost. Deposit parlay and wagering restrictions apply. Eligibility and terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms. All right, let's go back to the questions here. Um, where did I stop? Abay. Hello, Ariel. Merry Christmas, my friend. Simple one from me. Thumbs up or down on which of my fantasy matchups you can see happening in 2023. Jones and Ganu, I'll say up. Connor Masvidal, I'll say down. Shevchenko Nunez, I'll say up. Shevchenko Wei Li, I'll say down. Um, KSI Danis, just joking. That wasn't on the list. Uh, AJ Usman. Down. Pico Pitbull down. Taporia or McKinney versus Patty. I'll say McKinney up. Taporia down. Hamzat Colby. I'll say up. Hamzat Bow down. Hamzat Pereira down. P.S. Congrats on the recent award. 13th in a row. Not bad for a content creator. Thank you and the crew for bringing fun and great bands to my week. Love being a part of this community. Much love your boy, Abay. I forgot about something. I don't know where those gross hands have been. You're right there. <laughs> it's bothering me. 
need to open this shit. The something about the is the pump not working? No, it's not working. Something about the sunglasses and the uh, the mullet. That hand rubbing is and the seventeen-year-old beard. It's all very. The ASMR with the hand rubbing is cooties. You like that? Um, Glasgow Gav. Merry Christmas. Absolutely love the show and the fact that you're back at the MMA Hour. ESPN is only the worldwide leader in the States and four letters to the rest of us, so you were sorely missed. But listening to you guys compare the World Cup final in any fashion to some regional fixtures, most folks outside of the United States wouldn't even know happened or what sport they took place in. Almost led to my phone being bounced off a wall and then eventually to this page to rant. Can you imagine four Aussies and New Zealanders comparing the tense final of some rugby season between the yellow Cavs and black Jets to the World Cup final? Behave yourselves. Uh, well, first of all, we are Americans, and so we were putting it into the proper context. And to compare Australia to the United States and to compare rugby in Australia to the NBA or the NFL is ludicrous. So you behave yourself. Uh, question, have you ever been invited to the Joe Rogan experience? No. Either way, would you go if you were? Sure. I don't know. Fly into Austin? Sure. I mean, I have no issue really with going on. Um, but I haven't been invited. And I, like, what is it going to be? Is it going to be him uh, asking me a million questions on you know, Dana White? Probably not. It won't happen because of his relationship with Dana. But uh, would I go... Would I be open to going on his show if invited? Sure. And if not answered by the above, do you think he'd rather not deal with the earache of Dana by having you on? Um, keep up the good work and have a belt over Christmas. Yeah, it's because of Dana. Big money. Hi, Ariel. As a beginner at my local boxing gym, I've been enjoying learning a new skill slash sport while getting some great workouts and building confidence. Just wondering how your boxing skills have been developing. Ah, yes. Uh, and what sort of workouts you do each week? Heavy bag, pad, mitt work, shadow boxing, cardio. What is your favorite punch or combo to throw? Classic one, two, uppercut, overhand, right? Helwani hook. Um, I go to a trainer twice a week and we, you know, mainly mitts and just do combination. I'm, I, I, I'm not a fighter. I am not a fighter. I'm just a 40-year-old guy who's trying to stay in shape as best as possible and release some stress. That's it. The fact that he keeps wanting to fight me would show like who's the actual you know, quote unquote, draw in all of this. I don't want to fight him. I don't even want to have him on the show, but I did because I thought it would be, you know, fun theater. And again, I don't hold a grudge to that point where I'm like, oh, you know, screw this guy. I pretty much keep the door open for anyone um, because I'm a content creator and that's what content creators do. But they're the ones who asked me to have him on. Did you notice that every time he pulled out his phone, he's like, oh, I can show you right now. And then he never actually showed anything. I did notice that. Yeah. That was my favorite part. He got a new phone. He got a new phone. I've gotten a new phone a gazillion times. All your stuff gets crossed over. This is in 2004. Uh, also, just want to say thanks for another year of fabulous MMA Hour content and legendary moments. I hope you, the boys and gals in the back, have a great holiday break. I will all be looking forward to more shows in 2023. In the meantime, go Bills. AFC number one, here we come. Right, Frank? Yeah, right. I think we've learned a lot about Frank on today's show. Confirmation. Go Bills. He ain't that guy. Uh, Connor from Canada. Hey, Ariel, could we each get, could we get each of the crew's personal highlight of 2022 from the show? Mine was the story about Frank touching GC's leg and apologizing for a betting loss. P.S. I would throw the Bills versus Chiefs playoff game from last year into the mix of greatest sporting events I've ever seen. Thanks, Connor. Yeah. Um, but again, regular season game. Can't compare the stakes. Personal highlight. Well, the leg touching thing was not on the show, but I guess that could be a highlight for you. For me, man, I don't know. What was one of the highlights? We've had a lot. Francis coming on at the beginning of the year was a big one after the win. Um, Volk coming on after the win and doing cooking with Volk, that was a big one. Uh, Action in studio was cool. Schultz in studio was cool. Um, the Nate episode was cool, obviously. You guys got anything? The Dylan Dennis episode, yeah. that was a big one. The haircut for me. The haircut was big, oh, yeah. Yep. The haircut was fantastic. Cooking with Volk was fantastic. Pretty much any time someone came in studio, uh, it was definitely a highlight. Those days are always 
MJF. Much, much crazier. Yeah, MJF. All of us going to AEW is cool. Hmm. Uh, that, that was a pretty cool experience. That was great. Tyson Fury. Yeah, you mentioned Francis Ngannou. Uh, Tyson Fury. No, Tyson Fury was last year. Unless you're talking about the recent one. Oh, geez. Wow, that was last year. Losing track of time here. I mean, at least you're talking about the recent one. No, I'm talking about like the more, uh. more iconic one. Um. Yeah. Wow, I never really stopped oh. to reflect on the year. It was pretty cool. Yeah, thanks, Frank. Um, very insincere. Leon after the win, pretty damn big. Uh, that that might be the highlight. Yeah, we had Izzy after the loss. Yep. The CKB episode. I mean, it's been quite the year, guys. It's crazy, yeah. There's a lot that's happened. Um, not to pat ourselves on the back. Would have been easier just to pick the show that we didn't like. Yeah. This one. Um, yeah, you really do seem genuinely disgusted after that. Yeah, like. Can I tell you? Dumpy dumpy. Can I tell you what I feel? Yeah, please. I feel I feel betrayed by my friends. We come back on and I feel like you guys have, uh, you've changed allegiances. I feel like once again, you have shown your true colors. The only one that has my back back there is Andy. Andy was actually the ringleader. I got oh, you. Oh, wow. See, there she is. That's what I feel. And and I also feel like I have like, I feel like my hands are on fire right now. I feel like there's like. Should we go to like, a commercial break? We come back and it's like, oh, I thought that was a great, uh, that was a great zinger. Which one? Oh, um, uh, wait, this is our voices was, now. I, I didn't oh, know. Yeah, that's that's how I feel right now. Oh, what is uh, what are the odds? Oh, he's gonna show up. I'm like, oh, great. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the banter, guys. Well, I can't talk on the microphone. That was uh, yeah, that was a big issue. Mm. Why don't you fix that, Frank? Um, I'll get on it with the uh, two dollars that I gave you for my uh, soup Venmo. <laughs> well, the extra two dollars on top of the eight, Rick. Yeah. What'd you think of the Dennis interview? Is Rick here? Yeah, oh, wow. It's been here the whole time. Hi guys. Surely Rick has my back. I, I'm missing all the context here, but I've always got your back. You see? So what are we talking about? That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Ride or die, without a question, has my back. There's, he doesn't even have auto. to know. That's the I difference. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but auto. That's the See? Auto retweet, like he says. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I thought the Dennis interview was great. Yeah, it was I good. Mean, look, that's what we came for, right? That's what you came for. Um... I hit him with a couple of one twos there, and then I was like, "Fuck, I feel bad." So let me just try to get to the coin. Then, well, then he mentioned his dad. I mean, it like, got Fuck. it got heavy there. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah. Like, what am I supposed to do when after that? You're trying to do that, and it gets heavy there. What am I supposed to do? Um, moderator Lewis asks, "Hello, holiday greetings and merriment to best crew in the business." Wow, so classy. Moderator Lewis has my back. I thought I'd play back lineups from end of year shows past an MMA hour Christmas Carol, if you will. What a legend. Would love the team to weigh in on the lineups. Ariel, do share any anecdotes or memories from booking the shows or end of the year shows themselves. Uh, 2021. Kayla Harrison, Ryan Hall, Corey Sanhagen, Katie Taylor, Kevin Lee, Dustin Poirier. I can tell you something about this show. This show was supposed to be a Nate Diaz special. It was supposed to be just Nate Diaz. And then you know, I don't need to tell you guys, but there's a lot of stops and starts with the Nate Diaz interviews. Uh, so at the last second, I had to scramble and we came up with Kayla Harrison, Ryan Hall, Corey Sanhagen, Katie Taylor, Kevin Lee, Dustin Poirier. This was Dustin a couple of days after the loss. And this was Katie Taylor, um, you know, my first interview with her, which is a really big deal. So love that one. 2020, Yoel Romero, Brandon Moreno, Kevin Holland, Anthony Pettis, uh, I believe Yoel, if memory serves me correct, had just announced that he had signed with Bellator. This was the Helwani show on ESPN. Holland had a great year. Moreno had the draw. 2019, Chase Hooper, Jeff Neal, Leon Edwards, Jessica I, Kayla Harrison, Stephen Thompson, in studio, Megan Anderson, in studio, Uriah Faber. I don't really remember that one. Rick, do you remember your eye Faber in studio? It's just not even ringing remotely about, <laughs> which is crazy. This is 2019. Uh... Oh, sorry. Steven Thompson in studio. It's when we gave him the NMF title. Ah, yes. And then Megan Anderson. That was a heavy one. Your eye Faber wasn't in studio. Okay, wow. Look at me guess. Okay, 2018. Look at the guess. 
Edson Barbosa, Kevin Lee, Jessica Rose Clark, Ally Quinta, Colby Covington, Alima Lee McFarland, Michael Chandler, Dominic Cruz, Vitor Belfort. 2017, look at these guests. This is the two, this is the lineup for 2017, 2017 to, to, to all those who think that we are Johnny Come Lately's. I know there's no one out there that thinks that. Randy Couture, Eric Sanders, Stevie Ray, Aljamain Sterling, Justin Gaethje, Kamaro Usman, Josh Emmett, Yoel Romero, Darren Till, Jeremy Stevens, Aaron Chalmers, Pietro Menga, Rafael Dos Anjos. Is this all on one show? Yes. Wow. <laughs> this was pretty <laughs> common. One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Amazing. Another year in the books. Light you work. guys are a weekly joy to watch and listen. Thank you to all those who have submitted questions. It's been a se fun seven months overseeing everyone's favorite segment. Here's to 2023. Uh, Moderator Lewis has been an incredible addition to the show. Does MVP. it out of the kindness of his heart. Um, filtering through so that we're not just like looking for good ones. And doesn't just pick like the best 21. Actually has a theme. There's an arc. There's a beginning, a middle, and end. It's all great stuff. It's all great stuff. I really... Uh, I really appreciate him a lot. That's, by the way, Monterey Lewis, that's someone who has my back. Thick and thin. We all have your back. No, not you. Uh, no soup for you. Okay, lads. Scariest single moment of your lives. Ariel, not the time you thought you lost your son. Go no soup for you. Um, I mean, that was, as I was reading that, how could I not pick that? That was the scariest moment of my life when I thought I lost my son. It was a horrible, horrible moment. I get weird tingly feelings inside when I think about it. Um, I don't know. Anything come to mind for you guys? When I was in high school, I was in a pretty terrible car crash. That was pretty oh, freaky. Shit. How bad was it? Pretty bad. Car was totaled. Airbags deployed on, on all sides. Injuries? Luckily, no. Uh. But I was driving and I was I was in the first year having my license. Oh, my no. friends were in the car and like the one kid that had to go to the hospital, he ended up being all right. It was like one of my best friends. I felt super guilty. Uh yeah, it was a pretty terrifying moment. That's probably the first one that comes to mind. Yeah. What about you, Frank? Um I was given a raw habanero pepper when I was like twelve. This is the scariest moment of your life? Oh, because I ate it and I had no idea that it was going to be that intense. Um, it's pretty scary. Wow. Rick, what about you? Totaled the car as well. So we're, we're not doing great back here on the... Oh, I remember that one. That was recently. Well, sort of recently. It was, uh, it was the night of 217 or the one after that. One of the MSG shows. I forget which one. Didn't but, you? Uh, did you fall asleep? Car. No. What happened was me and a cabbie kind of were riding the middle between two lanes and bumped each other. It was late, but I, I didn't know. That's right. What happened. I, I will admit there have been a couple of times where I've dozed off and that's been pretty scary, but luckily. Dozed off came to the out car. There. What's up? Dozed off and like came to in the car. Dozed off, yeah, like uh, a couple of times when I was doing the ESPN shows. And like caught yourself. That is yeah, terrifying. It's terrifying. Terrifying. Because I was driving back at night and after the show, I'm tired as is. And you see the beast of these shows and I'm having to drive back two and a half hours and it was winter time. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. Um, that I do not recommend that. Very stupid. Very stupid. Very stupid. Very, 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 very stupid. Uh, but do number not one. drive while tired. Ever. Yes, ever, ever. Just, just pull. It's, uh, it's not worth it. McKinney, Ariel, my man, how's things? Can't believe... We're at the last on the nose of the year. This segment in particular became a staple of my gym listening every week, and I'm forever grateful for all you and the team do. As we close out the year, I'd love to ask you a few questions about some of the highlights of the year. Sure. I know you're too modest and won't say who's your least favorite interview was uh, of the year. Cough, Tony Khan, cough. But instead, I'd like to ask, who is your favorite guest via video link? You know, I feel weird about the favorite guest stuff because they're all great, and I don't want to put anyone down. I do remember the Francis interview feeling very significant. Um, and that was back in January, right after, like the Monday after his win over Surreal Gun. But I can't, I don't know. Do I, I, does anyone have a favorite guest on Zoom? Favorite in-studio guest? We've had a lot. 
Um, <clears throat> if anyone wants to chime in, JRC for JRC is great. Yeah, I know you're a big fan. In, um, in studio, uh, MJF was pretty good. MJF was great. Yeah, Paulo for in studio. Paulo oh, in yeah, studio. Paolo was yeah, fantastic. it was the same day as MJF. Yeah, and and action. That's insane. That was a crazy day. Um, Izzy in studio after the loss was pretty damn special. Cheeto in studio? No, that was last year after MSG. What was your favorite guest on your personal channel? Um, I will give you an update, by the way, on the personal channel very soon. There is an update on that. Favorite guest? Golly, there's been a lot. Uh, Brooke Burke, that was a big one. Emma Lovewell, that was a fun one. Um, had action on there, too. Oh, Charles Oakley, that was a fun one. Kelly Slater was late last year. Daniel Ricardo was last year. MJF on that one was great. The first one with MJF back in March. Who do you look forward to speaking the most to the most in 2023? Oh, man, I don't know. I got some interesting things. There's a few things in the oven for 23, but I don't want to talk about them right now. But uh, let's see. Oh, Triple H was great. That was with BT, but that was a great one. Um, the sit down. So yeah, I don't know. Thanks again uh, to you and all the team from Derry, Ireland. And as always, massive respect to GC for immortalizing our brand storefront sticker on his wall and always repping the merch. Do you do that? Yeah, I rep storefront. Nice. They sent me a few shirts. Great brand. Warheart MMA. You have control over bringing the Expos back to Montreal, but this meant the Bills had to trade away Josh Allen to the Patriots. Everyone would be aware that it was you that made this happen. Do you do it, hometown hero or Bills Mafia? Golly, that's a tough one. Feels like a very selfish thing to do, right? because I would be upsetting all the great people of Buffalo and Bills fans worldwide. I would love to bring back... Be, what's that? You'd be bringing joy. You'd be bringing joy... To Montreal? Well. To Montreal. I feel oh. like these people are trying to trap you, by the way. These last couple have been... I know. <laughs> have been pretty dicey. They're like, play favorites. Yeah. Like, shun well. the Bills franchise in, in, you know, in support of the, the Expos. This is, this is rough here. I can't do that. I just can't do that. Um, Newman, hello, Ariel. I don't have a question today. Instead, I'd like to say happy holidays to you and your family and to the entire MMA Hour team as well. Thank you for all the great content you have created this year. Also, I have breaking news, Frank. My wife is pregnant with our first child and we are expecting a baby boy in June of 2023. I look forward to introducing him to the crazy world of MMA when he's old enough. Great job, Newman. Way to go, bud. Mazel tov. That is great news. Okay, just a couple more here. Two to be exact. Happy holidays, Ariel. As a new COVID UFC fan, you have not only been my go-to source for all info and entertainment, but also someone I look up to in the media industry. I'm a fellow Newhouse and WJPZ alumnus and actually attended a Zoom call you had during my junior year. I really connected with your experience at Syracuse and the trail you blazed for yourself. With that being said, was there ever a point where you thought you might not be able to make it, i.e. provide for your family and considered moving to a safer spot in media? If so, how'd you get through it? I admire your ambition, but the idea of taking a big risk can be daunting. Would you have any advice for someone considering betting on themselves like you have? Thanks again for everything you do and hope you and the crew have a blessed holiday season with families and friends. P.S. Is the fan making it to the Syracuse Pinstripe Bowl appearance? Thanks, Noah. No, we're not. When is that game? That could be a fun thing to go to. I'm not sure we'll be here. When yeah, is soon. Yankee, Yankee Stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pinstripe Bowl 2022. When is it? Uh, here it is. December 29th. I'm not here. Um, Golden Gophers. Big. Does Syracuse always play in the Pinstripe Bowl? I feel like they're often in the Pinstripe Bowl. No, it's, it's an no. ACC Bowl. All right. As for the question, um, man, uh, yeah, of course. I would say when I... Well, it's different when you have a family and it's different where you have people that rely on you and that you feel like you have to support them and they depend on you. Um, the stakes are different, right? The pressure is different. 
uh, the first time that I truly felt it. Well, there's a couple times. I mean, there's been there's been setbacks galore. It's 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 never been easy. When I when I graduated from Syracuse, I got a visa to work for a year in in TV, and I got a job at HBO. And um, when the year was up, they told me they were going to keep me around. They were very happy I was working in production. But then HR said, "We can't keep you around." Uh, they said that you know. We're, we're, we're not going to sponsor someone who's so low level. Um, and that was heartbreaking. And uh, I had to leave. And then I went around and talked to other people, a bunch of different companies. Um, I even had an interview with WWE to work on their website, just as like a, a producer or writer. I wasn't doing anything in the public eye. But no one wanted to sponsor me. And so at that point, I thought maybe, you know, the dream would end. Uh, and then I got a job and someone to sponsor me. Um, and then I made it to Syracuse, uh, to, to Spike TV and then I quit Spike after a week. And then I started my own website, Jerry Park, and I gave myself six months to succeed. I didn't do anything but that website. Um, and if April 1st, 2008 came along and I didn't get a job, I was going to go back to TV production, which I didn't want to go back to. I didn't really enjoy it, to be honest. And come March, I was starting to sweat. Nothing was coming. And as I've told the story in the past, Got the offer March 28th from MMA Rated. Thank the good Lord above. And, you know, things started to progress. Then MMA Rated, parent company, Wasserman, sells all their websites to a company called Sportnet. They close down the MMA site. This is six months after we get rolling. We're doing really well. And now I'm on the outside looking in again, and I can't get back in. Then I get something from Versus. Then I'm with AOL Fan House, um, and then slowly but surely, you know, things start to pick up. Um, and that was kind of like the last time that I was like super nervous about everything failing. Of course, in 2016 with the 199 thing, I was nervous, but I, you know, I still worked here. But there was definitely a part of me that felt like, all right, you know, you put all your eggs in this basket. Uh, how's this going to pan out? Um, and that's why I was emotional on that show because I had a third child on the way, and I was like, man. You know, how old am I in 2016? I'm 34. I mean, this could have, you know, this 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 could have gone the wrong way. And and that is why, you know, adults like Dylan will make fun of something like this because they've never actually had to go out there and put their neck on the line and actually like, you know, truly, truly have to put all your eggs in a basket and and, and truly have to sacrifice things. But if that didn't pan out, like I, I would have been fucked. I would have been totally fucked. Um, I didn't have anything else. So that's why I felt a certain way about it. And people want to always bring that up. You know, oh, you cry, you cry, you cry. Name one other time that that happened. And even so, I don't give a fuck. I cry. You know how many times I've cried since then? It's, it's, who cares? Jared Cannonier. I can't even believe I, I called that a weakness. Uh, me of all people. So I was a little nervous then. But as I've said in the past, I, I was walking home and I, and I felt like this, this relief wash over me. And I remember thinking like, oh, everything's going to be all right. It's, it's going to be okay. So that was the last time, but it's going to happen. And as I've said before, don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't lick your wounds. Try to be as good of a person you can be. Try to be as professional as you can be. Try to help people out because you never know when you're going to need help. And, uh, and keep fighting and, and, and always have the mindset, one life. You only get one life. You only get one opportunity. You only get one shot at this whole thing. I, I truly believe that last thing you want is to be 85 and be like, man, I should have done this. I should have done that. I should have went here. I should have done this. I should have better myself. I should have taken this chance. It's the last thing you want. Way better to have a bunch of failures than to have that feeling. Because at least you tried. At least you saw how the story was going to unfold. At least you attempted to make things happen for yourself. On the other side, you're like, eh. What if, what if? No one wants to live with what ifs. So I would say, you know, don't feel sorry for yourself. Expect hurdles, expect bad things, be prepared for them, be prepared for no's, be prepared for roadblocks and all that stuff, but just keep fighting. Great things will happen. If you feel passionate about this, go for it. You don't want to regret it. Last one, Jay Abdul Salam. Hello and happy holidays to you and the entire MMA crew. As the final days dwindle down, December is always a month 
that not only calls for reflection on our past year, but also helps direct our focus ahead to the one just around the corner. We've seen a lot of stories unfold and developments take shape over the past year on set and in studio. Do you and the boys in the back have predictions for this next year? Will Frank's heel turn continue as he goes his own way from the Parlay Pals? Just how long can GC ride the babyface wave? Will New York Rick bring us another New Year, New Me makeover? Who will be the next leg pat, its tough victim? Warmest wishes to everyone and their families as we round this one out. Wow. I mean, that's a lot of stuff right there. I don't know. I think the beauty is you have to uh, keep tuning in. I think it's been a great year. I think the show has come a long way. I think we've evolved. We've added some wrinkles. Uh, I'm pretty happy with things. What what wrinkles did we add? Well, there's certainly a lot of wrinkles that I regret adding, um, such as that microphone next to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, we we added Andy to the team. Um, we added. There the is some un- people are unclear back here. Like, are you listing wrinkles or just things that have been added? Well, um, well, aren't wrinkles new things? Oh, I look at wrinkles as like disturbances. No issues. No. Okay. See, you would, you would <laughs> because think that. I'm so negative. Yes, you would think that. <laughs> Um, we added the Parlay Pals, uh, we, I think, made On the Nose more of a staple, uh, beginning of the show, you know, dished out some tents, you know, it's just, just another, you know, a year, but I feel, I feel, feel, I feel very proud of, uh, how much we've accomplished. I hope everyone feels the same. Oh, we do. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for all the questions. Great ones. Very reflective, very uh, sentimental. I love that sort of thing. One last thing to do. And uh, since we are in the spirit of recapping, we send it over to GC to recap part of his year. Well, maybe we're recapping the whole, are we recapping the whole year? Oh, is he in the bathroom? Okay. Um, We're going to go to GC in a moment. I wonder what he could possibly be doing. It's the last thing left. There's I thought nothing. we were going to go to an ad read or something. Though. I did the ad read. Uh, not Where only did been? we rehearse, we also did the ad read. We did the ad read. We did everything. Oh, there he is. Wait, you weren't sitting back there with that? Please tell it's me. It's a little you, hot in here. Please tell me you got a picture with Dylan dressed as Santa. Nah. No, did, no, no. did you get any picture with them? No. Why? Seem like you're a big because fan. Because we're loyal. I'm on Team Helwani, man. Why would I want a picture with Dennis? Lies. He did seem pretty ajar because I had this on. I didn't know where you were going to go after the interview. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, I had it on when he when he came back here. Oh. And he's like, hey, can I sit on your lap and ask for a victory wow. over KSI? Uh, no? Uh, you guys I really think know. that fight happens? I feel like it's going to happen. Wow. It's going to happen. I feel like there's too much for him to lose. Yeah. I'd like to be... up like it's just such a clown move. If he doesn't show up, I mean. Sure. I'd like to be proven wrong. I think it would be worse if he doesn't show up. Right? I I feel like it was today. Like, you asked me before the show, like, do you think he shows up to the show today? I was like, yes, because it's just so much worse if he doesn't show up. What's worse? Him not showing up and the whole thing just kind of like, you know, goes into the, you know, into the the air like like a fart in the night, like a wet fart in the night, some might say. Or getting knocked out by KSI. Man, both are pretty bad outcomes. I'd I'd say not showing up. Mm. I don't know. Actually, if he gets knocked out, he's going to get roasted so bad. Yeah. All right, so what do we got? Uh, Some future recaps. Uh, Are we doing the whole year here? Yeah, it's not going to take long because I only hit one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like we should, uh, you know, we should go over everything. Like, which did yeah. you try? Okay, okay, let's see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, got, I got everything. Maybe we can put this in your screen so you can read it better because the font is is kind of small. Uh, yeah, it took Rose Namajunas, Marina Rodriguez, Ioana Young Jacek in the strawweight division. Uh, None of them. Right. None of them. Uh, took the shot on Valentino 
bantamweight did not did not happen. Um, men's flyweight, not even close. Askar Askarov is is he now officially out of the UFC? Ah, that's a good question. Yeah, I think he is. So that was a big miss by me. Kai Kara France. He got the interim title be- title fight, so I don't even think it would have mattered had he won that. Um, a little bit of a long shot as well. Islam, luckily, the biggest bet of the year does hit. Uh, that was the one I felt most confident in. Um, that's the one that I put the most money on. So that one does hit, which which was fantastic. Uh, I mean, essentially saved the year for me in terms of futures. Hamzat, welterweight, never got a shot. Light heavyweight, uh, man, this one is tough. Yuri Prohashka, Magomed, Ankalaev, both never lost, both fought for a title, one won it, and somehow I'm not cashing Damn. either of these tickets. That is the worst. Tough. It is, uh, it is tough, as they say. And then the heavyweight division, Cyril gone, John Jones, gone obviously losing at the beginning of the year, and Gano sat for the rest of the year. Jones doesn't get the shot. Probably going to go back to the Jones well again this year, just for the hell of it. Uh, so we go 1-11. and 11. We do go 1-11 and 11 on tough. the futures. It is tough, but because the biggest bet hit, we're only down 0.55 units for the futures. Now, just because I'm a glutton for punishment, had Magomed won that fight, this is what we would have looked like. Up plus 1.65. Now, had Yiri fought and defended the belt, it would have looked even better, plus 3.2. Alas, neither of those happened, uh, so we do finish down mm. 0.55. Could be worse. Yeah, definitely could be worse. I mean, for how many one. futures I placed, going 1-11 yeah. and, and and finishing down a half unit, it is what it is. I mean, these are... These if are you would have gone the Magomed one, one, would you have been up? Yeah, here's the Magomed results, plus 1.65. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not great, but, you know, what are you going to do? Like, I, I mean, we talked about it earlier about, like, unless something weird happens, then we should cash X, Y, Z. Uh, I'm waiting on, like, New Year's Eve for Islam to va- to vacate the uh, lightweight title. Oh, yeah. Could you imagine? Oh, my gosh. There's still uh, 10 days left. No, nah, I think he's going to... Not happening. Not happening. Not, happening. not happening. not happening. But what if they, like, you know, I don't know. Like, could there be a drug test and someone gets the belt, like DC, back in the day? Probably Maybe. not. Maybe. I wonder uh, what would happen if, let's say, Jan tested positive. Not saying I want this to happen. Does Magomed get the belt? I feel like no. No. They've already got it scheduled for, right. for Rio, too. Uh, so, right. yeah. That's the 2022 Futures. I'll be back again in 2023. Probably will be another losing effort, but uh, it'll be fun doing it. So Is that your laptop, by the way? Uh, this is a laptop we have. Oh. <laughs> how, is it, how is it pointed that way? Uh, this is the Magic of Production, yeah. Okay, there's a lot of stuff. Did you buy that outfit, or did you have it already? Uh, had the Santa hat, bought the beard and wig off of Amazon. I thought you wow. grew the beard out. Mm. Yeah, since uh, since the beginning of the show, it looks pretty good. I'm not. It's actually lie, great. Right? It yeah, costs like nine ninety nine. That's it. Fantastic. Yeah, nine ninety nine for the beard and wig combo. It's hot, but it's uh, it's not that itchy. Uh, yeah. I thought you were wearing one of those uh, jackets, but it's just a red sweatshirt. Oh wow. Really breaking down the fourth wall. No, I just saw it. I just saw it right. I, I know. I was hoping no one would see it. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It was sorry. long enough. Uh, one other thing I do have to do is update the people on the t-shirt, Curse. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, do you need to go to the bathroom or anything? Can you? No, I'm good. Why? Why do you ask? Because you've go... been at this for a long time. Yeah, listen, I go and, strong. And this is... Uh, this is good stuff, yeah. How, how I've been looking forward to this. Please, uh, include, right. I, I hope you include the Belgium one. Oh, it's in there. Okay, good. It's Perfect. in there. Don't don't you worry. Uh, let's start back in August when we last went over this. We we discovered. Wait, can uh, I get this on the main uh, over here as well? Because I really need to see yeah, this. Yeah, absolutely. Let's set this up for you. So, thank you. Oh, there it is. Go back to August. We we discovered <laughs> after a lengthy investigation that there was a voodoo curse placed on me while we were in New Orleans for the Final Four, um, and that's what birthed t- the T-shirt curse. It all started oh, here. It all started there. Yeah. So. Going back, you know, up until the Usman fight, this is what it looked like. You know, we had three wins, kind of gimmies, uh, and seven losses when it came to T-shirts. So after that, I was like, man, we, we got to get rid of this. And it felt like we were on the right track. We start Cyril gone, Bongemon, uh, you know. 
It looked, it looked wow. like it was going to continue. It was like, oh my god, the T-shirt curse. I Where's just, that picture from, by the way? Can we go back to that, or is yeah, it too yeah, late? This is, uh, this is a. Uh, oh, that's you uh, in your uh, kitchen. Yeah, in my apartment. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Organization. Yeah. It looked like it was going to continue. I mean, he gets rocked. He gets yeah. dropped. I was like, oh my god, alas, he survives. He All right. To win. I mean, it's looking pretty good. We go to UFC 280. Look at that. Yeah. Zero oh wow. Okay. No Piero. I rock the beret. I eat croissants. Everything is great. She picks up a win. Yes. I mean, we're starting to feel pretty good about this thing. Yes. What t-shirt curse? I'm feeling pretty cocky. Uh, I didn't even bet on him. I wear a Sean O'Malley wig and official Sean O'Malley chain. And who comes out victorious? I mean, sugar. Look at that. Yeah. And we just keep right on rolling into 281. I rock the Israel Adesanya shirt. I mean, we're feeling good. We're four rounds in. The champ is up. You know, 39-37 across the board. I mean, we're feeling great. And then this happens. Curse lives on, damn it. <sighs> By the First way, realization I have. Can I tell you my favorite part of that clip? Absolutely. Your sweater tied around your, your waist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to represent the shirt so everyone could see it. So me and Frank did some deep diving. <laughs> okay. We did not get rid of the curse. The curse went into hibernation. This is a real picture of the curse going into hibernation. And it birthed what is now known as the merchandise cor- curse. Here is live footage of the merch wow. curse being born. I mean, you saw it real time. Look at the picture. Absolutely devastating. Look at this. I mean, this is real time it happening. This is the merch curse being born. Israel Adesanya. Uh, now we move on. UFC Orlando. We're going to get through this. What do I do? Shui Vasa. Uh, Tai Tui Vasa's right. merchandise. Tai Tui Vasa. Uh, We're going into UFC 282. I so much as think about buying a Yiri shirt. This is real footage. I was thinking about buying a Yiri t-shirt. Not happening. He's not even going to make a uh, fight. Bang. Merch curse. We go to UFC 282. Shout out to tear away pants. I tear away my pants to reveal some beautiful camo shorts in support of Bryce Mitchell. I mean, look at these things. These are great. Nah. Not as that. Tourways win. Yeah. I mean, shout out to the Tearaways. Bryce Mitchell merch curse. We move on. Jared Gordon. Yes, I know it's Flash Gordon, the sci fi show. Oh my God. I rock the Flash mask. <laughs> was not his night. Well, it sort of was, but yes. Merch curse. Officially. There's the curse, though. Wow. It's a bad decision. We move oh, right, on right, to the right, main right. event. I get the one of one Magomed Ankalaev shirt. Somehow, some way, he doesn't get the decision, ends in a draw. Now we don't know where he goes from here. Merch. <sighs> I mean, look at this. You can see it in my face. It's, I've realized what's happening here. That is an incredible run. What do I do? We go to other sports. Beginning of the season, I'm in on the Oh, so Why do you have to do this? Why do you have to do this? Those are doing great. It looks like we might get the one seed, but what do I do? I get Von Miller, one of my favorite players on the team. This one stings. And look what happens. Out for the year, ACL tear, <laughs> merch curse. Belgium. Uh-huh. Now, you might say yes. Belgium, they had a decent run. They didn't make it out of the group stage. It wasn't very But decent. look more specifically. Uh-oh. That's a number nine jersey of Romelu uh-huh. Lukaku. He didn't play the entire World Cup until the last 20 or so minutes of the game. And what happens? He comes in, can save Belgium's World Cup. No. No, he goes 0 for 5 on shots. Yeah. Chance after chance after chance. But what did I do? I wore a Romelu Lukaku jersey. Bang. Uh, Merch curse. It continues. I went to Sweden, uh, Switzerland this year. I support the Swiss. Here's me the morning of Switzerland, Portugal, enjoying some coffee out of my Switzerland <laughs> mug. Not to be. Oh. Switzerland. Oh. Merch curse. I support my guy. 
Some people say he's doppelganger. Christian Erickson. Oh, yeah. I got the jersey on. <laughs> Looking great. Flexing. I sent this to the group chat. Minus 280 to advance from the group stage. It was not to be. Merch cursed. Uh, Last but not least. I wanted to continue. Oh, it's going. I just moved to the great state of oh, no. Jersey. You saw it on our Zoom call last week. I uh, yes. I got a New Jersey Devils hat to support my Devils. Let's go ahead and enhance that there. Let's zoom in. Delivered <laughs> Thursday, December 8th. Let's go back in time. Let's go to the standings on December 8th. The Devils are the second best team in the entire NHL. 21-4-1. and one, A 70, uh, 77% win percentage. What happens? Let's go ahead and and take a look. Oh no. Since December 8th. Oh my God. Seven, Ugh. six straight losses for this team. Friday, December 9th, <laughs> December 12th, 13th, 15th, 17th, and 20th. I mean, I don't know what to say. Now they find themselves not even first place in the division. They are falling fast, all because I purchased this hat, the New Jersey Devils. Last but not least. Oh. Merch cursed. It's bad, man. It's bad. And maybe that was, you know, <laughs> Ghost of Christmas past, Ghost of Christmas present, Ghost of Christmas future. I got that Jack Della Maddalena shirt, and I'm honestly a little afraid to wear it. Oh, my God. And when is he returning again? Could be on this Perth card. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he just fought. Well, do you, do you legit believe in it? I mean, the signs are there. It's it's definitely, uh, it's some pretty not in the forest. Yeah, well, we're doing a, all right. I mean, I got a sticker the day they had a draw, gave it to Connor, then they lost. Wow. Hmm. Um, do you believe in a reversal of the curse? Meaning if you bet, let's say you bet on uh, Jared Gordon to be Patty, you rock a Patty shirt to ensure that Jared wins. No, we tried that one time when I wore the Man City shirt uh, when they played against Sonny and Forrest. And I know, but that was, right I mean, that was impossible. Like a I legit, know. I wonder. It, 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 I feel like it always finds a way. Yeah, it always I finds a way. I mean, that Jared Gordon one, I took Jared Gordon live, had Patty Pimlet minus three and a half, and found a way to lose both. So, I mean, I think it just always works against me. Man, yeah. I mean, watch out for Santa Claus. Uh, all the kids out there, Christmas Eve. I mean, this could be a bad sign for him. Do we know? Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, what do we have in the back there? I mean, Hamzat had a pretty good year. Kai Car no, like, is he ever is he ever yeah. gonna get a, a title shot? Yeah, it's true. Shit. Yeah. The Von Miller one stings, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy to see Von Miller gets her Romelu Lukaku. But the one the one that seems uh the one that seems immune to all of this is Georgia. I'm, I'm sure you wear a Georgia jersey on Saturdays. Yeah, they're just that good, I guess. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I, you know, I, th I, I do think it, it's, it's very big of you to, you know, lay this all out. Can't be easy. The Devils one is crazy. I mean, uh, and th some of those games aren't even close. I mean, I placed a future on the Devils. That's how like to win it all. I was in it. Yeah, I was all in on this. I was like, we're moving to Jersey. I'm gonna get a hat. I'm gonna place a future. And I mean, now I don't even know if we're gonna make the playoffs at this point. I mean, it's a bad skit. It's a, it's a. Please stay away from my Knicks. I and mean, how do you feel about the Bills? Uh, how do I feel about the Bills in terms of their chances? I mean, I was wearing the jersey on on Saturday. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you. Were you. You're still rocking Vaughn. Maybe maybe that's for the best. Please don't get a, like a Josh Allen jersey yeah. or something yeah. like that. Um, it's weird. Allen hurt his elbow when Frank got his jersey. Doesn't bring that up. I mean, um, hmm. I feel good about the Bills. Feel good. I I I, I we need that first seed. We need that first seed. I know you didn't uh, talk any smack to Mike uh, Gold. Yeah, there was a lot of you know, there was a lot of love being thrown back and forth. Nah, just, nah, I feel that. You know, at the end, I, I almost I, said Bill Goldberg there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, you know, I didn't really. I, I thought of it as a parting shot, but it felt like there was a lot of you know love, and we were a little bit late, and you know, back and forth. Uh, <laughs> but no, he's a he's a Bengals fan. That's the big one. We've got the Bears, we've got the Bengals, we've got the Patriots. If we can finish in first, by the way, if we lose to the Bengals. I mean, we could drop all the way to third, right? So yeah, that's could get huge, bad. It could get bad, but I, I have I have the utmost confidence. I just want home field. I just want home me too. Field. That's all we need. One seed. <clears throat> so you're going to uh, you're going home. Six a.m. tomorrow. That's right. Six a.m. And any big traditions? What do you guys do? Uh, Christmas vacation on Christmas Eve. Okay. Uh, nice. Big meal. Yeah. Christmas Day, do a big meal. What's your favorite part of that meal? 
I don't know. Ham? There's, yeah, ham is good. What's Not, your favorite Christmas dinner meal? Me or Frank? Frank. Yeah. You know, deviled eggs. Oh, deviled eggs are great. Good call on that. I've never had a Christmas meal. Never been invited. You know what, Ariel? This year. I'm not available. All right. Um, <laughs> Big Hanukkah plans? Uh, well, it's ongoing. Yeah. I uh, went to my brother's yesterday, exchanged some gifts. You know, doing what? Oh, it's not. It's uh, it's sundown, right? It okay. is. There we go. Um, yeah, but I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't really partake in your in your plans because I don't eat ham, so it would be a problem for me. Do you have ham, Frank? You know, um, we haven't decided what we're doing this year. Steak was actually thrown out. Wow. Which was interesting. Is that a thing? I guess. I mean, well, that was that's what I said. And then it was like, but we could do whatever we want. So we're going to do whatever we want. Yeah. Just you and your wife? Yeah, this year. Low key? There we go. Low key. Well, we just invited the Hawanis, but yeah. they've spoken for it. <clears throat> well, wife's going to take that one tough. <clears throat> you think she's going to be upset? Probably, yeah. I mean, you guys were planning on us. You You were planning on asking me live on the air right now. This is the best way to do it. One day I would like to partake. I would like to partake in the whole like waking up, pajamas coming down. You guys do that with the presents? Yeah. Is it true you're supposed to give three presents per person? Is that a thing? No, I never heard of that at all. All right. Maybe we'll get that. Rick, do you do that? Yeah, Rick, do you do that? No. No, uh, No present number for sure. But do you do presents? Oh, yeah. We got a nice tree in the uh, in the oh, new house. Yeah. S- some presents under there. Do you do Hanukkah Beautiful too? Thing. I don't anymore. I did obviously growing up, uh, but why I don't, don't you? I don't know. It's a good question. It's a uh, it's not, well. I mean, my wife's not Jewish for one, right? Sure. So now now I've eliminated another reason, a uh, potential reason to do it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I might. I might bring it back though. As the girls get a little bit older, learn a little bit about heritage, you know? So, yeah. Can you send me but, a good selfie of yourself to send to Paolo? Selfie of me to send to Paolo? He yeah, asked. asking about He you. asked for an update on how your hair looks. He did? Oh, wow. You missed that? I missed that. I said at yeah. the end, I said, your hair is looking great these days. And he's like, oh, send me a picture. He said he's available said, if you need a touch up. We're buds. I'll just, I'll just DM him. Don't worry. All right. Fair we're enough. We're buds now. Um, I'll go direct to the source. Well, I hope you all have a great Christmas. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for your loyalty. Of course, man. <laughs> Likewise. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. And uh, safe travels. And uh, I think we've covered it all, have we not? I think that's about it, man. January 4th. Yeah. Awards. We're back. Exciting. Big awards. Going to be great. I don't know what annual this is. Ninth? Tenth? Seventh? Yeah, I have no idea. Eighth? Nth? something it's it's somewhere in the 8 to 11 range i don't know if we're quite at 10 no. i don't know if we're at 8 i think i think we're in the 8 to 10 11 range something like that that'll be on january 4th uh so we'll be off next week and then the monday after and then we'll be back on the wednesday but i think this was a nice way to end the year guys can't believe a year has flown by can't believe we're on yes. to 2023 it's been incredible uh can't believe we've been here for over a year and a half now and so we'll see what happens next year. Going to be interesting. Going to be very interesting. All right, guys. Um, appreciate you. Um, I want to thank all the fans. I want to thank all the listeners. I want to thank all the viewers. I want to thank... Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, I want to thank everyone who has tuned in each and every week. Feels like the show uh, reached a, another level. Feels like the support has been greater than ever. Feels like... I don't know. It just it just feels like the love has been greater than ever. And I'm really, really appreciative of that. I'm really appreciative of the support, the backing, all that stuff and more. All jokes aside, I'm appreciative of everyone's hard work making the show what it is. Everyone behind the scenes. Uh, the show is nothing without everyone who works on the show. Uh, I just sit here and, and, and talk to people, but there's so much that goes on. And I'm very, very appreciative uh, to everyone on the team who works. I'm afraid to say everyone's name because then I'm going to forget someone and then they're going to hate me. So you all know who you are and I appreciate you very, very much. Appreciate the fans, of course, and appreciate all the fighters. 
uh, who come on each and every week, the ones who charge us and the ones who don't. I appreciate all of you so very much uh, because without you, you know, the show is not as great. It's not as great. And the insight and the access, um, the window into your lives, uh, it's really it's really appreciative and, and, and uh, appreciated, and it's something that I'll never take for granted. So thank you to all the fighters. Thank you to all the fans. Thank you to all the listeners. Thank you to all the viewers. Thank you to the production team. Thank you to everyone who makes this show such a pleasure to do. <sighs> I can't wait for another year. I can't wait for another year. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy New Year. Back next year, same time and place. Until then, I say peace. I'm out of here.